Hi friends, let me start the first topic in our Python language fundamentals. Okay, so first language fundamentals, next uh, input and output statements, operators, flow control, like almost around 25 topics we are going to discuss, right? But please make sure you people should have clear clarity about one point, sir. So if you aware the first the basic classes very confidently if you are getting perfection in basic concepts then the remaining concepts will become very very easy for you that's why first four or five units something like language fundamentals operators flow control these kind of things better to have clear clarity automatically remaining things will become very very easy for you people right okay so now the first topic language fundamentals right this is the topic what i have to discuss Yes, as a part of language fundamentals, okay, we have to talk about introduction. Introduction, are what is Python? Why the name Python? Oh, why the name Python? Like, uh, sir, general syntax related things I will, I will explain. Next, uh, application areas of Python. Sir, where we can use this Python? Okay, next, uh, features of uh, Python. Either Python in the open source or not, platform independent or not, portable or not, like uh, features of Python. Next, uh, limitations of uh, Python. Limitations, uh, sir, where we can't use Python. Okay, like, uh, next, uh, flavors of uh, Python. Okay, multiple flavors are available for the Python, sir, as it is the open source. Like, uh, Jaitan, Anaconda Python, iron python like uh, multiple flavors are there i will explain next uh, sir what are various versions python 2x 2.x python 3.x like uh, we have to discuss about these version related issues right next uh, identifiers concept we have to discuss reserved words concept we have to talk and uh, then data types concept we have to discuss right sir under data types concept almost around 14 data types we are going to discuss of course all these uh, things uh, fundamental data types have will explain but all these uh, things as a separate topics we are going to discuss in the next uh, sessions also but uh, here basic idea about uh, data types what we are going to use in python so we are going to discuss right next uh, type casting how to convert from one type to another type is it possible like so this is the agenda related to our language fundamentals concepts sir. almost around around, around 10 hours uh, we are going to discuss only about these uh, things uh, that's why take a bit very very special care to understand each and every point sir if you are very strong in the basics then the remaining things will become so easily you can able to understand the remaining things will become very very easy that's why please please make sure you should have clear clarity you require to spend much time on these basics right okay sir let me talk about language fundamentals introduction part sir first question i will ask can you please tell what is a python please respond what is python <laughs> python we are going to discuss python python almost around two months or three months time we are going to spend on this on this what is python please spell out can i use the word can i use the word it is uh, uh, what is python don't tell Sir, this is one type of snake. <laughs> Regarding, don't tell it is one type of snake. Sir, in our technical terminology, it is a programming language. Observe that it is a programming language. Language, right? We can develop applications by using this language. It's a programming language. Okay, like small, small applications, web applications, like we can develop applications by using this Python. Sir, best example, you are using calculator application. I'm sure if you know Python, you can develop that calculator by using our Python language. What we are using, sir? Okay, Gmail application you are using, Gmail, gmail.com. That Gmail application we can develop by using Python. Remember, so what is Python, sir? Python is a programming language. Okay, well. Sir, now I can use the word Python is high-level programming language. Are you getting Python is high level programming language? Then immediately you may ask, what is high level? High level means uh, programmer friendly language. 
we are not required to worry about uh, low level things are you getting right it is a programmer friendly language not a mission friendly language remember this one sir it's not mission friendly programmer friendly programmer by simply seeing the code he can understand he can write the code very very easily right it is a programmer friendly language but not a mission friendly language remember low level activities so being a programmer we are not required to worry sir what it means here observe that if i can take a is equal to 10 okay? 10 b is equal to 20 i am taking a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 c is equal to 30 <coughs> 30 if a greater than b else 40 i am taking 30 if a greater than b else 40 i am taking print a c sir <laughs> are you getting print of c sir here do you know if i can take this code are you in the position to understand this code okay you are not required to have any programming knowledge remember this one you are not required to have any programming knowledge just observe a is equal to 10 oh the value of a is the 10 b is equal to 20 the value of b is the 20 c is equal to 30 if a greater than b 30 if a greater than b else 40 sir so a what is the value of a 10 10 greater than 20 no no 10 is greater than 20 fails so if if it satisfied 30 otherwise it is 40 then obviously what is the value of c sir the value of c we are going to get what 40 sir if you have the kid can you please show these four lines of the code to your kid Are can you tell what what thing is happening what thing is happening any person without having any programming knowledge i'm sure sir that person can able to understand okay this type of thing is called high level programming language remember that what is the high level programming language so just a programmer friendly he can able to he can understand very easily he can write very easily right okay well sir next uh, low level activities are there memory management next uh, destroying objects next uh, security these are uh, things will take care by my language itself being programmer we are not required to worry such a type of languages are by default considered yes high level programming languages c language c plus plus java next uh, python c sharp all these are high level programming languages right then immediately you may have the doubt sir you are writing just four lines of the code is really python code is it going to work is it going to work yes believe me it is really python code sir it is going to print uh, 40 are the answer if you want to uh, observe a bit very carefully sir same lines of the code i want i want to show so that you people can feel more comfortable right sir what is the what is the code a is equal to 10 what i'm trying to take b is equal to 20 c is equal to 30 30 if a greater than b else sir 40 i'm taking else i'm taking 40 print of c that's all don't worry sir all these lines of the code we will explain in the next sessions very clearly just better to get the basic idea sir okay well now let me let me run this code sir i have to save this code yes i have to save this code yes tester.py okay means that so it is the python file remember that i saved this code as tester.py i saved sir now let me run this code sir okay let me go to that location let me go to that location i saved this file inside d colon durga classes okay py py test.py okay we have to use py or otherwise otherwise python test.py hey python can you please execute my test.py python can you please execute my test.py like this right a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 c is equal to 30 like uh, sir this is if i execute this code what is the answer by default you are going to get sir simple 40 itself is the answer we are going to get take a bit very special care so means that 
don't get shock it is perfectly valid code only okay this a type of code is called high level high level programming language code programmer can understand very easily programmer can write very easily low level things like memory management security these kind of things my python is going to take care so this a type of language is called high level programming language are you in the position to understand right okay one thing next uh, one more observe that carefully sir it is a general purpose it is the general purpose it is the general purpose high level programming language so what is the meaning of programming language which can be used to develop programs next high level means programmer friendly programmer friendly general purpose means do you know python is not a specific to particular area happily you can use for any type of applications right desktop applications web applications next data science applications machine learning applications like everywhere happily you can use it is a general purpose high level programming language itself is nothing but python everyone can wear yes friends so only three words i covered what is the first word what is the first word general purpose for any type of application happily we can use python high level means programmer friendly low level activities we are not required to worry like memory management security like next programming language which can be used to develop programs this is nothing but python sir okay well sir now who developed python who developed 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 python sir very very simple do you know there is who is the father of python okay who provides food for most of the programmers across world wide like me and like you now everyone talking about python means uh, the person who created this python who is the father of python sir that person is uh, here just observe can you please read this word can you please read gudo gudo van van rosam are you getting gudo van rosam this person developed python so in which year first i want to show his face once because our career our life is going to be settled with this python language compulsor we have to see and we have to get the salute man because that person provided food for us okay have a look once i saved one image 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 this this person image have a look once man okay the person who introduced python who who is the creator of the python yes sir, this person sir gudo van rosam observe that a bit a bit carefully sir great great person who developed world world the top most easy simplified programming language this person only he is called gudo van rosam okay well sir when this person developed python programming language sir here there is one small point is there sir until last year okay i learned only java c c++ java we never heard about python especially in india we never heard about python okay like but suddenly python okay now the people are start learning obviously python is a new programming language java is the old programming language some people are going to feel like this remember this one sir so java came in 1995 remember this one sir java came in which year 1995 sir 1995 and officially released in 1996 sir remember next uh, python when this python came sir 1989 only remember this one 1989 only so here means that it is the old language even than java also remember java came in 1995 1996 sir but python came in 1989 it is the old old language right then immediately you may have the doubt sir why suddenly it became popular yes i will explain the reason also just observe so who developed python language gudo van rosam developed python language in which year sir 1989 clear right okay sir while working in national research institute while working national research institute in netherland in netherland so this person gudo van rosam worked in netherland national research institute while working there he double i know manual testing so can i learn python or not sir i am coming from network background no programming knowledge can i learn python or not 
సార్ దీస్ ఆర్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ సార్ ఇన్ మై ఆఫ్లైన్ సెషన్స్ ఆన్లైన్ సెషన్స్ ఆర్ వెరీ వెరీ కామన్ సార్ సో జస్ట్ ఎవేర్ ఓన్లీ వన్ పాయింట్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు లెర్న్ అ పైతాన్ వాట్ థింగ్ ఈజ్ రిక్వైర్డ్ వాట్ ప్రీ రిక్వైర్డ్ వాట్ ఎగ్జిస్టింగ్ నాలెడ్జ్ ఈజ్ సింపుల్ నథింగ్ రిమెంబర్ దిస్ వన్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ రిక్వైర్డ్ టు నో ఎనీథింగ్ ఇఫ్ యూ నో సంథింగ్ దెన్ ఇట్ మే బి ద ప్రాబ్లమ్ రిమెంబర్ దట్ యు ఆర్ నాట్ రిక్వైర్డ్ టు నో ఎనీథింగ్ టు లెండ్ పైతాన్ జస్ట్ ఆర్ యూ ఇన్ ద విషన్ టు రీడ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ స్టేట్మెంట్స్ ఆర్ నాట్ ఓకే ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ రీడ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ దట్ థింగ్ ఈజ్ మోర్ ఎన్ఆఫ్ టు లెండ్ పైతాన్ ఓకే దట్స్ ఆల్ సో దట్స్ వై ఈవెన్ స్కూల్ కిడ్ ఆల్సో కెన్ లెర్న్ పైతాన్ can write programs by using python that's why don't worry sir if you want to learn python if you have the kids if you have the kids better to bring those kids also if you are getting some doubt your kid can clarify that doubt okay that much easy programming language is the python sir orally you can tell any number of words but can you please show some example really is that much easy or not yes man okay if you learned any programming language if you learned any programming language what is the first application hello world application correct or not what is the first application we have to discuss hello world application sir in c language how many lines of the code we have to write to print hello world to the console if it is the java if it is the python just i will show sir example 1 to print hello world to the console sir if you go for c language c language code okay here do you know main of course c language code if you want here ash include include stdio.h sir i don't know about this not required we are just i'm showing just see the basic difference sir like now i'm taking main now i'm taking main main method main function like uh, here just my requirement is print f of hello world print f of hello world like this we have to take that's all this is related to c programming language and uh, we have to compile this code and we have to run this code then hello world will be printed to the console assume that sir sir hardly 1 2 3 4 5 5 lines of the code i wrote okay excellent now if i consider java java code what we have to write in java to print hello world sir public public class public class test public class test in java everything we have to write inside a class because it is object oriented programming public class test and then public static public static void main method public static void main method string array arcs public static void main string array arcs and then system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln here we have to take hello hello world hello world like this i'm taking sir hello world and then i have to compile this code i have to compile most of the people already aware java c test dot java the code is going to compile once the code compile now java test are getting once the code compile java test of this is the this is now you can say hello world hello world to the so if this is the java code what i have to write to print hello world just let me show sir now instead of writing orally let me show that output also matter of one minute have a look once i have to write java code okay don't worry even you don't know java i want to teach java don't you are not required to worry sir so public class test i'm taking next okay if it is the python sir can you please guess if it is the c language almost four or five lines if it is the java language almost around seven lines of the code we wrote can you please confirm if it is the python how many lines of the code is required only one line <laughs> only one line what is that line is print of print of hello world are getting print a ah, hello world is there in that print a ah, hello world like this i'm taking sir 
hello world hello world like no semicolon next instead of double quotes you can take single quotes also acceptable okay happily do you know just uh, i want to compile python test.py yes hello world or py test.py hello world is the answer you are going to get have you observed right now just uh, to print uh, hello world if it is the c language how much code we have to write if it is the java how much code if it is the python how much code we have to write only one line so if you show this code uh, to your kid okay you are a school school student some third standard fourth standard kid is there sir can you please explain about this code like uh, you can ask your kid uh, dad what you are doing are getting dad what you are doing i didn't get what is test what is public static why it mean string array like uh, he, he may not so easiness easiness concise code library support makes python as more popular these days remember are you in the position to understand right simple hello world program let me go for one more example what i want to take is array to print a sum of two numbers that's about my requirement are getting i have two numbers are there to print a sum of two numbers i require to print okay have a look once sir i will go for that sir i want to print the sum of two numbers this is my next program if it is the c how we can write the code java what is the code python what is the code so that is really python is the beautiful programming language or not you can able to observe sir observe observe carefully in c language what's my requirement sir the sum of two int values i want to print okay well sir here i'm taking hash include okay std io dot h std io dot h next uh, main method main method like some people may have the doubt sir you didn't keep return type return type default return type is int sir if you are not writing return zero automatically is going to take care we are not required to worry main sir in that i'm declaring int a comma p two variable both variables are what type int type int values right now a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 what is that sir can you please tell a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 like now print f print f the sum the sum is a percentage d comma a plus b i have to take sir a plus b like i have to take and of the main method getting right this is the code we have to write if you want to print the, the sum of two numbers a and the b first we have to declare variables and then assign some values and then try to print it sir simple program only if it is the java for the same requirement how we can write the code requirement is the same how you can write the code sir very simple if it is the java based have a look once sir class test of course public class test class test public public static public static void main method public static void main arcs string array arcs i have to declare two variables a and b int a comma b i have to declare two variables a and b int a comma b next a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 okay just i declare a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 now system dot out dot println system dot out dot println okay the sum the sum is because println is always going to take only one argument okay the sum is a plus sum. our hero is coming sir if it is the python okay python can you please spell out how many lines of the code i have to write listen very carefully sir here have you observed what is the first line we wrote int a comma b and then a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 declare here in python i am taking a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 print a print a the sum print a the sum a plus b i am taking that 
is equal to n, b is equal to 1t, print of the sum a plus b, like this I'm taking. That's all. We are not required to write oh big code. Just only two or three lines of the code is more enough. Let me execute this one. Have a look once. Here, see this, see this one. Here I'm taking a is equal to 10, b is equal to 20, print a, print a the sum, print a the sum a plus b. Are you getting print of the sum a plus b? Let me run this code, sir. Let me run this code. py test dot py. Are you getting py test dot py? Can I get the same output or not? Yes. Sir, this is the same. So, how many lines of the code we require to write? Only two, two or three lines, right? Sir, even I can combine line also. <laughs> Are you getting? Even we can combine these two lines into a single line also. What is that, sir? Yeah. A comma B is equal to, observe carefully, A comma B is equal to 10 comma 20. No other language is going to accept this type of syntax like C or C plus plus or Java. A comma B is equal to 10 comma 20. So this 10 will become value of A, 20 will become value of B. Okay, like let me show this one. Have a look once, sir. Very, very carefully observe that. Here, here let me take A is equal to 10 print of print of type of a print of type of a now observe carefully sir what is the answer class inter type it is what type inter type in type sir suppose instead of 10 if i can take 10.5 if i can take 10 10.5 10 10.5 10 means uh, float type float type it is called float type next uh, sir instead of 10.5 I'm taking true, true like this, right? What is the types are? Bool type, boolean, boolean, true, false means bool type, like uh, type will be considered automatically based on our provided value. Clear for all of you, right? Next, one more advantage I will tell, sir. What is that advantage? Yes, in Java, if I can take int a is equal to 10, observe carefully, int a is equal to 10. Now, a is what type? Respond, a is what type? Int type. What is the value? 10. Sir, now, after some lines, a is equal to 10.5 I am taking, sir. In Java, a is equal to 10.5 I am taking. Java compiler will kill left and right. Hey, it is int type. How you can assign double value? It is the int type. How you can assign double value? Like a compile time error. So, throughout its lifetime, this a is always what type, sir? Int type only. Okay? But in Python, do you know what is the type of A? Intercept. In the next line, A is equal to 10.5 I can take. Next line only, A is equal to 10.5. Now on words, A is float type variable. If you want, uh, you can print uh, type of A. Type of A. Now you are going to get float type, sir. Okay? Next, after that, immediately I am taking a is equal to Durga. A is equal to Durga. It is the string type. Are you getting? Now onwards, A is acts as Durga. So, throughout life, A is always in type. Throughout life, A is always flow type. No such type of terminology. Whenever you are assigning different type of value, automatically type will be changed as per requirement. Are you getting? That's why same variable we can use with the multiple types possible, right? Okay, let me show this. This one. So, A is equal to 10, I am taking, sir. A is equal to 10, print type of A. Now, it is int type. Okay, well. Now, after that, suddenly I am taking A is equal to 10.5, 10.5, print of type of A. Sir, same A only. Sir, once this line assigned, now onwards it will become float type. Now onwards it will become float type. Have you observed, right? Now onwards A will become float type. Now, A is equal to Durga I am taking, sir. Print type of A. Print type of A. Now onwards, it will become string type. Are you getting? STR type. STR means what? String type like this. Of course, all these types I will explain in detail. Don't worry, sir. So, this is uh, more easiness, more flexibility to the programmer. Not required to declare the type explicitly. Next, based on our requirement, you can use the same variable with the different types also. That possibility is there. This nature is called dynamically typed programming language, which is the more flexible to the programmer. Clear, right?
now i will explain sir why guido van rosam selected the word python okay can you please anyone can you please guess why he selected the name python for his programming language okay he may select a guido language van language or rosam language like why he selected python hmm can you please spell out sir very very simple very very simple sir if you are fan of sunny leone then automatically for your bike you will keep the name as sunny are getting something like if you are the fan, just if if you are very much impressed you got impressed like anything so maybe you are fan of some hero in the word python to our programming language <laughs> remember this one sir so sir why the word python sir because of snake or because of anaconda like no such a type of reasons right why the word python got selected okay our our who developer our father father of python this person very much impressed with with this show fun show the complete monty python circus okay which was broadcasted in the bbc 74 from this the name python came in the picture sir not only this one sir for any name there is some story is there sir if you consider java java sir just uh, only 2 minutes i won't take much time java why the name java came in the picture do you know james gosley who is the father of java sir why why the name java came in the picture he is very uh, small yellow color elephant toy toy okay small toy yellow color elephant toy he is playing sir okay then immediately why don't you keep this name why don't you keep this one as the logo for our hadoop then automatically this person selected remember that by mistake if his kid is playing with a red color snake maybe red color snake may be logo sir okay please make sure so there are some c is functional programming language functional programming language is the c sir if you consider c++ and java C++ Java these are object oriented programming languages C++ and Java if you go for Perl okay Perl and uh, shell script if you go for Perl and uh, shell script these languages are scripting languages are you getting scripting scripting languages right these are scripting languages if you go for if you go for modulo okay like these are these are scripting languages right c missing the benefits of object oriented because it is a functional programming language next uh, so if i can ask a c oh you see can you pro- please provide support for inheritance polymorphism encapsulation like c person is going to tell what all these things i don't know nonsense i don't know like so because this person is not object oriented it is missing the benefits of object oriented programming if i can ask a c++ and java c++ person okay java person immediately yes i am object oriented programming language so i can provide benefits of reusability inheritance code inheritance next the polymorphism encapsulation like all the things i can talk like are can you please talk about functional programming like if i can ask these people sorry man i can't sorry man i can't but slowly java slowly lambda expressions are these functional now these days these people talk but actually they are not object a uh, functional programming languages next a uh, scripting languages these people just a group of lines one by one one by one we have to execute that's all like this right so every language having its own specific behavior so that uh, that specific paradigm benefits only they are going to get sir what about python is it functional programming or is it object oriented programming or is it a scripting language like you may have the doubt okay sir very simple while developing while developing python while developing python okay how the python language while developing python guido borrowed functional programming features functional programming features okay functional programming features uh, from c language from c language he borrowed functional programming features from c language that's why so python is a functional programming language okay well sir next uh, he borrowed object oriented programming language features object oriented programming language programming language features uh, 
from ah can you please tell while developing python whoops features whoop whoop object oriented features are borrowed from which programming language respond man ha ah, object oriented programming features are borrowed from which language okay don't tell java because at the time of developing python java was not there remember so borrowed from c++ okay that's why python is object oriented programming language next uh, he borrowed uh, scripting language features scripting scripting language scripting language features uh, from from peral from peral and shell script from peral and shell script that's why uh, python is a scripting language remember sir next uh, he borrowed modular programming modular programming features uh, sir you are not required to worry about this one it's almost we are not using any version modular programming features features from modular programming features from okay modular 3 modulo 3 okay these days almost outdated no one is using don't worry sir so he borrowed modular programming features right sir now can you please tell he the python he the functional programming functional programming language or object oriented programming language or scripting language or modular programming language what the answer you have to tell sir python is all rounder are getting best the word python is what yeah please re- read python is what all rounder python is everything sir it is a functional programming language object oriented programming language next a scripting language python acts as modular programming language also okay python is all rounder python can enjoy benefits of all these programming paradigms okay like sir now theoretically okay can you please show at least two or three minutes sir basic idea sake what it means right sir anyway this one is completely outdated don't worry remaining three things sir what is scripting language what is the what is the scripting scripting language right scripting language means a group of lines will be there a group of lines will be there this group of lines will be executed one by one one by one no functions concept no classes concept just see a group of lines one by one one by one is going to execute is nothing but scripting language right now have a look once sir i'm i'm taking i'm taking here just a print print python python as a scripting language python as a scripting scripting language like this right i took this one i took this one so do you know just a uh, group of statements i'm taking sir almost six statements i'm taking like if i execute this first statement second statement third statement like all these statements will execute one by one one by one no functions concept no class concept no object concept happily it is going to run sir have you have you observed right now this is have a look once sir py tested at py yes python has scripting language scripting language like happily it's going to run sir okay well now my next requirement is sir i want to use python yes yes sir like a uh, functional programming very simple define a function define define a function and uh, write whatever the code you want and the call that function based on your requirement this is the c language approach c language approach right how you can do in python okay very simple observe carefully sir here i'm taking d e f f1 i'm writing a function sir print of python as a functional programming language functional python as a functional programming functional programming language like this i'm taking sir okay let me write uh, a function here i write a function of course this function contain four lines of the code now you can call this function based on your requirement any number of times okay sir i want to call this function f1 f1 now let me execute this code sir observe this is called uh, declaring a function and uh, this is called uh, calling a function okay now i want to call this function observe carefully sir yes python yes functional programming language yes functional programming language like this it's going to work sir okay well sir now i want to use python 
yes object oriented programming language like c++ or java so you can write a class within the class you can define a method create an object and then you can call the methods related to that class okay object oriented programming how you can observe carefully here i'm taking i'm taking a class test i'm taking a class test def m1 of self df m1 of self print of print of python yes object oriented programming language object oriented programming language like this i'm taking sir object oriented programming language like this sir like like i have now create an object t is equal to test sir t dot m1 can you please create an object t dot m1 like so that's all so i'm defining a class i'm defining a class within the class i'm writing a method next i'm creating an object for that class and then i'm calling t dot m1 means that method right okay like sir immediately you may have several doubts sir what is self sir what is the depth sir what is the class like all these things i will explain in detail don't ask these doubts now just for basic idea purpose i'm explaining all these things we will discuss in in detail next uh, sessions don't worry sir just uh, get some idea that's it okay now let me execute this code let me execute this code python yes object oriented python is object oriented programming language right like. so now in the intro your room may be a chance to ask the question are what is python is it functional programming language or object oriented programming or modular or scripting language like simple answer you have to tell python is respond man python is all rounder are getting python is all rounder python x yes so every every programming language paradigm python is a functional programming language python is object oriented programming language python is scripting language python is modular programming language remember this one sir next uh, most of the syntax used in python are borrowed from most of the syntax used in python borrowed from c language and a b c language okay c language and a b c language so 1989 terminology this language but these days people already forgot c and a b c languages from these languages most of the syntax borrowed in python clear for all of right so what is uh, python next uh, which is syntax what what about programming paradigms clear sir where we can use a python okay i told already python is the general purpose programming language in every application area happily you can use python sir sir now we can use python to develop desktop applications are you getting to develop desktop desktop applications right then immediately you ask sir what is the desktop application the applications which are running in a single system stand alone application which are running in a single system are called what desktop applications right best example calculator is there if you observe that calculator calculator is there sir so this calculator sir to work to this calculator program can run on a single system or not yes 10 plus 20 10 plus 20 itself is 30 we are getting so here to execute to run calculator how many systems are required only one such type of applications happily we can develop by using python sir do you know develop calculator by using python is a small mini project a small application right okay well sir next uh, we can develop web applications right okay we can develop web web applications best example sir we can develop web applications like gmail gmail application blog application online e-commerce applications like uh, so like amazon flipkart next and after that like blog applications we can gmail application facebook like uh, so we can happily develop uh, web applications by using python there are multiple specially designed frameworks are there to develop web applications like django flask pyramid okay like multiple multiple frameworks are available right okay next uh, even network applications also python networking it's a very hot area sir 
network applications also we can develop network applications also we can develop by using python server okay like uh, charting applications charting applications client server applications like we can do that next uh, do you know sir we can develop games also there are several modules are available games games development happily we can use python programming language next uh, for data analysis applications data analysis applications right next uh, machine learning applications machine learning applications deep learning applications neural networks artificial intelligence iot applications like everywhere happily we can use python programming language so that's why it is a general purpose programming language clear for all of you right so where we can use python so desktop applications we can develop web applications we can develop network applications games development data analysis okay data science iot artificial intelligence like you know all these areas happily you can learn okay this uh, happily you can use python done sir do you know in amir pet somewhere in in our regular courses data science course is there data science uh, through python data science uh, through r language are you getting by r language by python like python is the best choice for data science applications also that's why you should aware once you learn python yes everywhere next level yes happily n number of opportunities by default will be there for you you can enter into multiple domains okay like next uh, which software companies are using python okay which which companies are using python sir sir python used by google sir google using python next uh, yahoo using python okay yahoo facebook using python facebook facebook using python next uh, nasa nasa using python sir nasa nasa itself next uh, do you know nasa itself is using next uh, dropbox dropbox using using python netflix okay like uh, multiple companies are using python okay so if you want just uh, have a look once uh, sir i'm just uh, searching in the google i want to just uh, search search in the google saying uh, top companies using python okay top top companies using python okay like like just uh, i'm clicking this one search just searching for this now observe that now observe okay here yeah, eight uh, world class software companies using the python eight uh, world class software companies that use python have you observed just have a look once industrial light and magic google facebook instagram spotify quora netflix uh, dropbox uh, like a uh, dropbox like like they are using sir if you observe images like uh, just i'm clicking images right sir in the in the images you can you can see here have a look once uh, sir have you have a look once here if you if you are seeing this one just uh, do you know youtube the popular youtube video sharing system is largely written in python next uh, google makes extensive use of python in its web search system web search algorithm sir there there python python is going to play the role next uh, dropbox storage service uh, quotes both its uh, server and client software primarily in python okay dropbox client and server both are developed by using python okay here raspberry pi the raspberry pi single board computer promote python as its educational language remember next uh, sir bittorrent bittorrent peer to peer okay file sharing system began its life as a python program began its life as a python program remember nasa uses python for specific programming task nasa next and after that the nsa uses python for cryptography and the intelligence analysis okay just uh, do you know security national security agency right sir next uh, netflix and elf like uh, so every every company itself is using using python sir next uh, if you go for another another thing sir do you know sir can you please uh, have a have a look once about these uh, these things right almost do you know almost around uh, 20 to 30 companies are covered in this uh, slide top companies using python okay amazon amazon uber ibm ibm like uh, so almost all the companies red hat uh, yahoo mozilla okay send grid uh, like uh, udemy like uh, there are multiple multiple companies are using python sir please make make sure you people should aware that's why so believe python definitely python is going to provide food for you man <laughs> okay definitely python is going to provide good good career for you people right okay that's all
Hi friends, in the last videos we covered very clearly the basic introduction to Python. What are various application areas when compared with the other languages, what is the advantage of Python like we covered right. Sir, now the next thing what I have to discuss, what are various specific features are there for the Python. Okay, Python features we have to discuss about Python, Python features right. Sir, do you know Java person is going to come, he is going to dance in front of you. Okay, Array, can you please spell out what is the speciality of your Python when compared with Java. C programmer is coming, so he is going to dance in front of us. When compared with C, what speciality you have like, uh, we should be in a position to give left and right to Java person, to C person. So what extra features are there, what specialities are there for the Python, compulsory you people should have clear clarity sir. Sir, now some important features just I list out, we are going to perform post-mortem about uh, these uh, features right, okay. Have a look once uh, sir, what is the first one, simple and uh, easy to learn, simple and uh, easy to learn, first one. Next, uh, freeware and uh, open source, it is the freeware and uh, open source. Next, uh, high level programming language, it is the high level, high level programming language, platform independent platform independent next uh, portable portability next uh, dynamically typed yes uh, this is a bit very important sir even you have some basic idea about this one dynamically typed next uh, both the uh, procedure oriented and object oriented sir it is also a big specialty for our python both it is all rounder both procedure oriented and object oriented right Next, it is interpreted. Next, extensible, embedded, extensive library. Are you getting extensive library? It is also a big specialty for the Python. Are you getting? So, these are 11 features, whatever I listed, so that we have to perform discussion. We have to perform post-mortem about these things, right? Are you able to understand, right? What is the first one? Simple and easy to learn. Second one, freeware, it is open source, high-level programming language. Next, a platform independent and then portability dynamically typed both procedure oriented and object oriented interpreted extensible embedded and extensive library these are various important features of python sir okay now let me talk about the first one sir now the first feature related to python it is a simple and easy to learn simple and easy to learn programming language is a python sir very simple if you want to learn any language whether it is a general speaking language or programming language first we have to aware words which words are there in that language like suppose if you consider english language english general speaking language right how many words are there in english I am not talking about alphabet symbols, alphabet symbols 26, but how many words are there? Okay, do you know, crores, crores of words are available, sir. Crores, crores of words are there, words are there in English. So, do you know, if you, if you consider a dictionary, almost this size dictionary also will be there, Oxford dictionary, this size dictionary also will be there. So, each page in that dictionary contains thousands of words. So, if you want to learn English very perfectly, compulsory you have to aware all these words. Remember that. But, uh, if you consider Java programming language, okay, I want to learn Java programming language, how many words, how many words are there? Just a few 53 words you have to aware sir remember that so when compared with english learning english language java language is the very simple but if you consider python programming language python language just we have to aware only 33 words 33 reserved words the person who can understand these are 33 reserved words then automatically the expert in the python are you getting so it is a very small chota programming language is the python very easy to learn easy to learn simple programming language right next uh, if you consider sir java code 
code also not only reserved words right code code also if you consider java code if you consider python code there's a big difference there python code is a something like a reading english statement sir remember this one sir python code is a something like a reading reading english statements best example sir if you if you observe ternary operator is there in java sir have a look once suppose x is equal to x is equal to here i'm taking 10 greater than 20 10 greater than 20 colon question mark 30 like this i have now observe very carefully sir so 10 greater than 20 question mark 30 colon 40 if i if i ask any person are can you please uh, observe this line what this line is doing if i can ask uh, out of 100 99 percent of the people are going to fail yes they don't know about the meaning of this syntax unless and until if they know java okay the people who know java they can they can tell oh this is bob ternary operator this is the condition if it is the true 30 is the value if it is the false then 40 is the value like uh, do you know if i show this code compulsory java expert only can able to understand this line correct right okay like but um, if I the same thing in Python how I can write the same thing in Python how I can write observe carefully sir x is equal to x is equal to 30 sir 30 a 10 greater than 20 30 if 10 greater than 20 else else 40 are you getting 30 sir if 10 greater than 20 else 40 like this right now if i can ask this one 200 non programmers are what it is doing everyone can tell even school kid also can tell are if 10 greater than 20 then 30 sir otherwise 40 is the answer so you never going to feel that it is you are reading you are reading so programming instruction it is something like a english language remember that sir sir not only can Conditional operator almost every syntax every syntax in python itself is a very simple resembles english language right suppose i'm taking sir i have a a is equal to 10 is there b is equal to 10 is there i want to check a and b both are equal or not okay a is b or not <laughs> are you getting a is b or not like you have to ask a is b a is b both are pointing the same object something like a is b or not like we have to ask same way sir employee is not none employee is not none how i can ask a f a f e m p is not none <laughs> if e m p is not none sir don't feel sir this is the english statement no man it is perfectly python code so seems to be reading python code means you are going to feel that reading english statements that much easiness is there in the python sir python contain how many how many words right only 33 reserved words if you ever these are 33 reserved words then automatically python will become so you will become python expert right okay well next uh, another biggest speciality for the python is concise code okay what is that can you can you spell out sir what is that code concise concise code what is the meaning of concise code is less code less code so we can do big big activities also with the very few lines of the code sir okay with the very few lines of the code we can do because of that the biggest advantage what we are going to get is uh, do you know we can reduce development time we can reduce cost of the application remember this one sir so obviously development time is going to be reduced uh, cost of the project development will become down so which is very cr very critical to the client sir very essential to the client so another speciality for the python is uh, concise concise code so development time is going to be reduced cost of the project development will be reduced sir okay like uh, length of the code will be less uh, obviously readability by default is going to be improved sir so this is the easiness will be there in the python you can learn very easily it is a very simple programming language so just a small example i want to take assume that assume that i have one file is available sir assume in my system i have one file is available sir abc.txt observe here text file is there sir now this text file contain some data is there assume some data is there array write 
a python program write a python program to read the data from this text file and print to console are you getting and print to console this is my requirement are you getting right write a program to read the data from this text file and print to console this is about my requirement right have you observed how much code we have to write if you go for c language oh big code if you go for java language buffer reader file reader line by line reading and then printing to the console a big activity we have to do but in python but in python how many lines of the code is required sir <laughs> how many lines of the code is required one line one line is more enough remember this one how many lines of the code is required one line is more enough that one line i'm ready to write sir which file data you have to read ha uh, abc.txt very simple open <laughs> open abc.txt open abc.txt sir i open abc.txt read data now dot read dot read read now you are getting the data print this data print this data then automatically print that's it you are getting open abc.txt and read the data and print that read data to the console that's all single line which is going to read the total data from the file and print it to the console how beautiful this code observe that sir let me show sir i'm not telling just orally i want to execute this code have a look once sir in my system in my system there is a file is available named with abc.txt observe very carefully sir named with abc.txt is there sir okay welcome to durga soft python course sir it is uh, like like i have i have some some code is there sir it's a very easy course even kids also can learn like this i'm i'm taking sir now my requirement is observe that i want to write the a python program first uh, what i have to take open open which file sir abc.txt okay dot read the data yes you 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 completed reading and this total data i have to print that's why print of print of like this right okay so this total open this file have you observed just observe i open abc.txt file and then read the data after reading the data after reading data can you please print that data okay like only one line only one line now let me execute that code sir if i execute py test dot py have you observed whatever data is there in the file you can you can able to see sir in the in the you can see in the in the console so that much a simple code is the python so you can learn very easily sir without having any prerequisite without having any programming knowledge so if you can go for c language this much easiness is not there if you go for java this much easiness is not there so in the world for when compared with any other program programming language python is a very simple language you can learn very easily right clear for all of you right sir the second important feature of the python is it is a freeware and a open source remember this sir most of the people are having confusion freeware open source both are same or not no no both are not same sir so to use a python how much license fee how much how much fees we require to pay at yeah, the license cost what is the license cost to use python sir very simple we are not required to provide we are not required to pay single paisa also to use python remember that it is a, it is a free where any person can use even for business sake also do you know if you go for java if you go for java okay java is a, who is the who, who is the vendor for java currently oracle sir oracle it is the commercial commercial business organization right sir if you go for c sharp dot net c sharp c sharp dot net sir so who is the vendor for this microsoft okay it is the business organization right but if you go for python if you go for python so who is the vendor who is the responsible to maintain no vendor sir there is one charitable trust the foundation is there that foundation is the responsible for the psf okay 
Python Software Foundation is responsible for this to maintain this Python sir. That's why it is not a sir, business organization. It is a non-profit, non-profit organization, right? So to use Python, we are not required to pay single paisa also. Okay, remember that. Of course, if you want to voluntarily, if you want to donate, happily you can donate for this foundation. What is that sir? Python Software Foundation. What is the corresponding website? Python dot org from where you have to download python is from this website only this is from here if you want you can sir pay you can you can you can voluntarily you can donate some amount for the software foundation but anyway it is the free where but java java from java 11 version onwards it is the paid version sir if you want to use for your personal use or business use compulsory license must be required dot net licensed version okay but uh, python it is the freeware happily do you know it is the biggest asset uh, for small scale organizations medium scale organization they are not in a position to pay okay license cost clear right so this is so one another reason sir definitely you should believe python this is also one reason sir because uh, the scope scope of using python is very huge so because of the, it's a free cost okay well next uh, sir what is uh, open source <coughs> very important sir what is the open open source the source code of the python is open to everyone okay the source code the source code of python is open to everyone assume that this is the python source code sir this is the python python source code okay so i feel that this source code is not going to fulfill my requirement then what i will do is i will change some changes i will customize this source code this source code and i can use this uh, customized version of python sir for to fulfill my requirement right now for this python i want to use durga python <laughs> are you getting i want to use durga durga python so customization for the python is possible because because of this open source clear right sir do you know because of this multiple flavors of python is possible one is durga python another is nagur babu python something like uh, next uh, if you want to work with uh, java applications which python we require to go for jaitan are you getting python which is customized uh, to work with java applications right okay like same way same way if you want to work with the c sharp dot net applications then automatically we require to go for iron python are you getting don't feel iron python means uh, the python which is developed by using iron no no uh, the python which can be used uh, to work with the c sharp dot net applications that is called iron python okay like sir do you know i want to work with the big data large volumes of data i want to handle sir for that a specialized version of python came anaconda python are you getting right what is this one anaconda python like this right so this is the advantage of python sir so for every requirement specific version is available in the market happily we can use that specific version and we can fulfill our requirement everyone in the position to understand right source code is open based on our requirement we can customize python software itself because it is the open source clear for most of the programming languages this type of facility may not be available so this is the second feature what we have it is the freeware not required to pay single paisa next open source based on our requirement we can customize python software which is nothing but sir free open source freeware up to this any doubt clear right sir up to this two features we covered sir simple and easy to learn second one freeware and open source now the next features are python is a high level programming language so high level programming language means uh, programmer friendly language not mission friendly language any programmer can easily read can easily understand can easily write the code sir python are you getting suppose if i consider a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 
print a a plus b is there are you getting print of a plus b anyone can understand this code are you getting anyone can understand this code it is a programmer friendly high level programming language okay programmer friendly language right next uh, do you do you know sir being high level programming language we are not required to worry about low level activities okay low level activities means how the memory allocated so next how the objects will be destroyed how the security will be there so such a type of low level activities being a programmer we are not required to we are not responsible for these activities right so memory management i'm not required to worry man memory objects destruction provide free space i'm not responsible internally my python virtual machine is going to take care everything sir if you want to destroy some useless object garbage collector is there are you getting next memory allocation internally python is going to take care security python is going to python virtual machine is going to take care we are not required to worry about the low level activities clear for all of right sir what is that high level programming language programmer friendly language we are not required to worry about low level activities like memory management security these kind of things we are not required to worry clear the next uh, very important feature of the python is it is a platform independent programming language then immediately you ask sir can you please explain how python is platform independent what is the meaning of platform independent nature just observe i want to go for a c program assume assume that i have one c application is there sir c c program is there i have three platforms are there means three machines are available sir one is windows platform i mean windows windows mission is available with me next uh, one is uh, one one is uh, okay linux mission is available linux uh, linux platform is available for me next uh, another is uh, another another is uh, mac mac platform is available sir can you please observe how many machines are there how many platforms are there three platforms are available now i want to write uh, a c program which should run on all these platforms are you getting on all these platforms because i want to distribute one c application for the clients uh, who are using different platforms right then what will happen is then what i have to do is for windows okay a separate c program must be required c application c application for windows c application for windows windows the c program which is developed for windows operating system windows platform it can't run on linux it can't run on mac that's why compulsory for every platform you have to provide that platform specific application right so c application for windows i have to provide next uh, c application okay c c application for for linux for linux platform i have to provide happily it can run okay next uh, c application c application for c application for mac we have to provide like this right sir now can you please tell how many applications are there so three applications how many platforms are available sir three platforms are available so now sir c programming language is the platform dependent programming language remember this one sir so for every platform we require to maintain separate application separate c application that's why this behavior is called platform dependent platform dependent right okay well sir when compared with this approach what is the speciality for the python sir same terminology same cinema we have to discuss a bit a different style observe that sir i have how many how many platforms are there sir okay here assume that c windows platform is there windows windows platform is there sir observe a bit very carefully next uh, linux platform is there linux linux platform is there sir next uh, mac platform is also there mac mac platform is also is also there sir okay like three platforms are there now i want to write uh, a python application sir assume this is the python application right so can you please spell out 
how many platforms are available three platforms how many python applications are there only one so write a python application once run anywhere anywhere on any platform sir we are not required to provide this is the python application for windows this is the python application for linux this is the python application for mac such type of stories are not required for python write a python program once and run anywhere this concept is nothing but what sir platform independent nature sir how platform independent nature is coming very simple sir do you know if you want to run this python application sir on the windows platform what must be required is python virtual machine python virtual machine pvm remember pvm python virtual machine for windows is required for windows is required if i provide if i provide my python program to this pvm pvm is responsible to convert this program into windows specific and to execute sir convert interpret into windows specific form and execute who is the responsible sir this pvm is the responsible compulsory pvm for windows must be required okay same way python application if i want to provide for linux platform so compulsory we require to install pvm pvm for linux compulsory we require to install pvm for linux linux this python virtual machine for linux is the responsible to convert this python application into linux specific form and execute right okay same way same way if you want to run on mac mac sir okay pvm for mac must be required pvm for mac must be required observe carefully sir pvm for mac must be required that pvm is the responsible to convert python application into the mac style sir now my question is here how many python programs are available only one only one but how many platforms are available three platforms are available sir write once run anywhere write once run anywhere is the concept of platform independent nature who is going to take care platform specific conversions python virtual machine is going to take care if the pvm is not there then python also should be platform specific but anyway because of this pvm python program is not platform dependent it is the platform independent right are you in the position to understand now sir what is platform independent nature write once run anywhere write once run anywhere is the concept of platform independent nature okay internally who is the reason for platform independent nature of python internally python virtual mission is the reason sir sir next i have one small doubt python is platform dependent or platform independent python program is platform independent but uh, python virtual mission python virtual mission is the platform dependent because for windows separate pvm is required for linux separate pvm is required for mac separate pvm is required so platform specific pvm we have to install sir means the pvm is the platform dependent but my python application is the platform independent clear for all of friend but what about this c language please respond what about the c language c language is the platform dependent or platform independent platform dependent for every platform separate applications we have to write for windows windows a specific application for linux linux a specific application mac mac specific application we have to write c is the platform dependent but python is platform independent clear for all of right this is so maybe a chance to ask what is the meaning of platform independent nature can you explain how it is the platform independent you should be in the position to tell clear right sir the next feature what i have to discuss portable python is portable programming language sir what is the meaning of portable can you please observe don't talk about programming sir normally in our day to day life where you had portable portability like have you remembered at our childhood we had the word portable tv portable tv what is the meaning of portable tv sir 
you can move that tv from one place to another place very easily portable portable 14 inches portable tv like we can move from one place to another place very easily next uh, these days especially in, in india of course most of the countries are already adapted in india do you know mobile number portability have you heard about this one sir mobile number portability suppose currently i'm using airtel service right okay currently i'm using airtel airtel mobile mobile service i'm using sir my mobile number is okay this is my mobile number okay like i'm using currently airtel service but assume airtel service is not good not good i want to change a service provider from airtel to idea are getting i want to change my service provider from airtel to idea sir idea so now sir can i can i get the same number or not yes can i get the same number or not without the affecting your number okay without changing your number you can migrate from airtel to idea or idea to airtel no problem at all this type of thing is called mobile number portability are getting that what is this word mobile number mobile number portability mobile number portability right earlier do you know we have by seeing the number is it bsnl number or is it airtel number we can decide sir 9440 bsnl number 98494 okay it is airtel number 98480 it is the idea number but now these days we are not having any such type of options are getting because number will be the same you can change your service provider so the process of migrating mobile number from one service provider to another service provider without changing your number is called what the mobile number portability clear for all of that what the meaning of mobile number portability now what is the meaning of python application portability i will explain have a look once sir sir i have one windows machine is there assume that i have windows windows machine is there sir windows machine is there in this windows machine happily my python application is running sir python python app is running but anyway because of license issues because of security issues i want to i want to move to linux platform are you getting linux more secure next up for linux no no license cost and so on that's why i want to i decided i want to migrate this python application to the linux platform sir now my question is if you are migrating to linux mission i want i want to migrate this python application python python application from windows to windows to linux mission is it possible to migrate or not yes because python application never talks about underlying platform on any platform it can run on any platform it can run so without performing any changes in our application or with minimum changes you can migrate our python programs from one platform to another platform this is called this is called portability are you getting the process of migrating application from one platform to another platform very easily this is called what a portability so python applications are portable or not yes obviously this is what right of course internally platform independent nature is also one reason is the reason right but migrating from one platform to another platform very easy sir you are not required to perform any changes in your application which is nothing but portability concept any doubt clear Sir, the next feature what I have to discuss dynamically typed. So, from first class onwards, I'm I'm talking about this dynamically typed. So, in old languages or in other languages like Java, if you consider other language Java, if you want to declare a variable, sir, I'm taking a is equal to ten like this. In Java, I'm taking like this. Immediately. java compiler will give left and right are you are taking a where you declare this a cannot find the symbol 
variable a like you are going to get the error sign if you want observe a bit carefully here i am taking a simple example sir here just the java code i am taking don't worry about this class test within that i am taking a is equal to 10 sir a small a small code it is the java code even you don't know about java don't worry just observe keep on listening sir now i saved this code yes test dot java observe a is equal to 10 public static void main a is equal to 10 is there sir now let me compile this java program java java program if i compile this one immediately compiler will give left and right boss where you declared a where do you declared a you didn't declare the a what is the type of this a like a compiler is going to object sir can you please have a look once cannot find the symbol are you getting cannot find the symbol which is symbol sir variable a i'm unable to see this variable a like that compile time error you are going to get so means that each and every variable you have to declare with the type then only it is going to be accepted so compulsory we have to take int a is equal to 10 remember this one we should do that int a is equal to 10 then only it will be acceptable in java have a look once so if i can take int if i can take here here just the int a is equal to 10 int a is equal to 10 like this right now now it will be accepted no problem at all it is accepted sir okay well so in other languages like java compulsory we have to declare the type explicitly such a type of languages are called statically typed languages what is this word sir statically statically typed languages type compulsory we have to declare at the beginning only sir but in python what is the story but in python what is the what is the story sir very simple sir i am taking a is equal to 10 sir so is it accepted or not perfectly it is accepted are i didn't declare the type i didn't declare the type still it is going to be accepted in python we are not required to declare type explicitly of course we can't declare we are not required to declare type explicitly based on your provided value automatically the type will be considered based on your provided value automatically the type will be considered this nature is by default considered as dynamically typed programming language sir what is the what is the type what is the type of a can you please print the type of a like a print print type of a sir print type of a simple it is going to tell that int type sir okay int int type have a look once sir sir i'm taking a a is equal to a is equal to 10 sir in python i'm taking a is equal to 10 print of can you please print type of a sir print of type of a i didn't declare the type but now i'm asking the type sir what will happen here py test dot py py test dot py have a look once have a look once what is the type sir int type so in python we are not required to declare the type explicitly based on our provided value the type will be considered automatically this type of nature is by default considered as what dynamically typed programming language are you getting dynamically typed programming language okay c c plus plus java are statically typed compulsory we have to declare the type explicitly next the python javascript these are dynamically typed programming languages we are not required to declare the type explicitly is it clear right point number one next uh, because of this dynamically type uh, there is one more advantage is there what is that advantage is observe this one sir in java i have int a is equal to 10 sir after some time i am taking a is equal to durga like this i am taking a is equal to durga durga is a string type string value i am trying to assign sir immediately compiler is going to give left and right are durga pagal ho gaya mental mental ho gaya mental so a you declared already what type int type you declared already int type how you can assign how you can assign string value incompatible type string cannot be converted to int like this we are going to get this error sir have a look once in java 
if you consider if you consider int a after some code a is equal to durga like this i'm taking sir a is equal to durga durga like this i'm taking sir now what compile method you are going to get have a look once incompatible types string cannot be converted to int incompatible type string cannot be converted to int like this compile method right but the same thing i want to do in python but the same thing i want to do in python no problem at all we didn't uh, specify the type explicitly sir a is equal to an int type next uh, in the next line i am taking a is equal to durga sir a is equal to durga now onwards a acts as string type now the type of a will become string int type is override with the string type print print type of a sir print type of a now onwards it will become str type now onwards it will become str type so a variable in its life we can use the same variable for multiple types in python but uh, once we decided the type throughout its life this variable is always int type only are you seeing the difference right so this is which is the more flexible to the programmer more useful to the programmer okay more flexibility to the programmer is this type of thing right so for int type one variable for string type another variable for float type another variable we are not required to declare same variable we can use uh, for multiple types also acceptable sir let me show this one have a look once uh, sir in python in in python here a is equal to durga am taken now onwards what is the type of a sir print uh, type of a print uh, type of a have you observed that sorry sorry this is the java code have you observed right sir observe so at the beginning it is the int type but now it it, it became string str type sir sir now i am taking a is equal to true sir a is equal to true print of type of a print of type of a like this i am taking have you observed what the answer we are going to get now onwards it is the bool type so means that the same variable we can use for multiple types based on our requirement okay the type is not fixed in python so more flexibility to the programmer sir how many variables i declare how many variables i am using only one variable but what is the type of this variable sometimes i am using for int type sometimes i am using for string type sometimes i am using for boolean type this type of thing is not possible in other languages like java are you are you in the position to understand right so what is the advantage of dynamically typed what is the meaning of dynamically typed very very simple sir in python we are not required to declare type explicitly based on provided value automatically type will be considered this type of thing is called dynamically typed language same variable in its life we can use for multiple types more flexibility to the programmer any doubt clear right sir the next feature what i have to discuss both the procedure oriented and the object oriented right sir what it means observe carefully if i go for c language c language are c you are which type of programming language then immediately c person is going to tell i am um, procedure oriented programming language okay don't worry sir maybe in the next session if it is required i will explain what the meaning of procedure oriented next uh, if i can ask uh, java if i can ask java are you are which type of programming language immediately java person is going to tell i am object oriented programming language like sir now observe c language missing the benefits of oops are you getting in the oops beautiful concepts are there like uh, do you know inheritance polymorphism polymorphism inheritance encapsulation these kind of things right so c missing the benefits of oops next uh, java missing the benefits of procedure oriented okay this is code uh, more more what we call code less code concise code such a type of beautiful procedure oriented features we are going to miss in java sir of course slowly java people also starts uh, thinking about uh, that these days right okay sir now if i can ask python are what about you are what about what about you if i can ask python 
Python is going to tell, very simple man, I am all rounder. Are you getting Python is what? All rounder. Yes, myself is procedure oriented language. Procedure oriented programming language. Myself is object oriented programming language. Myself is scripting language. Are you getting myself is scripting, scripting language. So, Python acts as modular programming language. Are you getting modular, modular programming language? Python is all rounder. Based on our requirement, you can use Python as procedure oriented language or object oriented or scripting language or modular programming language. All the features are there. We never going to miss uh, any benefit of any programming paradigm because my Python follows each and every feature programming features right. Are you in the position to understand? Beautiful facility man. Other languages won't provide this type of support. If you want class and object, object oriented, you can use Python. If you want just uh, right functions, call that function. Right functions, call that procedure oriented right sir just a group of lines line by line i want to execute scripting all facilities are there in based on your programming requirement you can use python in any style so it's more flexible to use clear right this is python is what all huh? python is what all rounder python is all rounder all benefits we are going to get in python remember Sir, now the next feature what I have to discuss, interpreted. Python is interpreted. Sir, do you know, we are not required to compile Python program. Remember this one, sir. It is an interpreted programming language. We are not required to compile Python program. Sir, if you consider C program, if you, if you consider C program, we have to compile and execute. We require to compile and execute. If you consider Java, if you consider Java application, we have to compile and run. Run or execute both are the same. But uh, if you are considering Python, if we are considering Python, we have to run that's all. We are not required to compile internally interpreter is responsible to compile programmer we are not required to compile explicitly inside python virtual machine interpreter is there that interpreter is responsible for performing compilation right if any syntactical mistakes are there then immediately interpreter is going to raise syntax errors right but all syntactical mistakes got cleared then only python virtual machine starts its execution so more flexibility to the programmer we are not required to yeah, we are not required to compile. We are not required to compile explicitly. Remember this one, sir. Okay. So, the, just uh, it is the interpreted. Okay. Like, uh, so programmer will get more flexibility, right? The next feature, what I have to discuss, extensible remember what is the meaning of extensible you can extend you can extend functionality of python application with the some other language applications what it means is sir some c program is there some java program is there can i use that in my python application or not yes no problem at all we can use other language programs in our python sir what is the need very very simple sir i want to develop a python application assume that this is the python python application i want to develop sir this is my requirement in that some xyz functionality required sir some functionality is required but anyway there is a, some java code is there for this functionality java code is already there for xyz functionality okay so it is a non python code is it possible to use this non python code inside our python yes no problem at all so this we can use other language code in our python yes happily it is acceptable remember that so what is the advantage of this one sir the biggest advantage here is we can use we can use 
legacy we can use a legacy non python code non python code in our python application so development time we can reduce already existing things we can use okay one area second area sir performance assume that assume that there is one area is there here performance is the very important sir assume that some x some x x x like some area is there where performance is the very critical assume that this uh, wherever performance is the critical sorry python is not that much that much good performance wise what i have to do yes i will i will develop that that functionality by using c sir c c code i will overall performance of the application of the application will be improved sir overall performance of the application will be improved remember that i hope everyone in the position to understand right so the main important point we can use other language applications in our python code what advantages are there legacy already existing non python code happily we can use second thing is so performance gaps are there those performance gaps also happily we can we can we can able to fill with other language code clear for all of it what is the meaning of extensible okay like next the uh, embedded next uh, feature i have to discuss right sir 10th one embedded embedded sir okay embedded what is the meaning of embedded embedded same thing extensible in reverse means uh, we can use a python code in any other language applications right sir i have java application is there okay for a particular task python i want to use sir so python code python code to can work with java application jaitan 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 version of python we require to use jaitan we require to use so python code inside java application happily we can use happily it can use right similarly i want to develop one c sharp dot net application c sharp dot net application in that can i use python or not happily we can use python means uh, we can embed our python script in any other language application clear for all of right what is the meaning of embedded what is the advantage of this is so the scope of the scope of this python code is going to be in python code in c sharp dot net in java in c language so everywhere you can use this python code means the worthy of this python code is going to be improved the scope the scope of our application is going to be rise like any thing so our application will become what scalable clear for all of you right so what is the meaning of extensible means in our python application you can use other language code what is the meaning of embedded we can use python code in any other languages also embedded extensible so together our python with the other languages together can do wonderful things any doubt sir the next feature what i have to discuss related to python extensive library extensive library observe very carefully sir in python for every requirement ready made library is available sir for every requirement ready made library lakhs of libraries are there in python no other programming language has this much library support do you know so that's why some people may use python has a batteries battery batteries each battery itself is nothing but library huge library support is there being programmer we can use these libraries directly we are not required to implement a functionality right okay so because of this rich library we can write python code very easily with the concise code remember this one sir so python has sir libraries python has batteries a rich library support is available for the python okay well sir now if you want just a small chota example i want to tell do you know otp otp one time password bank applications bank transactions if you want to do otp must be required okay well sir write a python program to generate six digit otp is my requirement right 
okay write a program write a program to generate to generate six digit to generate six digit six digit otp this is my requirement right do you know if i can ask a c programmer if i can ask a java programmer pass you may take minimum 10 minutes time are you getting a big code is going to write but if you can ask python programmer just a matter of one minute is more enough are you getting one minute is more enough two or three lines of the code is more enough how sir how we can do that because to generate random numbers already one battery is available already one library is available that library is called random library are you getting right what is this library sir random library this library contain rand int function rand int function so if you provide 0 comma 9 it is the responsible to generate a random number from 0 to 9. Automatically it will generate some random number. We can't guess which random number we are going to get, sir. So, import this library, call this function, automatically a random digit we are going to get. But uh, our requirement is 6 digit OTP, right? Call this function 6 times. Call this function 6 times. Automatically 6 digit OTP is going to come. Are you getting right? Do you want me to show? Here, observe carefully, right? What I am trying to take is, just I want to write a small Python program. Okay? From random. So, random is Python inbuilt module, sir. Random is the Python inbuilt module. From random, import, import, rand int. Can I rand int? Can you please import? Sir, print, print, rand int rand int of 0 comma 9 sir rand int of 0 comma 9 sir in between 0 to 9 can you please print some random int value let me run this code have a look once up to this what we are going to get so it's a very very simple sir now here do you know now this time i am getting 5 5 sir let me run again this time 3 let me run again 4. Let me run again 0. Let me run again 7. Let me run again 1. Sir, are you getting? Are you seeing right? So, random int value we are getting. But, sir, how many digits are required? Can you please fill out? How many digits? 6 digits are required. So, what I have to take? You have to call this function 6 times. Next, uh, one biggest speciality for the Python print statement is you can pass uh, any number of arguments you can pass any number of arguments that's why so just uh, if you print like a space b space c space d space e space f like this it's going to print at the corresponding a b c d value so you can pass uh, six times uh, the same for the print argument like sir what is the way okay so rand int uh, this is the function just uh, with comma separation take six times uh, second time comma third time comma fourth time comma fifth time comma sixth time that's all sir comma sixth time so total how many times i considered sir six times i considered now you are six digit random otp is ready are you getting six 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 zero two don't feel sir this one is always going to generate six sir. no guarantee now if you observe 813405 if you observe 455294 if you observe 309841 okay 360135 608 okay like uh, it's going to generate from 0 to 9 some random number okay like 6 digit random number then immediately you may ask sir i don't want space i don't want space in the middle sir so can you please remove the space just one small argument i have to take what is that argument is so a comma b comma c comma d a space b space and so on comma last uh, s e p is equal to empty are i don't want any separator separator like i have to pass s e p is equal to empty of course we will discuss in detail don't worry sir have a look once s e p 
SEP is equal to at last comma SEP is equal to empty separator is equal to empty empty means no space no space in the middle have you observed 503 157 next the 73 double eight five seven one zero four like this have you observed right like it's going to come sir this is the way how to print how to generate a random six is a random number how many lines of the code is required <laughs> how many lines of the code is required two lines if you can ask a java person c language person oh they are going to write this much lengthy code remember that so that is the biggest advantage of python concise code suppose sir i don't want one otp i want to 10 otps i want to 10 otp just use a small for loop have a look once how easy to use for loop so for i in range of 10 sir for i in range of 10 that's all for i in range of 10 10 sir print so means that this for loop is going to execute 10 times 10 otps will be generated have a look once yes friend 10 otps are generated no two otps are the same can you please observe that okay now let me execute again let me execute again let me execute again this is that much a simple so even big big lengthy requirements also complex requirements also because of library support we can write very easily with the python batteries python libraries clear for all of you right these are various important features related to python Sir, now let me summarize all the features related to Python, whatever we covered. Observe carefully, sir. What is the first one? Simple and easy to learn. Sir, have you observed? Reading Python, Python program is just like reading English language. It is a very simple, concise code. Concise code is the biggest advantage. We can reduce development time and we can reduce project cost also. Okay, everyone can able to learn very easily, sir. Just only 33 keywords are available. If you understand those 33 keywords, you will become Python expert. Remember, what is the next one, sir? It is the freeware and open source. To use Python, we are not required to pay single paisa because Python is coming from Python software foundation a non-profitable organization right okay next it is the open source so we can access source code of the python based on your requirement you can customize python and happily you can use that customizer version jaythan iron python pi pi like multiple anaconda python minaconda python like there are multiple python versions are available okay like next the uh, high level programming language okay so it is a programmer friendly language remember next uh, low level activities like uh, memory management security object destruction all these low level activities my python virtual machine is going to take care being a programmer we are not required to worry about uh, these activities right clear for love right so high level programming language next uh, platform independent nature sir write once uh, your python application you can run on any platform okay python never going to depends on particular platform if i write one python script it can run on windows machine linux machine mac machine who is the responsible to convert uh, that python application into platform specific internally python virtual machine is the responsible python virtual machine is the platform dependent uh, but python application is platform independent remember that next uh, portability sir we can migrate python application from one platform to another platform very very easily without affecting without performing any changes we can migrate python applications from one platform to another platform very easily sir today i'm using windows but tomorrow windows license cost is the bigger headache for me security is also not up to the mark i want to migrate my python program from windows mission to linux mission happily you can do same functionality you are going to get you are not required to perform any code changes so migration will become very easy which is a nothing but what portability right next uh, dynamically typed 
do you know this is python specific this feature is not available with the crc++ or java or c sharp dot net right so dynamically type so in python we are not required to declare type explicitly based on our runtime requirement based on our provided value automatically type will be considered are getting this behavior is nothing but what dynamically typed we can use the same variable for multiple types based on our requirement that flexibility is also there to the programmer okay like next the both the procedure oriented object oriented sir sir you know python he is all rounder he can perform he can perform keeping he can perform bowling he can perform batting also <laughs> okay like uh, same way yeah so python is object oriented procedure oriented okay like uh, even scripting language modular programming language based on your requirement in any style you can use python happily python can mold based on your requirement right so python can enjoy the benefits of procedural programming object oriented programming next uh, scripting language benefits modular programming language benefits all those benefits by default will be available to the python sir it is also python specific behavior which is not there for c which is not there for java which is not available for c uh, c++ or c sharp dot net right okay python specific next python is interpreted we are not required to compile we are not required to compile internally python interpreter is going to take care about compilation syntax checking all those things python interpreter will takes care sir we are not required to compile compile python interpreter is a part of python virtual mission of course internally take care just we have to execute python code okay next uh, extensible means uh, you can use other language applications in python okay inside python java application you can use dot net application you can use c language application you can use right python application will become extensible okay like next uh, embedded sir you can use uh, your python application inside uh, c application java application right python applications can be embedded anywhere okay which is nothing but what embedded so if you have embedded capability your application will become powerful the scalability of application is going to be raised like anything sir okay well next uh, python having extensive library tons of libraries are available inside python inbuilt libraries third party libraries right for every requirement libraries are available do you know even complex requirements also with these libraries happily we can write the code sir do you know it is also python specific behavior this much library support no other language having sir what is this one extensive library each library itself is a battery python has batteries means that python has libraries clear for all of you right so these are sir 11 important features what you have to explain if any person is asking can you please explain features of python but especially these three dynamically typed procedure oriented object oriented all rounder next extensive library these are specific to python these features are not supported in java or c or c++ or dot net right is it clear for all of you right that's all sir by mistake any person is asking can you please explain features of python give left and right to that person clear right hi friends in the last videos we covered very clearly what are various features of python okay python is a dynamically typed platform independent portable like uh, multiple features we covered sir sir what is the next topic we have to discuss related to python fundamentals okay limitations of python sir what are various major limitations are there for the python sir i know python is the king python is a hero but uh, there are some areas python is not up to the mark what are various such type of limitations are there okay just observe that sir do you know here we have m l is there what is that ml <laughs> what is the ml sir mission learning do you know mission learning yes sir. these days uh, trending word mission learning mission learning right 
to develop machine learning applications sir python is the best choice you know right python itself is the best choice to develop machine learning applications then immediately we ask why sir why the reason is python contain there are several libraries are available by using those libraries we can develop machine learning applications very very easily sir have you heard about numpy numpy just for mathematics support just for mathematics support to add mathematics to the python numpy module is there next uh, to import to import and read the data set uh, we have pandas is there okay pandas module is available next uh, to project uh, this uh, data in the in the form of graphs charts like uh, matplotlib matplotlib is there sir okay like uh, sir python contain several libraries to build uh, ml applications very easily that's why python is the best choice for machine learning applications okay well sir you are talking about limitations why you are why you are telling about this one within a minute you can get are you in the position to understand right so python can be used uh, to develop machine learning applications or not to build machine learning models uh, python is the best choice right because python having sir library support to build up ml applications very easily right okay numpy module pandas module matplotlib next and after that sk learn sk sk learn scikit scikit learn like uh, multiple modules are available right okay now the point is sir i want to develop i want to develop mobile applications are you getting i want to develop mobile mobile application python is the worst choice remember this one sir python is not suitable to develop mobile applications then immediately you ask why sir why the reason is python not having library support to develop mobile applications as of now maybe in the future maybe maybe as of now library support is not there that's why if you want to develop mobile application okay python is not at all suitable programming language remember this one sir then immediately ask sir which programming language is the best choice to develop mobile applications android android ios swift are you getting android? android and i was say ios swift are the kings in mobile application development sir java c c++ python these type of languages are not suitable to develop mobile applications clear right okay sir because library support is not there now i hope you can understand sir why python is the best choice for ml library support is there why python is not a choice for mobile applications library support is not there similarly i want to develop enterprise applications right observe that enterprise i want to develop end to end enterprise applications like sir can you please give an example for enterprise application banking application telecom application like there multiple services are required transaction management messaging like multiple services must be required such type of applications are called enterprise application best example banking applications banking banking applications next uh, telecom applications banking applications next telecom telecom applications telecom telecom applications like uh, so to develop these end to end applications enterprise application python is not the best choice simple reason no that that much library support sir okay sufficient library support is not available everything we have to do is kilometers code we have to write that's why not at all suitable for enterprise applications for python remember that so if any person is asking what are various limitations where python we can't use one is mobile application area second one sir enterprise application area can you please give an example for enterprise application banking application telecom application like it is going to expert huge number of services like transaction management security next uh, messaging services like multiple things are required here library support is not there that's why python is not the best choice right next uh, one more important thing have you remembered 
Python is interpreted programming language. Somewhere we covered in the features, right? Python is interpreted programming language. The execution should be happen line by line. Sir, first line, and then second line, and then third line, and then fourth line, like uh, line by line execution is going to be happen. That's why performance wise, Python is not good because, because it is interpreted programming language. Usually interpreted languages, interpreted programming languages, performance wise not up to the mark. That's why, so performance uh, is a low, performance uh, is a low, low when compared with the other languages because of it's uh, interpreted in nature. C, C++ and Python, C and C++ too good performance wise, but Python is not that much good. Remember that. Sir, next uh, to improve performance, uh, now the people added JIT compiler. JIT compiler concept to the Python virtual machine. Okay. So, JIT compiler concept to the Python virtual machine. Instead of interpreting one by one, line by line every time, a group of lines uh, will be interpreted only once. Uh, and every time that uh, interpreted code is going to use directly, something like JIT compiler concept is there, which is the responsible to do that. So, JIT compiler added to the Python virtual machine, that uh, flavor is called uh, PyPy. Okay. If you want performance, then obviously better to go for Pi Pi version. Pi Pi version, which is also known as Python for speed. Remember this one, Python for speed. This version is available, but still performance wise, not up to the mark of uh, this Python, right? So, these are various important limitations are there for the Python. Can you please spell out, sir, what limitations are there? First limitation for mobile applications, Python is not suitable, not choice. Next up for enterprise applications like banking application, telecom application, end-to-end -end services are required. Python is not best choice because library support is not there. Next up, Python is the interpreted programming language. Interpreted programming languages are lack of performance, right? That's why performance is low relatively. But to improve performance, JIT compiler concept came in the picture. JIT compiler concept with the Python, which is also known as PyPy to improve performance but still still not uh, not up to the mark remember these are various limitations related to our python clear for all of you right sir up to this it is very clear about limitations of python next uh, i have to discuss about flavors of python flavor flavors of python right so do you know in the last videos i covered python is freeware freeware and open source somewhere we discussed uh, freeware and open source freeware means we are not required to pay single paisa it is uh, provided by non-profitable organization python software foundation okay something like trust they are providing that's why we are not required to pay single paisa right sir what is the meaning of open source anyone can you please tell what it means open source python is open source what it means the source code the source code is open any person can access source code of the python okay assume that the standard python may not fulfill my requirement right assume i have some programming requirement is there the standard python may not provide much support for that okay so what i have to do i have access to source code i want to do some modifications some extra libraries i want to add and that customized customized python version customized python python version okay so can fulfill my requirement right so if for source code is open means uh, any person can access any person can allow to access the source code based on our requirement we can modify are you getting right so then the customized python version is possible assume that sir i customized something now i'm going to keep the name for this customizer version is d python r durga python <laughs> are you getting d python r durga python 
python if you are performing modification then you can keep your name xyz python like this right so for python multiple flavors are available remember that sir for python how many flavors are multiple flavors are available each flavor itself is a customized version of python to fulfill a particular specific requirement regarding so same rule is applicable for unix also in the case of unix uh, sir ubuntu is there linux is there red hat linux is there multiple flavors of unix unix is there same terminology for multiple flavors of python is also possible because it's a open source okay now what are various flavors of python sir sir the first python the standard version of python is a c python observe this the standard version of python is a c python which is provided by python software foundation it is a c python it is a standard version best suitable to work with the c language applications best suitable to work with the c language c language applications right it is a standard flavor because python came in which year 1991 at that time c language is the best best popular more popular programming language that's why to work with the c which version of python we are going to use this is standard version c python right suppose i want to work with the java language i want to work with the java language a customized python version must be required that customized python version is j python j python r jaitan are <laughs> getting j python r jaitan this is a customized version of python to work with the java applications man to work with the java java applications this is the customized version of python do you know this jaitan code can run on java virtual machine just like our pvm for java to execute java code some mission must be required java virtual machine java virtual machine can understand our jaitan code remember this one sir next uh, after that okay have you ever heard about iron python have you heard about iron iron python don't tell the python which is developed by using iron <laughs> okay no iron python means a customized version of python to work with the to work to work with the c sharp dot net applications right remember this one to work with microsoft c sharp dot net applications so customized version of python is iron python okay like next uh, i hope you may aware ruby python are getting what is this one sir ruby ruby python to work with the ruby ruby applications right ruby platform to work with the ruby platform so which version of python came ruby python came in the picture okay like similarly have you heard about anaconda python <laughs> anaconda anaconda python sir sir most beautiful concept if you want to work with the data science if you want to work with the machine learning machine learning deep learning artificial intelligence like if you want to work with that area compulsory we require to go for anaconda python because the reason is this python sir contain several inbuilt libraries which are suitable for which are which are suitable for data data science applications right sir best example pandas numpies matplotlib sklr all these things all these modules inbuilt available inside anaconda python not only these libraries right it is going to provide a special ide spider ide next to jupyter notebooks like it's a big it is a specialized python platform specialized python version to work with the data data science applications if you want to handle large volumes of data better to go for what anaconda python remember this one sir to work to work with the with the large volumes of data large large volume of data tons of data i want to work then obviously we require to go for what anaconda python next just now i explain one thing sir here stack less observe a bit very carefully sir stack less if you want to work with the concurrent applications concurrent execution multi threading you have remember right if you want to work concurrency if you want to work to develop concurrent application then obviously we should go for stack less okay python for 
concurrency python for concurrency like this right python python for concurrency like sir next uh, very important point sir have you remembered pi 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 somewhere just now i covered pi pi python for speed pi pi python for speed speed like this right do you know internally sir python virtual machine contain jit compiler just in time compiler python virtual machine internally contain what jit compiler just in time compiler automatically performance by default is going to be improved sir okay please make sure these are various flavors of python there are multiple sir these are some important standard flavors okay so why these many flavors are possible for the python Hey, simple reason why these many flavors are possible for the python because python is a open source sir because of these many flavors based on your programming requirement happily we can go for the corresponding customized version sir i want to develop on python application which is required to communicate with the java applications right then better to go for jaitan version or again better to go for jaitan version sir sir i want to develop python application where performance is the very important sir better to go for pi pi i want to develop machine learning models ml 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 i am ml engineer i want to develop machine learning models then better to go for what anaconda python like based on your programming requirement you can choose the corresponding flavor so more easiness to the developers more flexibility to the developers right next why these many flavors are possible because of only one reason python is open source based on our requirement you can customize you can create your own customized version of python which is nothing but flavor any doubt are in the position to understand so how many flavors are there multiple flavors are available sir which flavor we are going to use in our training sir usually we will go for okay c python remember this one tomorrow if i'm going to start machine learning then obviously which flavor of python i require to use sir anaconda python clear for all of you right but standard version c python we are going to use in our python classes right clear sir in the last video we covered very clearly what are various limitations of python next uh, what flavors are there sir sir now i have to explain which versions are there related to python version history observe that sir here do you know python first version python label 0.9.0 is the first first version of python original version sir which was released on february 20th 1991 have you remembered right okay this is official date of birth for python february 20th 1991 and then there are several sub versions came sir but whenever jan 1994 okay python 1.0 came so 1.1 1.x version came in jan 1994 sir okay like Next, uh, Python 2x, 2.0 version came on October 16, 2000, right? Sir, here several subversions are there. Okay, like I will show all these uh, things, right? Next, uh, Python 2.0, October 16, 2000, year. Sir, PY2K, the people are going to use uh, this version is called Py2K, Py2K, like this, right? Sir, now, do you know multiple subversions came? Next uh, Python 3.0 came December 3rd, 2008, uh, PY3K, the people are going to use right, PY3K, this version sir, December 3, 2008, okay. So, these are major versions uh, which was released, uh, these are the major Python versions which was released by Python Software Foundation, right. Now, observe including subversions also, if you want to just uh, have a look once about these uh, things, right, observe that. Python 0 0.9.0 original version of Python came February 20th 1991 remember that okay sir next uh, several sub versions came 0 0.9.1 0 0.9.2 0 0.9.4 are getting 0 0.9.5 0 0.99.6 like uh, there are there are several things uh, came maybe maybe uh, <laughs> maybe August it may be okay this is the august august like 
okay like february like sir this is python uh, this is like there are these are various subversions are related to python 0.9 series right next the python 1.0 came in january 1994 these are various uh, subversions right 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 1.6 similarly python 2.0 came october 16 2000 2.1 2.2 2.3 4 5 6 7 like this right sir so this is a 2k 2k py 2k version right next the python 3.0 came december 3rd 2018 okay like this is this is the uh, these are various sub versions what we have the most recent version of python is uh, python as of today python 3.3.7.2 version sir remember this one python 3.7.2 version sir where is the proof for that if you observe that if you if you observe python dot org observe this this is the official website for the python sir python dot org if you observe now if i want to install download download observe that which version is there python 3.7.2 this is the most recent version sir remember remember this one sir now i want to talk of course the most latest is python 3x right now i want to talk very very important point related to python 2x and python 3x very very important conclusion please listen sir python 2x versus python 3x sir now before that just aware if you consider java java version sir as of today sir latest version of java is java 11 sir 11 maybe in the next month java 12 may come java 11 sir now java 10 was there next java 8 there java 7 there java 9 there okay like java 1.0 version is also there sir now my question is sir when compared with java python oh full training grow growing language right the very speedly growing language is the python when compared with java today today like now sir if you observe what is the most recent version of java java 11 very important sir please listen carefully this five minutes of discussion java 11 java 11 should provide support for java 10 or not if i install java 11 in my system java 10 program can run on java 11 or not if i install java 10 java 10 on my system is it going to provide support for java 9 or not java 8 or not java 7 or not okay please make sure sir every new version software should provide support for all old versions sir. remember this every new version software should provide support for all old versions right that's why this feature is also known as backward compatibility what is this one sir can you please spell out backward compatibility this feature is also known as backward compatibility if you install java 11 in your system it can provide support for java 10 java 9 java 8 like this this support is called what backward compatibility advantage is there problem is also there slowly we will discuss what is the problem advantage is every new version should provide support for all old versions right okay well so same way now i will ask the question python 2 point if if i install python 3x python 3x 3 3.7 or 3.6 like is it going to provide support for python 2.x or not hey respond with this knowledge you can you can tell very easily if i install python 3x is it going to provide support for python 2.x or not yes or no <laughs> yes or no legend very carefully very dangerous point sir sir python 3x is not a advanced version of python 2x remember python 2x it is it is one language assume that python 3x is not a extension to python 2x it is a developed yes 
completely independent language. Remember this one, sir. Python 3.x developed as yes, completely independent language. This language, sir, not extension to Python 2.x version. Remember that. That's why if it is the next new release, it should provide support for old version, sir. But it's developed like a complete brand new programming language. That's why Python 3.x version won't provide support for Python 2.x. Remember this one. In Python 2.x, sir, do you know long data type is there, which is not there in the Python 3.x? Regarding in Python 2.x, do you know if you want to print, print a hello, print a hello like this I'm taking, sir. So parentheses are optional in the Python 2x, but in Python 3x, parentheses must be required. Print of hello. Parenthesis must be required, but in in 2x, in 2x, do you know parentheses are not there, are not are optional, but here must be required. That's why. So it is completely developed as new programming language. That's why backward compatibility is not there. Python 3x, there is no guarantee it is going to provide support for Python 2.x. Are you getting? Are you in the position to understand clearly, right? Sir, this is. So, what is the, is it a problem or not? Yes, obviously, backward compatibility is not there. It is the problem. But, what is the advantage? So, if you are missing something, you are going to get something. What the advantage here is, sir, if I want to add any new feature to this one, I never worry about, is it going to be provided support in the Python 2x? Is it going to be provided support in the Python 1x or not? Because, we are not required to worry about backward compatibility our hands are completely free you can add any new feature to the python 3x remember this one because python 2x python 1x are old 1991 time languages but today 2019 maybe programming requirements rapidly got changed then if i want to use old version only it is a bigger problem that's why so it is the brand new you can add any type of libraries as per current trending requirement that's why so advantage here is you can add the new features very freely very easily easily because backward compatibility is not there that is the biggest advantage right so because if it is implemented as the language separate language advantage what is the advantage so it will become more powerful as per current market requirement but the problem backward compatibility is not there is it clear for all of it sir but uh, in java in java 11 or java 12 if i want to add one small new feature i have to think about 1.0 supported 1.1 supported 1.2 supported by considering all these things okay this feature not recommended to add because java 7 may not provide support so it's a bigger problem sir that's why because of this backward compatibility java people hands are very tight they are not in a position to add new features that much freely right okay but here in python we are not having such type of problem remember this if any java person is going to ask are durga java is going down so to make java powerful what we have to do what we require to do if any java person if oracle people are going to approach me my suggestion is always sir java came in 1995 1995 almost around uh, sir 24 25 years before language eh? you are keep on adding that feature this feature that modification this modification and so on so there the programming requirements are different current programming requirements are different current day-to-day -day programming requirements are different better to release uh, a brand new java then definitely you are going to succeed if you are keep on adding that modification that feature this feature definitely it will be go graph going down only remember that that's why so compulsory recommended brand new programming language as per current market training requirements that's why so are you able to understand right python 2x python 3x both are different both are developed as independent languages or it is extension to python 2x no independent language the advantage is you can add new features very easily the problem is backward compatibility is not there sir clear for all of you right next uh, sir do you know a small analogy okay your grandfather your grandfather so almost around the 30 years before constructed a small house sir <laughs> assume that a small house uh, your grandfather constructed assume assume that 
then you have to do modifications for the same also okay do that modification do this modification do, do this modification and so on what will happen <laughs> what will happen how many modifications you can do for that small for that old house if you are keep on modifying 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 adding some new feature new feature at certain day this one is going to be down this one is going to be collapsed are you getting that's why what you have to do after 20 years or after 25 years instead of performing modifications to the old one better to construct a new house are getting better to construct a new house if i construct a new house today as per market requirement i can i can add uh, the required features are you getting so in python people did uh, constructing the new house uh, but java people are doing what is that for the same old house only they are doing that modification this modification that is the reason why java is slowly going down i hope everyone in the position to understand right okay well next uh, 2x 3x which one is the recommended as per current market requirement the trends compulsory we should go for python 3x we are not required to learn python 2x sir sir next make sure from 2020 onwards python people updated no support for python 2x okay only support is available for python 3x that's why if you want to learn python our hand should go for what python 3x version any doubt are you in the position to understand right what are various python versions which version is the recommended when compared with java what facilities are there in the python 3x backward compatibility what is the story like this right clear for all of you my friends in the last videos we covered very clearly about the basic python introduction what are various application areas of python features next what are limitations next up flavors are available python versions like multiple theoretical things we just completed right sir now the next thing what i have to discuss sir slowly programming we require to start before starting the next basic things are identifiers identifiers and reserved words we have to discuss sir the next uh, let me talk first uh, python identifiers okay this is the topic what we are going to start sir sir now can you please tell what is identifier yes friends identifier what it means suppose in my class almost around 10 students are there assume that how i can identify each person is a ravi shiva pavan okay like by name by name i can identify each person a name in python program is called identifier sir here human human names we are we are using student names to identify the student same way we have to use a name to identify variable to identify class to identify method that the name itself is considered as identifier so a name in python program are you getting name name in python program is called identifier okay like sir it can be a variable name it can be a variable name or it can be class name or it can be method name like uh, any name a name in python program is called identifier which can be used for identification purpose okay like sir i'm taking a is equal to 10 sir are you getting a is equal to 10 sir what is a a is name of variable which can be used to represent 10 this a itself is nothing but identifier right are you getting what is the meaning of identifier the name itself is identifier okay similarly sir i'm taking class class test class test okay some code i'm going to write sir okay anyway in object oriented programming i will discuss in detail class test colon just like this sir what is a test test is name of the class this name itself is nothing but identifier are you in the position to understand right what is identifier identifier is a name it can be a method name variable name class name which can be used for identification purpose if 10 variables are there how i can identify 
each variable by using its name if 10 classes are there how i can differentiate each class by using its name sir same for methods and modules also okay well so now just assume you have one kid is there do you have the kids they respond man do you have the kids yes or no huh, do you have the kids okay don't tell no no even you are not having the kids don't tell no you have to tell soon you have to tell soon okay the reason is you are learning very trending programming language python after completing python learning you will get the job once you got the job obviously you will get the marriage once you are getting the marriage obviously blessed with the kids don't worry sir just as soon you are going to get the kids okay well now assume you have one kid is there you have to name your kid you have to create name for your kid okay like so you compulsory you have to choose do you know uh, something like a naming ceremony in our in our families it's a big festival okay it's going to celebrate like anything man naming ceremony for the kid it's a it's a, it's a great uh, ceremony in the in the houses okay like assume you have to create name for your kid okay compulsory the name is going to reflect either god name or goddess name or otherwise your ancestor name like your grandfather name or grandmother name something like it's going to reflect or if you are very modern person open the google the most stylish name hindu name or muslim name starts with k like you are going to search and then you will keep the name so you are doing the great research to name your kids correct right it's a it's a it's a very common sir in our houses the same way if you want to create python name compulsory we have to follow certain rules and regulations okay what rules are there for python identifiers almost around four to five rules are there these things i have to discuss right okay just uh, observe a bit very carefully about uh, this uh, terminology sir rules uh, to define identifiers like rules uh, to define or create create python identifiers okay what rules are there like sir the first first rule sir the only allowed characters in python identifiers are alphabet symbols alphabet symbols either small a to z or capital a to z okay either small a to z capital alphabet symbols are allowed digits are allowed 0 to 9 digits are allowed next uh, underscore symbol is allowed are you getting underscore underscore symbol is allowed the only allowed characters in python identifiers are these are the things right a to z capital a to z 0 to 9 underscore symbol by mistake if you are using any other character immediately syntax error we are going to get python virtual machine will give left and right remember that suppose if i'm taking example c a s h is equal to 10 i'm taking c a s h is equal to 10 is it valid or not valid valid c a dollar h is equal to 20 i'm taking immediately syntax error we are going to get but the reason for that is dollar is not the allowed symbol in python identifier are you getting right so only alphabet symbols digits and the underscore symbol only no other symbols are allowed dollar not allowed okay like sir similarly sir all at the rate hands all at the rate hands is equal to 30 i'm taking if you can take like this immediately error we are going to get what is the reason for that get the rate symbol we are not allowed to use are you getting right first rule which symbols are allowed okay these are only allowed symbols by mistake if you are using any other character immediately you will get error have a look once observe carefully right here i'm taking so c a c a s h is equal to 10 valid sir perfect c a dollar h is equal to 20 i'm taking have you observed syntax error invalid syntax syntax error invalid syntax next all at the rate hands 
all at the rate hands is equal to 30 I'm taking sir again syntax error again syntax error something like all at the rate hands is equal to 30 again it is the syntax error like this so the important conclusion what you people should aware these are the only characters which are allowed in Python identifiers by mistake if you are using any other symbol syntax error okay well now the second rule sir do you know if I can take like this, can you please confirm? Total 1, 2, 3 is equal to 10 I am taking. 1, 2, 3 total is equal to 20 I am taking. Can you please confirm among these two, which is valid, which is invalid? Are both are valid or both are invalid? Do you know this rule is ap applicable in almost every programming language? Don't feel it is Python specific, sir. Do you know? Perfectly, this one is valid, second one is invalid. Perfectly, first one is valid, second one is invalid. Why? What is the reason for that? Hmm. What is the reason for that? Very simple. The reason is identifier should not start with the digit. Observe that. Identifier should not start with the digit. By mistake, identifier starts with the digit. Immediately, syntax error again. Remember, what is the second rule, sir? Identifiers cannot start with the digit. Observe carefully. Here, I am taking total, total 1, 2, 3 is equal to, sorry, sorry. Total 1, 2, 3 is equal to 10 I am taking. If I can take total 1, 2, 3 is equal to 10, perfectly valid, sir. Perfectly valid, valid, no problem at all. 1, 2, 3 total is equal to 10 I am taking. Immediately, syntax error we are going to get invalid syntax. Identifiers should not start with the digit. Are you getting right? So, second rule is the very clear for you people, right? Identifier can't start with the digit. Next, the third one, sir. Here, observe carefully. Here, I am taking third rule. If I can take total is equal to 10. Total is equal to 20. Sir, total is equal to 30. How many variables I am taking? Three variables. But what is the difference? Difference in the values. Difference here with the case also. Here all are lower case. But next one, only first letter is upper case. But the next one, all are upper case. So, can you please tell, case is important in Python or not? What answer you have to tell? Python is case sensitive programming language where case is important, sir. Of course, Python identifiers also case sensitive. Are you getting so lower case and upper case? There is a difference there in the Python identifiers, right? So Python identifiers are case sensitive or not? Yes, of course, Python itself is a case sensitive programming language. Sir, have a look once. Is it real or not? Okay, I am taking total is equal to 10. Total is equal to 10. Sir, total is equal to 20. Sir, now total is equal to 30 I am taking. Sir, how many variables I declared? Three variables I declared, sir. So, with respect to case, you can differentiate. Suppose I am asking total. What is the value I have to get, sir? 10 is the answer. If I can take uh, total, if I can take total, what is the answer? 20 is the answer. If I can take uh, total, what is the answer we have to get, sir? 30 is the answer we are going to get. So, terminology is the very clear for you people, right? So, Python identifiers are case sensitive. Okay, well. Sir, now, fourth rule. Very important rule, sir. Of course, this rule is applicable everywhere. Do you know, is there any length limit uh, for Python identifier? Can you please confirm, is there any length limit uh, for Python identifier? No length limit. If you want, you can take one crore length identifier also acceptable, man. There is no, no length limit. Are you getting no length limit uh, for Python identifiers? Remember that. Have a look once, sir. Here I am taking. Here I am taking, sir, x, 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 and so on, is equal to 10, I am taking. Yes, perfectly, itself is valid, sir. If I am trying to print, what is the value? If I am trying to print, what is the, the value of this one? Yes, 10 we are going to get. It is, it is the acceptable, sir. Now, here, assume that, assume, assume that, I am taking one variable, sir. What is my variable? Yes, 
X, 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 and so on. <laughs> don't get shaka. Don't get shaka. Okay? Now I'm taking Y, 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 Y. Like this I'm taking. And then, and then I'm taking Z, 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 like this. I'm taking Z, 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 like, like I'm taking, sir. Its value I'm trying to take just a 10. Its value I'm trying to take just a 10, sir. Okay, observe. A bit dangerous line what I'm trying to take. Was it is the its value is the 10. Wow, this is the variable, sir. Now I want to print the, the value of this variable. I want to print the, the value of this variable, sir. Now I have to use print of okay, like this I'm taking. Print of like sir. Anyway, instead of 10, let me take double seven, double seven, like this I'm taking. I'm trying to print, sir. Can you please confirm? Is it going to work or not? Is it is it is it going to work or not? Okay, let me go for D colon Durga classes. PY test dot PY. PY test dot PY. I wrote a beautiful application, sir. Now I'm taking, I'm trying to execute. Yes, perfectly it's going to work. It's 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 working, it's going to print double seven double seven, sir. Now I called one expert programmer. Observe one expert person I called. Are you, I wrote beautiful Python program. Have a look once like uh, I showed this code, sir, to the Python expert. Then he asked, uh, he saw First, what is the feeling he saw from top to bottom? Durga, what you did? Sir, I declared one variable. I am trying to print the value of this variable. To declare a variable and trying to print the value of variable, this much code is required. This much code is required. What, what it means? Is it a designer? Is it a Python program? Like, uh, he's going to get left and right, I'm sure. So, means that, means that, sir, even there is no length limit for the identifier, but not recommended to take uh, two lengthy identifiers. Unnecessary, readability by default is going to be down. Everyone in the position to understand, right? Readability by default itself is going to be down, sir. Not recommended to take two lengthy identifiers. Length of the identifier should be okay, medium. Next, the name itself is going to reflect the purpose of that identifier. Okay, don't take 100 length, 200 length, 300 length identifiers. Not good programming practice. Okay, well, sir, next, the next point, sir. Very, very important point like no length limit. Sir, now if I can take x is equal to 10, valid or not? Ah, x is equal to 10, perfectly valid, no problem, right? If I can take, if I can take if is equal to 20, if I can take if is equal to 20, immediately error we are going to get. The reason for that is. In Python, if is a keyword, regarding if is a keyword, reserved word, okay? So in Python, keywords are there, reserved words are there. These keywords are reserved words having some special meaning or functionality. We can't use uh, these keywords are reserved words as identifiers. By mistake, if you are trying to use, immediately error we are going to get. Any doubt about this terminology, sir? Okay, this is uh, another another important point. Have a look once. Sir, I'm trying to take. Sir, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to take. If x is equal to 10, valid, no issue at all. If is equal to 10, I'm taking, sir. If I can take, if is equal to 10, syntax error, invalid syntax. Okay, syntax error, invalid syntax, right. So, these are various important conclusions what you have to follow while defining identifiers, right. Sir, total how many rules are there? Five rules. What is the rule number one? The only allowed characters in Python identifiers are alphabet symbols, digits, underscore symbol. Next, the second rule, Python identifiers identifiers can't start with the digit okay by mistake if you are trying to start with the digit immediately error we are going to get second rule sir third rule third rule sir python identifiers are case sensitive lower case and upper case there is a difference there of course python language itself is case sensitive programming language okay well next uh, there is no length limit for python identifiers no length limit for python identifiers but not recommended to take a two lengthy identifiers right next uh, reserved words or keywords are there we can't use uh, keywords or reserved words as identifiers because these are associated with some meaning or functionality. So, while defining Python identifier, these are rules better to keep in your mind. Clear for all of you right up to this? Sir, so just observe which of the following are 
valid python identifiers so with our previous knowledge can you please answer which are valid python identifiers right sir what is the first one cache is it valid or not yes it contain only our allowed alphabet symbols only no problem at all acceptable can you please see a dollar h immediately error we are going to get syntax error what the reason dollar symbol is not allowed not allowed in identifier right sir total 1 2 3 valid but the 1 2 3 total it is invalid what the reason what the reason identifier can't starts with the digit okay next all at the rate hands invalid because at the rate symbol is not allowed in python identifier java to share what is the problem yes perfectly valid because it contain alphabet symbols and digits only valid right sir if not allowed because it is a reserved word are getting if is not allowed next underscore durga underscore underscore python perfectly valid no issue at all sir okay like uh, it's a very clear what rules we have to follow to define identifiers right sir now I want to cover one very, very important point. Take special care about this one, sir. I have one variable is there, sir. I have one variable is there, x. I have underscore x is there, okay? I have underscore underscore x is there. Next, I have underscore underscore x underscore underscore. 100% pakka, all are valid Python identifiers only. Now, do you have any difference between these things? Can you please spell out? Without underscore, with underscore. With two underscores. Two underscores at the beginning, two underscores at the last. Do you have any specific conventions are there because of these things? Okay, remember in the oops concept we require to discuss in detail, but anyway up to that just aware, okay? Here x means normal variable. Normal, normal variable just like ABC. Value. Underscore x. If any variable starts with the underscore symbol, this variable is considered as protected variable. Regarding what is this variable, sir? This variable is considered as what? Protected variable. If any variable starts with the underscore symbol, it is the protected variable. Next, uh, if any variable starts with the two underscore symbols, two underscore symbol, that variable is called private variable. Are you getting that variable is called one? Private, private variable. Too much private. It is the strictly private, sir. Like, uh, next, uh, starts with the two underscore symbols and the ends with the two underscore symbol. This is called uh, magic variable. Are you getting this variable is called one magic magic variable right so language level it has some meaning or functionality language level variables uh, identifier can starts with the two underscore symbols and ends with the two underscore symbol like uh, do you know like uh, underscore underscore yard underscore underscore this is the magic method language level language predefined magic method this sir underscore underscore name underscore underscore language level predefined variable this okay like so just aware if the variable starts with underscore symbol protected if the variable starts with two underscore symbols private if the variable starts with two underscore symbols and ends with two underscore symbol okay this is such a type of identifiers are language specific predefined identifier which are also known as magic variables right of course in the next sessions we will talk about the, these things in detail remember just aware there is some difference there with the underscore symbols right clear for all of you right what is identifier a name in python program is called identifier what rules are there to define python identifiers next uh, sir if a variable starts with underscore starts with two underscore ends with two underscore what will happen is there any speciality is there like uh, these are the various things you should aware about identifiers concept clear Sir, in the last videos, we covered very clearly about identifiers concept. Sir, now the next thing what I have to discuss, reserved words or keywords. Sometimes we may use the word 
keywords reserved words are keywords right now do you know if you observe your school days but golden days in our life we never having any worries in our life those days are school days right do you know no one is going to ask when you will get the job no one will ask when you will get marriage okay no such type of commitments right okay but these days everywhere everyone is going to question when you will get the job when you will get the marriage and so on right okay well if you remember the school days first first in the in the school what things you learn have you remember right ha ah, alphabet symbols a b c d like uh, alphabet symbols we learn next after completing alphabet symbols what we learn the next have you remembered words a for ha ah. <laughs> a for apple b for banana ha ah, c for oi <laughs> c for cat like uh, some words we we covered right we we learn in the school do you know like uh, so these words what we learn in english these words are called reserved words related to english remember this one sir in any language it may be general speaking language like english or programming language like python or java in any language there are some words are reserved to represent some meaning or functionality such type of words are called reserved words sir if you consider english language okay english in the english language apple okay apple this what is reserved to represent one type of fruit are you getting next banana this word is also reserved to represent one type of fruit only right sir cat this word is reserved to represent one type of animal animal cat cat like sir do you know like there are multiple number of reserved words are there sir in english how many reserved words are there Huh? how many are there crores do you know if you observed oxford dictionary this much a size a dictionary you can see so there are crore crores of reserved words are there in english that's why learning english is a too much dangerous language right okay like but if you consider programming languages like python do you know python next java java if you want java also sir here also there are some words are reserved to represent some meaning or functionality reserved words are there in java how many reserved words are there sir 53 reserved words are there oh when compared with the uh, english language learning java is the very easy just how many reserved words are there 53 reserved words are there small chota programming language right but if you consider our python python contain just the 33 reserved words only are you getting how many reserved words 33 reserved words only if you understand yeah these 33 reserved words you will become python expert remember this one so that's why when compared with java when compared with english python is very small chota programming language we can learn very easily right okay sir now i will list out all 33 reserved words which are available in python okay first you have to tell what is reserved word what is the reserved word the words which are reserved to represent some meaning or functionality such type of words are called reserved words remember that sir let me list out all 33 reserved reserved words in python have a look once sir these are 33 if you want you can count uh, 33 you you can see sir sir first true false none are you getting just uh, these are true false none none like next and are not is operators like next if elif else if elif else okay else if elif else okay like if else related next uh, while for break continue return in yield 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 is a keyword in python yield next try accept finally sir the people who are coming from java try catch finally instead of catch here we have to use accept accept finally rise assert rise assert okay import from as class def pass global non local lambda del with okay like uh, total how many how many reserved words are there how many keywords are there 
three keywords are there okay in python remember these are the this is the list sir sir the first question if you are going to ask sir what is the purpose of yield what is the purpose of global or what is lambda or what is the pass can you please explain that like? i will give left and right because so discussing python learning python language itself is learning all these things at last you will get much clarity about these don't try to sir don't try to understand what the meaning of all these things okay we have to spend some time to get the meaning functionality of each and everything but general doubts you may have sir so first uh, here have you have you observed right sir all these 33 keywords in python contain only alphabet symbols are you getting you never going to see any underscore symbol you never going to see any digits so all 33 contains only alphabet symbols contains only alphabet alphabet symbols okay like next uh, one more speciality is there in these alphabet symbols also everywhere you are seeing lower case alphabet symbols only but only three sir upper case you are you you are going to see sir true false none have you observed right what is the first letter t upper case f upper case none upper case n n upper case right the only except these three all the remaining contain only lower case alphabet symbols only remember that sir true false none compulsory t should be upper case f should be upper case by mistake small t small f you are using python will give left and right observe i will show sir so second point except the following except the following three all contains all all contains only lower case alphabet symbols all contains only lower case alphabet symbols except uh, sir the following three all contains only lower case alphabet symbol which three sir true true next uh, false next uh, none none so for boolean values true and uh, false uh, compulsory should be in upper case t upper f upper and then n upper case right sir i have a look once by mistake if i'm trying to take like this okay here i'm taking sir a is equal to true i'm taking sir sir am i using small true or capital true small t or capital t small t i'm using what will happen sir immediately name error name true is not defined sir i'm unable to see name true like we are going to get the problem a is equal to capital true i'm taking sir capital t t the capital perfect it is going to be accepted what is the value sir true itself is the answer we are going to get okay please make sure if you are using small a immediately error small t immediately you are going to get error so for boolean values compulsory you require to take care capital t in the true capital f in the false under none means in n n should be capital what the meaning we will discuss in detail right sir next thing very important point observe observe a bit carefully sir do you know by seeing these things you may have some doubt sir if elif else you discuss it right but what about the switch statement sir in c language i saw switch statement in java language i have switch statement sir where is the switch statement please make sure switch switch concept is not there in the python switch switch variables concept not there in the python okay remember next uh, similarly sir i have while loop is there for loop is there but we miss one more loop do while do while so do while such a type of looping concept is not there in python okay do while there is no such a type of concept okay well sir these concepts are not applicable in python switch statement is not there do while this concept is also not there sir next uh, one more point sir i saw somewhere in java int float boolean char these are reserved words but here we are not having any such type of reserved words like the reason for that is in python sir here i am taking a is equal to 10 that's all 
am i required to declare type explicitly like inter type no because python is what dynamically typed programming language we are not required to declare the type explicitly based on value automatically type will be considered so being programmer you never going to use uh, type explicitly right that's why in the uh, float uh, boolean such a type of reserved words or keywords are not uh, required remember in the uh, float uh, complex uh, such a type of keywords are not required in python so what are various reserved words are there or keywords are there next uh, what are the rules right contain only alphabet symbols except the first three all the remaining contain lower case alphabet symbols only next uh, switch statement do while that concepts are not there next uh, int float complex like uh, data types are not uh, reserved words in python everyone can able to understand sir i want to know can you please show practically these are the only available reserved words i want i want to see sir can you please show practically like yes there is a way sir i will show programmatically right what is the way yes sir here observe that import import keyword import keyword there is one module is there named with the keyword keyword module is there what is the module we will discuss sir keyword dot dot kw list keyword list if you can ask keyword module kw list it is going to list down all 33 reserved words or keywords present inside python shall we do shall we check this one sir have a look once okay i'm taking import import ah uh, can you please spell out sir i forgot import keyword import keyword okay like next uh, keyword dot kw list kw list keyword list kw list now have a look once sir these are the keywords what what we have in in python sir these are these are various various keywords whatever there in in python let me copy paste these things right okay observe a bit a bit very carefully sir here like like we have now here if you want you can you can you can you can count these things also right sir false none true and yes assert break class continue def del elif else except finally for from global if import in is lambda non local not r pass rise return try while with yield okay here alphabetical order it is displayed according to alphabetical order but anyway total if you want you can count 33 reserved words or keywords you can get that's all sir these are various important things related to keywords reserved words right now i will explain data types concept in the next video clear for all of you right Sir, now the next topic what I have to explain, Python data types concept. Sir, can you spell out what is data type? The name itself indicates the type of data what we are using. Regarding its data type represents what? The type of data stored inside a variable or represented in our program. Suppose I am taking 10, sir this 10 is what type it is int type assume that it is int type integral data type okay not having any decimal point next 10.5 is what type something like float type float float types are true we are considering true is what type itself is what boolean type like so the data types represent the type of data what we are using in our program clear for all of you what is data type now the next point very very important point for the entire room take a bit special care sir in c language or java or c plus plus how to declare a variable just observe if i can take in java sir if you don't know java also don't worry just uh, listen int a is equal to 10 i'm taking sir sir i'm declaring a variable a a variable a sir with the what value 10 this a can you please spell out what is the type anyone can you please tell what is the type int type regarding int type i'm declaring it is int type sir 
so if i can take float f is equal to 10.5 f okay like we have to declare so it may be c language or c++ or java usually we can declare variables okay in this style sir in python how you can declare this one very simple a is equal to 10 sir a is equal to 10 that's all we are not uh, required to declare the type explicitly remember that okay in python we are not required to declare the type explicitly just uh, assign the value so based on your provided value the type will be considered automatically by the python virtual machine now a is what types are of course it is a uh, int type int type sir where is the proof i will show programmatically don't don't worry sir so in python we are not required to declare the type explicitly based on your provided value automatically type will be considered such a type of programming languages are called dynamically typed programming language are you getting what is this one sir dynamically dynamically typed programming language but in c language or java or c plus plus compulsory we have to declare the type explicitly that's why these languages are called statically typed languages right are you getting these languages are called what statically typed languages but python itself is a dynamically typed programming language is it clear for all of it so a is equal to 10 now i'm taking type of a sir i want to know this a is what type i want to know this a is what type sir this a is what type if you want to know type function is there which is provided by python by using that automatically we can get what is the type of this variable right of course it is the int type okay well sir i'm taking b is equal to true sir b is equal to true can you please tell b is what type respond b is what type bool type boolean type are you getting we are not required to specify type explicitly the type will be considered automatically by the python virtual mission now if you can ask a type of b now it is what type sir bool type remember this one sir so the most valuable important question for the intro room what is the meaning of dynamically typed programming language so in python while declaring variables we are not required to specify type explicitly based on your provided value type will be considered automatically such type of languages are called dynamically typed programming languages right best example python even javascript also do you know javascript also we are not required to specify the type explicitly automatically based on the value the type will be considered sir sir where is the proof for that okay just uh, observe a bit very carefully sir i'm taking here let me open my python editor sir okay python console p python console now a is equal to 10 i'm taking a is equal to 10 sir can you please observe type of a a is equal to 10 what is the type of a sir can you please observe that what is the type of a sir int type are you getting type of a is int type b is equal to 10.5 10.5 can you please spell out what is the type of b yes what is the type of b sir float type remember that next uh, sir c is equal to true i'm taking sir what is the type of c if you consider bool type right okay that's all so is it clear for all of you right what is the meaning of dynamically typed programming language we are not required to declare the type explicitly based on our provided value type will be considered automatically this type of nature is called dynamically typed programming language what is about c language c plus plus java these languages are statically typed compulsory we have to specify type explicitly but in python we are not required to specify type explicitly dynamically typed so best example sir python javascript these are best examples for dynamically typed programming language clear right now i have one small doubt sir i have two statements are there can you please spell out among these two which statement is correct in python type concept is not applicable okay in python type concept type concept is not applicable just i'm taking 
this is the first statement right second statement i'm taking in python in python type concept is available type concept is available available but but we are not required to declare we are not required to declare explicitly we are not required to declare explicitly are you getting explicitly okay right. can you please confirm among these two which statement is the correct is the type concept not available in python hey, in python type concept is available but we are not required to declare type explicitly the type will be considered automatically based on provided value which is nothing but what the dynamically typed programming language nature clear for all of you right most valuable important point what is dynamically typed can you please give an example which languages are dynamically typed you should be in a position to answer okay well now i will explain what are various available data types in python inbuilt data types present inside python so do you know can you can you spell out some data types whatever you know yes friends whatever whatever you know in other languages like c language or c++ java can you can you spell out some some data types int float boolean double long char string type are you getting string type like so in python some data types may not available okay some data types may not available some extra data types may be present okay like sir what are various inbuilt data types present inside python observe very carefully sir so int is available okay the first type itself is what int int is available next float is available int float next do you know complex 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 numbers to represent complex number complex data type is available python is special in c language c++ java there is no such type of data types are complex data type next uh, bool data type bool means what boolean next uh, str is available str means what string type okay like sir so next uh, and after that do you know list data type list list data type tuple tuple some people may pronounce as a tuple 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 data type list and tuple the most valuable very important question for the entire room what is the difference between list and tuple without this question there is no python entire human so take a bit very special care next and after that set is available next uh, frozen set okay set uh, frozen frozen set next uh, dict concept dict means what dictionary dictionary like sir next uh, sir do you know bytes type bytes bytes type next uh, byte array bytes type byte array type next uh, range range and then none range and then none sir these are various python inbuilt data types what important data types what we have sir so total have you observed 5 plus 5 plus 4 okay almost around 14 data types we have to discuss a bit in detail okay almost around a few hours i will spend sir on these data types first basic idea so that you people can get much clarity sir sir can you please spell out what are various data types present inside python okay in float complex bool under string boolean string type next uh, list uh, to pull set frozen set dictionary dict dict means what dictionary next uh, bytes byte array range none these are the things uh, don't ask any question about these data types we are going to spend a uh, uh, huge time on this we will perform post-mortem like anything about these data types right okay well next uh, before talking about these uh, data types one very very important point i have to tell sir please inject uh, this point in your mind very strongly okay here everything in python sir observe very carefully sir everything everything in in python everything in python is uh, is uh, object sir everything in python is object do you know the people who are coming from other languages like java we have primitive types 
object types like there is some difference there but in python everything is considered as object only okay so if i can take a is equal to tensor <coughs> a is equal to 10 do you know this 10 is an object this 10 itself is an object do you know here you have to keep in your mind a is the reference variable pointing to this int object sir what is the value represented by this int object is tensor what the value represented by this int object itself is 10 remember this one so a is equal to 10 means sir a is internally itself is an object sir not only this one boolean value string value everything in python itself is an object only remember please inject this point in your mind very strongly okay well next uh, sir a is a 10 what is the type of a how you can find the type of a we covered already can you please spell out which inbuilt function we have to use type type itself is inbuilt function python's inbuilt function to know the type of a okay well next uh, once it is an object in the memory in the python virtual machine memory where this object will be stored what is the address what is the address of this object if you want to know address of object then we have to use id function what is the function we have to use can you spell out sir id id function id of a what is the address address of this object right next i want to print the value of a can you please spell out what is the value of a 10 can you please print the value of a then we require to go for print print of a so the most commonly used python inbuilt functions are type function id function and then what print function to know the type of a variable type function sir to know address address of the object represented by a variable sir id is the function to print the value of a variable then we require to go for what print function these are the three inbuilt functions most commonly we are going to use in python just have a look once sir sir i'm taking here a is equal to 10 i'm taking sir have a look once can you please observe a is equal to 10 10 i'm taking can you please tell what is the type of a sir what is the type of a sir it is int type it is class int int type sir okay well int type sir what is the address of this id of a what is the function please spell out id of a here have you are you seeing right yes sir this is the address id of a means this is the address right similarly okay what is the print of a sir what is the value of a what is the value of a sir 10 so these three are python's inbuilt functions most commonly used so before starting our data types concept if you have clarity about this i can use repeatedly this in our next discussions right clear up to this now let me start the first data type what we have to discuss is uh, int data type sir sir integral values i want to represent a number without a decimal point do you know just a 10 i want to represent r120 i want to represent sir these number never talks about any decimal point are getting the numbers without a decimal point these numbers are called integral numbers remember this one sometimes i can use the word integral numbers are sometimes we can use the word whole numbers are you getting we can use the word whole whole numbers so without any decimal point these numbers are called integral numbers if you want to represent integral values then we require to go for which data types are int data types sir. okay best example a is equal to 10 a is equal to 10 if you print the type of a then obviously what output we are going to get sir int type that's all sir but uh, here there is one small point i have to highlight take very special care suppose i want to represent one two three four five six 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 seven eight nine like <coughs> can you please confirm is it the integral number or not 
yes because i'm not taking taking anywhere decimal point it's always integral number only so do you know is it small number or long number respond man is it small number or long number long number sir 1 2 3 4 there are multiple digits are there it's a bigger number long number so to represent very long integral values we have long data type is there remember this one sir what is that long long integral values long type is there sir small integral values int type is there remember that if you consider java byte short int long like four types are there just to represent integral values but make sure in python we have only two data types we have what is the first one sir int second one sir long small int values small integral numbers int type sir long integral numbers long type sir but take very special care this long type is applicable only in python 2 are you getting only in the python 2 python 2 but not in python 3 remember this one sir it's available only in python 2 but not in python 3 so which version we are discussing python 3 version that's why in python 3 long data type is not there even long values also we can represent by using which data types are int type only i hope is a clear for all of you right so maybe a chance to ask in the entry room are you in python long data type is available or not yes sir long data type is available to represent long integral values but this long data type concept is applicable only in python 2 but not in python 3 even long values also happily we can represent by using int type only in the python 3 everyone can able to understand sir have a look once suppose i'm taking a is equal to a is equal to sir 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 6 and so on 7 like 8 like i'm taking 9 sir wow how how big it is man so it is a long value have you observed right it is a long long value sir now i'm taking now i'm taking what is the type of a what is the type of a because i'm using python 3 python 3x that's why sir type of a itself is what int type there is no long data type in python 3 it is applicable only in python 2 everyone can able to understand right so maybe a chance to ask long versus int like this right next uh, sir to represent the int value what are various possible ways are there in 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 python sir so we can represent integral values by using four ways remember that so we can represent sir this a is equal to 10 this integral value in how many ways right four ways are available first one decimal form are you getting what is the first one sir decimal form this decimal form is also known as base 10 decimal form is also known as based on our common normal approach right second one sir octal form or let me go for binary form okay binary binary form binary form is nothing but base 2 sir we can represent by using binary form which is nothing but base 2 next uh, third one sir octal octal form okay octal form itself is base 8 octal octal number system itself is base 8 next uh, hexadecimal hexa hexadecimal hexadecimal means uh, base 16 remember that so integral values so int type values in python in how many ways we can represent sir four ways are available what is the first way sir decimal form second way binary form third one octal form and then hexadecimal form sir let me talk about these types in detail sir these forms in detail sir first one decimal form okay assume decimal decimal form means base 10 sir in base 10 <coughs> do you know this is the default number system what we are using we are always going to talk about numbers with respect to base 10 only okay base 10 is the default number system right sir which digits are allowed allowed digits are 0 to 9 allowed digits are what 0 to 9 suppose i am taking a is equal to 123 acceptable 
a is equal to 986 acceptable like this right okay 0 to 9 any digit is allowed this is the default default number system not required to discuss much more about this one sir sir now the same integral value you can represent by using binary form also are you getting by using binary binary form also we can represent sir binary means what base 2 base 2 sir in base 2 what are the allowed values ah, can you please spell out in base 2 what are the allowed values 0 and 1 sir are you getting what are the allowed values right 0 and 1 sir that's why do you know so allowed digits are 0 and 1 remember 0 and 1 okay like suppose I am taking a is equal to listen carefully very important point a is equal to 1 1 1 1 I am taking a number can you please confirm is it the binary number or not respond friends is it binary number or not yes sorry it is a binary number only because you are using zeros and ones only ones binary number now I am taking print of a or what is the a value like sir please take a bit very special care if i consider like this it is not treated as binary number what is the reason for that is by default every number is always going to consider decimal only but not binary sir okay that is the default number system is base 10 that's why its value is considered as 1000 111 like that it is going to be considered it never going to consider as yes, binary value 1111 remember this sir now i have to convey are you, can you please consider this one as the binary value please consider this one as the binary value like how you can specify very very simple sir if for this number prefixed with the zero small b or zero capital b if any number prefixed with the zero small b or zero capital b this number is considered as what binary number now a is equal to 0 b 1111 now then only it is considered as yes, binary number have you observed right by default even you are taking 1111 also it is treated as what Ah, it is treated as what? Decimal only. By default, base 10 only. I want a specify. Hey, Python virtual machine. Please consider it is a binary number. How you can specify explicitly? Okay. 0, B. Either small b or capital B. No problem at all. Now, you can print, uh, print a yes. Sir. Can you please print a value? Very simple. What is the output you are going to get? This is the binary number, right? This is the binary number. This is a binary number converting into decimal that decimal value we are going to get so you have the choice you can represent values either by decimal or binary or hexadecimal or octal but python virtual mission is always going to provide value only in decimal form remember that so only in the decimal form means one 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 binary number one 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 can you please convert to decimal sir Get your childhood in your mathematics somewhere you may heard 2 power 0 in 2 power 1 2 square 2 cube like 1 into 2 cube 8 plus 1 into 2 square 4 plus 1 into 2 power 2 2 1 into 2 power 0 1 sir what about its value sir 15 now what output we are going to get sir 15 is the answer we are going to get so clear for all of you right about binary number system in binary base to allowed digits are 0 and 1 remember that 0 and 1 next literal value compulsory should be prefixed with the either 0 small b or 0 capital b clear right that's all this is what what you should aware now let me go for that have a look once sir sir i'm taking a is equal to 1 1 1 1 like this i'm taking sir a is equal to 1 1 1 1 print of a sir can you please confirm is it treated as the decimal or is it treated as the binary sir it is the decimal means that it is the base 10 only the value 1111 if you want have a look once what answer we are getting sir 1111 direct decimal value only right so i am taking a is equal to can you please confirm how I can consider this number is the binary number? 
compulsory should be prefixed with what? Zero small b or zero capital B. Okay, like now I'm taking zero, zero, sir, capital B. Anyway, small b or capital B, one, 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 like this I'm taking, sir. Can you please print of A? Now, equivalent decimal value, 15 we are going to get. I hope either terminology is very clear for you people, right? So, in how many ways we can represent integral value? Four ways, right? What the first one? Decimal binary. Decimal default number system. Yellow digits are 0 to 9. We are not required to do anything. Next, uh, binary base 2, sir. 0 and 1, only yellow digit. But compulsory lateral value should be prefixed with the 0 small b or 0 capital B. Any doubt? Everything is clear for all of you, right? Sir, now the next form, third one, octal form. Okay, remember octal, octal form, sir. Sir, what is the octal form? Base 8. Observe carefully, base 8. Sir, allowed digits are 0 to 7. So, which digits are allowed in the octal base 8 number system is 0 to 7, sir. Compulsory literal value should start with the 0 small o or 0 capital O. Remember this one, sir, not 0, 0. 0 small o or 0 capital O. If the number starts with 0 small o or 0 capital O, this number is always treated as octal number. Remember, suppose a is equal to a is equal to 0 small o, 0, 0 small o, small o or capital O, anything you can take. Sir, now 1, 2, 3 I am taking. Yes, perfectly, it is octal number. If I print the value of a, what is the answer we are going to get? I told already, Python virtual mission always provide in which formats are decimal only. Convert this octal number. Convert this octal number into decimal, sir. How to convert octal to decimal? At our childhood, we covered already. We discussed already, right? In our school days. Okay? Now, 3, 8 power 0, 8 power 1, 8 square. So, 1 into 8 square means 64. 2 into 8 means, uh, sir, 16. 3 into 8 power 0 means, 8 power 0 is 1. 3 into 1 means 3. Okay, 64 plus 16, 80. 80 plus 3, its value will become 83. That's all. Perfectly, sir, it is treated as octal number. If I print, the value we are going to get is 83. Have a look once. Can you please consider? A is equal to a is equal to 0, 0 O. It may be small O or capital O. 1, 2, 3. I am taking, sir. Perfect. Now, can you please print off A? If I take print of A, what is the answer we are getting, sir? 83. Okay, well. Sir, now I am taking A is equal to 0, 0. Here, A is equal to 0, small O. 7, 8, 6, I am taking. Can you please tell, is it valid or invalid? 0, uh, zero sir, o, small o or capital O, 7, 8, 6 I am taking. Can you please tell, is it valid or invalid? Immediately, Python virtual mission will give left and right. Are, are, 0 followed by O means it is octal. Octal number, 0 to 7 only allow digits. How you can take a digit 8? How you can take a digit 8? Immediately, syntax error we are going to get. Can you please have a look once? Let me keep enter. Now, syntax error, invalid syntax. I hope everyone in the position to understand clearly, right? Are you getting? So, this is about octal number system, sir. Yellow digits are what? 0 to 7. And compulsory lateral should be starts with the 0, small O or 0 capital O. That's it, right? Okay, well. Sir, now, what is the next thing we have to discuss, right? Hexadecimal. Observe very, very carefully about this one, sir. So, now, hexadecimal. Can you please spell out hexadecimal? Hexadecimal means which base? Please respond. Hexadecimal means which base, right? Base 16. Base 16. Allowed digits are 0 to 9, 0 to 9, comma, comma, A to F, okay, A means 10, A means 10, sir, 
B means 11, C means 12, 12, okay, D means 13, E means 14, F means 15, okay, 10 to 15. So, 0 to 15 are the allowed, but 0 to 9 and then A to F. First thing, sir, this A to F, is it lower case or upper case? Ayo, please respond. Can I take either lower case or upper case? You can take any case, no problem at all. So, Python, by default, case-sensitive programming language, but very few places, Python is not case-sensitive. So, this is one such type of place. Remember, A to F, you can use either lower case or upper case, no problem at all. Okay, like, sir, next, uh, compulsory lateral value should be prefixed with the uh, 0 small x or 0 capital X. Remember, if the number prefixed with 0 small x or 0 capital X, such a type of number only treated as hexadecimal number. Okay, like, sir, I am taking A is equal to 0 x 10. Can you please tell, is it hexadecimal number or not? Yes, why not? Now, print of A. What is the value we are going to get, sir? Print of A. Sir, simple, the value is, so 10 hexadecimal number, can you please convert into decimal? This is about my requirement, right? So, 0, 16 power 0, sir, 16 power 1, 1, 1 into 16 power 1, 16, plus 0 into 16 power 0 means 0, sir, its value will become 16. Regarding what is the output we are going to get, sir? 16. So, 0x10 means 16 is the answer we have to get. Let me cross check, sir. A is equal to, A is equal to 0x10. Yes, perfect. Now, let me print off A, sir. Let me print off A. What is the answer, sir? 16 itself is the answer. This is, sir, the way how you can represent what? Hexadecimal numbers. But here let me go for a small another example. Can you please tell, is it valid or not? A is equal to 0x face. <laughs> 0x face. Is it valid or not? Yes, perfectly. Itself is acceptable. F, A, C, A. Within the range of A to F. A to F only. Yes, valid. A is equal to 0x beef. A is equal to 0x beef. Valid or not? Valid. No problem. If you want, you can print, sir. Maybe 64,208 or 206 something. 48,000 some odd number it's going to get. Equivalent decimal value, right? Sir, if I can say, A is equal to 0x beer. Is it valid or not? Beer, beer. <laughs> is it valid or not? No, no. The reason is, in hexadecimal, yellow digits are A to F only. Yellow digits are what? A to F only. But here, digit R. R. R letter is not allowed. Immediately, error syntax error we are going to get. Let me show these things also. Observe carefully, sir. A is equal to, A is equal to 0x face I am taking. For a fact, what is the value of A, sir? What is the value of A? 64,206. This is the equivalent decimal value of FACE. Similarly, A is equal to 0x B form taking, sir. Sir, print of A. Yes, 48,879. Are you getting 48,879? A is equal to 0x, okay, beer, I am taking, beer, immediately, error we are going to get, sir. Have you observed? Syntax error, invalid syntax. Okay, like, uh, you should aware, sir. That's all, friends. These are various possible ways are there to represent uh, int values, right? How many ways we can represent int value? Decimal form, binary form, octal form, hexadecimal form. Decimal form, base 10. Yellow digits are 0 to 9. Okay, default number system. Next, binary forms are base 2. Are you getting base 2? Yellow digits are 0 and 1. But compulsory, the number should be prefixed with 0 small b or 0 capital B. Next, octal form, yellow digits are 0 to 7. And compulsory number should be prefixed with 0 small o or 0 capital O. Next, hexadecimal forms are base 16. Now, yellow digits are 0 to 9, A to F. 
a to f you can use either lower case or upper case but compulsory the number should be prefixed with the zero small x or zero capital x that's all friends these are various possible ways are there to represent the uh, int values right but now i have one small doubt every time you have the choice you can represent int value in four ways you can provide either decimal way or binary way or octal way or hexadecimal way but python virtual machine whenever you are printing you are always going to get only in the decimal form even you provided in the octal but output is always going to come only in the decimal form some people may ask sir i want output in the binary form i want output in the octal form is it possible or not yes base conversion functions are there by using those base conversion functions we can convert binary value to octal octal to hexadecimal dancing we can do that we will discuss that part up to this is the clear hi friends in the last videos we covered very clearly the basic introduction to data types under the first data type int sir now i want to talk about how to convert integral value from one base to another base sir i have binary value is there i want to convert into octal value i have octal value is there i want to convert into hexadecimal value so for these base conversions python provide there are three inbuilt functions we require to discuss these base conversion functions so what is our topic name sir base conversion functions okay sir python provide three inbuilt functions for these base conversions right the first function is bin bin function okay binary function are getting what is the function name bin second one sir octal oct oct function not octal oct function third function is hex hex function are getting hex to convert into hexadecimal number so bin function can be used to convert from any other base to binary boss i want to, i want to get binary representation for the given number then we require to go for bin i want the octal representation for the given number then we require to go for octal i want hexadecimal representation for the given number then i require to go for hexadecimal right so to convert from one base to another base these are the three functions what we have now observe this one sir sir first uh, let me go for bin function bin of suppose i'm providing sir just the 15 15 it is the decimal value it is the decimal value now the corresponding binary representation we will get sir what is the binary string for this 0b of course it is the binary 0b 1 1 1 1 okay like sir how to convert 15 to binary you know at your childhood i hope we discuss it right 15 can you please convert into binary means 2 7 jar 1 okay 2 sir 2 3 jar 1 1 is the remainder 2 sir 1 1 so what is the value sir 1 1 1 1 this is the equivalent binary representation sir similarly i want the i have zero wo one two three is there can you please spell out zero wo one two three what is this one i respond what is this one zero wo one two three itself is what octal number i want to convert this octal number to binary similarly i have bin of zero x face zero x face sir what is this number hexadecimal number hexadecimal number to binary if you want to convert then this is the way sir are getting bin function can be used to convert the number from other other bases to binary or to binary number system right let me go for this small example sir here i'm taking a a here just a bin of bin of okay just i'm taking 15 sir what is the answer 0b 1 1 1 1 
bin of 15 boss can you please convert decimal number 15 to binary okay what the values are 0 b 1 1 1 1 like bin of bin of 0 o 0 o 1 2 3 like this i'm taking sir equivalent binary value 0 b 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 something like we are going to get sir here bin of bin of 0 x face i'm taking 0x face I am taking sir now this is the equivalent binary number for this 0x face okay like uh, clear for all of it right? so how to use bin function what is the purpose of bin function right the same way next one sir let me consider octal oct function octal sir I have 100 decimal value is there 100 100 decimal value I want to know what is the equivalent octal value then OCT is the function Sir, similarly, OCT R 0B 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, something like. I don't know. I don't know. Sir, this is the binary number. Can you please provide equivalent, equivalent octal value like this, right? Sir, octal of, octal, octal of, here 0x face, 0x face. Hexadecimal number, can you please convert into octal? Binary number, can you please convert into octal? Decimal number, can you please convert into octal? So from the given, from any other base to octal, if you want to convert, then we require to go for what? Octal, OCT, oct, oct itself is the method, sir. Clear for all of you, right? Okay, have a look once, sir. Here, I'm taking OCT of, OCT of 100, I'm taking, sir. If I can take OCT of 100, 0, 0, 1, 4, 4, this is about the equivalent octal value, sir. OCT of 0, B, 0, B, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. I don't know what about its value. I want to know, I want to get equivalent octal value. 0, 0, 75. Sir, OCT of 0, X, 0, X of face I am taking. Have you observed? This is the equivalent octal value for the given hexadecimal number. So, for the given hexadecimal number, if you want to convert into octal, then these are the ways, right? Okay, well. Sir, what is the next cinema? Okay. Sir, hex, hex, hex function, sir. So, for the given hexadecimal number, for the given any other base, if you want to get hexadecimal number, then we require to go for hex, sir. I have 1000 is there, sir. 1000 is the decimal value. I want to know equivalent hexadecimal value. Similarly, hex of 0, 0, B, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, something like this. I don't know what is the equivalent hexadecimal value I want. Sir, hex of 0, O, 0, O, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like this. If you want to know corresponding hexadecimal number, then we require to use a hex function, right? Okay, well, have a look once here. Hex of, hex of 1000. 1000 decimal value. Can you please convert into hexadecimal number? Can you please convert into hexadecimal number? 0x, 3e8, like this, right? Okay, similarly, hex of 0b, 0b. 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, like this I am taking, sir. What is the answer? 0xbf, okay? 0xbf, it is the equivalent hexadecimal number. Hex of, hex, hex of, 0, o, 0, o, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, sir. What is about its value? Do you know? Here just observe 0x a 72e. Okay, like so by using these base conversion functions, bin function, oct function, and then hex function, happily we can convert from one type to one base to another base. Are you in the position to understand right? But all these base conversions are applicable only for integral numbers. Sir. Remember this one only for integral numbers, right? Then immediately you may have, sir, to convert the into binary, you have bin function. To convert into octal, you have oct function. To convert into hexadecimal, you have hexadecimal. 
but I want to convert into decimal. Where is the function? Are to convert into the decimal, no function is required because default number system is always by default decimal only. If you are not using this conversion function, the output is always going to come in which styles are decimal only. Is it clear for all of you right after this? That's also these are base conversion functions which are applicable for int data type values, integral data type values, right? Clear. Hi friends, in the last videos we covered very clearly what is int data type, how you can represent integral values, what are various possible representations are there, next how to convert from one base to another base, up to that it's very clear. So now the next data type, what we have to discuss is float data type sir. So now I have a number is there, 123, it is the whole number sir. Okay, 123 whole number without decimal point. Happily, you can represent this by using int data type. Okay, well, suppose I want a diesel price. Are you getting? I want, I want a diesel, diesel price. Assume that 78.43, 78 rupees, 43 paisa. Assume that, sir. Sir, next, dollar value, dollar value in rupees. Assume 70.12. Assume that 70 rupees 1 to 1 to paisa 12 paisa like sir how you can represent these values the numbers with the decimal point these numbers are by default considered as floating point values are you getting don't feel in our program you are always going to represent only whole numbers integral numbers no sometimes we may require to provide we may require to do this type of values also how you can do that okay to represent these floating point values these floating floating point values we have which data types are float data type we have to use remember this one sir okay sir now i'm taking f is equal to f is equal to sir 112.456 like this i'm taking sir can you please spell out what is the type of f if i print the type of f now i will get what float observe this is what types are it is the float type like this right so what is the floating point number a number with a decimal point is called floating point number so so to represent the floating point numbers which data type we have in python is the float data type sir okay have a look once sir observe carefully here if you if you if you are seeing sir f is equal to 1.234 like this i'm taking sir what is the type of f what is the what the type of f if i can ask a type of f is what types are float type just observe 1.234 float type sir to represent floating point values we require to go for what float type okay well sir here there is one very very important point is there take a bit special care about this one sir sir you know in the integral types in the last video we covered very clearly in the integral types suppose i have a number is there sir one two three is there by default it's the decimal similarly if i can take zero b one 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 it is a binary number binary zero o one two three octal number 0 x 1 2 3 hexadecimal number sir all these things are integral values remember this one all these things are what integral values right same way i want to take like this just observe carefully sir about this one f is equal to sir 1.234 okay one style f is equal to f is equal to 0 b 1.1011 i am taking sir Next, f is equal to 0, o, 0 small o, sir, like 123.456, I am taking. Sir, f is equal to 0x, 123.57, something like this. Can you please observe, this is the decimal float value. Hmm, this is the decimal float value. Can you please tell what about this one? <coughs> Respond, what is the word about this one? Float value, float value, 
represented in binary form next the float value represented in octal form float value represented in hexadecimal form i hope everyone can able to understand right so respond are <laughs> everyone can able to understand right ah remember if you are going to feel like this i will give left and right the reason for that is floating point values we can represent only in decimal form are you getting floating point values we can represent only in decimal form binary octal hexadecimal such a type of conventions are not allowed not allowed for the float values these representations are applicable only for integral types but not for floating point types in all these cases we are going to get syntax error okay error by default we are going to get sir very very important point integral values you can represent four ways either decimal binary octal hexadecimal but floating point values you can represent you should represent only in the decimal form okay binary octal hexadecimal such type of conventions are not applicable everyone can aware right sir let me show this one have a look once sir suppose i am taking f is equal to f f is equal to 1.234 perfect no problem at all it is the decimal value sir it itself is the decimal value f is equal to 0b 0b 1.1011 i am taking 0b 1.1011 immediately immediately python virtual machine is going to give left and right hey durga 0b 0b means binary but 1.1011 float in binary no such type of thing what it means like python virtual machine will give left and right observe carefully sir here if i execute this one syntax error invalid syntax are you getting syntax error invalid syntax similarly f is equal to 0 o 0 o 1 2 3.456 if i can take again invalid syntax are getting again invalid syntax f is equal to 0 x 1 2 3.45 5, something like this right again itself is invalid syntax error we are going to get so the important conclusion what you people should be aware floating point values you should represent only in decimal form binary octal hexadecimal conventions are not allowed clear any doubt about this point okay well next uh, for floating point values there is another another way another another representation is there sir what is that representation is yes, take a bit special care sir if we, if we can take f is equal to 1.2 e3 e3 this type of representation is called exponential form are you getting this type of representation is called exponential form or scientific notation exponential form or scientific notation sir remember this one so e3 e3 sir instead of small e you can take capital e also no problem at all if i print f value what is the output we are going to get sir very simple 1.2 e3 means 10 power 3 1.2 into 10 power 3 1.2 into 1000 1000 so its value 1200.0 this is the output we are going to get sir remember this this type of representation is called what scientific representation scientific notation or otherwise exponential form but this applicable only for what floating point values remember have a look once sir sir i am taking f is equal to f f is equal to 1.2 e3 you can take small e or capital e either you can take small e or capital e happily you know itself is acceptable what about its value sir 1200.0 sir let me take 1.2 e3 capital e3 i'm taking sir if i can take f then automatically 12.1200.0 .12 like this we are going to get this type of representation is called what scientific notation so even floating point lateral float values you can represent scientific notation also no problem at all okay well so now what is the advantage of this representation right the biggest advantage is 
even big values also within the lesser space you can represent sir bigger values within the lesser space you can represent suppose i have a number is there assume the 12 one after 12 there are 10 zeros are there sir okay 10 zeros are there okay like uh, 10 zeros 15 zeros are there sir 15 zeros are there wow how bigger value this one point zero is there sir assume this is the point zero is there after 12 15 zeros are there point zero sir once point zero is there it is the float value it is the float value right now what is the i can represent in scientific notation very easily sir very simple 1.2 point to e how many zeros are there 15 1.2 point to two also i moved after this one point that's why 1.2 point to e 16 so this a bigger value also we can represent 1.2 point to two e 16 that is the advantage of this scientific notation or exponential form everyone can aware within the lesser space lesser space you can represent big values also that thing is applicable sir sir even in our calculators if the value is the too much lengthy but the display size is very small in that small space how you can represent bigger values very simple sir we require to go for which one exponential representation observe our normal calculator have a look once sir just a basic idea say observe that this is the this is the normal normal calculator what we have sir here i'm taking 25000 25000 into 25000 i'm taking okay like now have you observed right some 625 followed by some 6 zeros like we have okay well sir now now let me take sir into again again that then automatically do you know it is the bigger value it is the bigger value sir what happened what happened this bigger value in this small space how it is represented sir 3.90 e plus 17 means into 10 power 17 are getting this type of representation is called what exponential form it is applicable for what a floating point data types okay well sir so up to this any down float type it is a very clear sir let me conclude if you want to represent floating point values then we require to go for what float data type float values compulsory having decimal point a number with the decimal point is called float number floating point values you should represent only in decimal form binary octal hexadecimal such a type of things are not allowed floating point values we can also represent in exponential form or scientific notation what the advantage of this one is within the lesser space you can represent bigger values so that is the advantage sir of this floating point i mean exponential representation clear for you sir in the last videos we covered int and the float data type right now i want to explain the python specific special data type complex data type what is that sir can you please spell out complex complex data type don't feel complex means very difficult nothing okay it is one type of number systems right in your mathematics somewhere in your school days integral calculus complex complex algebra somewhere you may heard about that so such a type of data type is called complex data type sir so what is the speciality why python having this data type sir if you want to develop scientific applications mathematics based application electrical engineering applications this complex data type is very very helpful but c language not having c++ not having java not having only python has this type right that's why it's the speciality special data type present inside python what is the data types are complex data type sir now what is the syntax how you can represent complex number okay observe carefully sir a plus b j this is the syntax right a plus b j a complex number is of what form how you can represent sir a plus b j sir this a is called real part this a is called real real part and this b is called imaginary part are getting what is this b sir imaginary imaginary part next uh, what is this j j value is j square j square 
is equal to minus 1. Regarding j square is equal to minus 1, j is equal to square root of minus 1. Remember that this type of representation is called complex number, right? So, what is the j? j square, its value is minus 1, j is equal to square root of minus 1. Now, you may have the small doubt, sir. Sir, is it compulsory j? In my mathematics somewhere, I, I symbol I used. Remember, I symbol I used. Is it compulsory J I have to use, right? Okay. Mandatory, it should be J only. By mistake, if you are using any other symbol like I, immediately syntax error. Remember, compulsory J. Sir, can I use uppercase? Uppercase J or lowercase J? No problem. Any case you can use, but the symbol should be J only. Okay, line. Sir, now let me take x is equal to 10 plus 20 j i am taking sir yes it is a complex number let me print let me let me print type of x can you spell out what is this type obviously what is the type sir complex type the type itself is complex complex type sir now have a look once here i am taking x is equal to x is equal to 10 plus 20 j j either small j you can take or capital j you can take no problem at all sir sir 10 now let me print type of x regarding type of x like this sir can you please spell out what is this type sir it is a complex complex type sir x equal to 10 plus 20 j what the type of x itself is sir class complex okay like we can we can take sir sir what is the x value what is the x value 10 plus 20 j like this right sir can i use capital j okay x is equal to 10 plus 20 capital J I am taking sir. Yes, acceptable. What about its value sir? 10 plus 20 J. Of course, it is printing always in lower case. But if you want, you can use capital J also. No problem. Now, X is equal to 10 plus 20 I I am taking. Please confirm. Is it valid or invalid? <laughs> 10 plus 20 I. Immediately syntax error. Because Python virtual machine unable to understand what is the meaning of this one. Are you getting right now? Have a look once. What is that error? syntax error invalid syntax like this we are going to get now i hope it's very clear what is complex number what is the syntax of complex number next time after that how you can represent complex number like this right sir next uh, this a is called what form respond what is this a a is called what real part what is this b b is called what imaginary part suppose assume that i have one complex number x is there sir x is a 10 plus 20 j i want to know what is the real part i want to know what is the real real part very simple print of x dot real if you want to know real part of complex number then dot real real is a variable x dot real now you are going to get 10.0 remember of course uh, it's always going to provide in the form of floating point value 10.0 similarly i want to know x dot imaginary number hey what is the imaginary imaginary value sir i m a g remember that so x dot real what is the second one sir x dot i m a g imaginary number now what about its value sir 20.0 are you getting x dot imaginary number what about its value 20.0 something like so how you can find the real value how you can find imaginary value sir real and uh, and i m a g these are the predefined variables are there which are applicable for every complex number okay have a look once sir now i am taking here let me take let me let me take sir x is equal to x is equal to 10 plus 20 j i am taking okay well sir x dot real what the value sir x dot real what the answer 10.0 x da i m a g remember don't tell imaginary i m a g image okay like uh, 20.0 we are going to get that's all so if you have complex number how you can find the real part how you can find the imaginary part clear right okay well next uh, the next important conclusion sir sir the first part is called which one please confirm the first part is called what real part second part is called what imaginary part sir in real and imaginary parts if you want you can take int values 
if you want you can take float values no problem at all int values you can take float values also you can take so something like x is equal to 10 plus 20 j values acceptable x is equal to 10.5 20 j acceptable sir now in real part i am taking float value sir next x is equal to 10.5 20.6 j acceptable okay so in real and imaginary part happily we can take either int values or float values no problem at all both are acceptable right but here one small twist is there what is the twist is this real part this real part you can represent either in decimal decimal binary octal hexadecimal no problem sir this real part if the real part i am taking int value that int value you can represent either in decimal form or binary form octal form or hexadecimal form but imaginary part compulsory you should specify only in decimal form sir by mistake binary form if you are using or octal form if you are using immediately error we are going to get observe carefully here x is equal to x is equal to 0 b 0 b 1 1 1 1 plus 1 1 1 1 means 15 sir 15 plus 20 j i am taking is it acceptable or not acceptable because in the real part you can take binary octal hexadecimal acceptable right but if i can take x is equal to 15 plus plus 0 b 1 1 1 1 j i am taking immediately immediately error we are going to get sir because imaginary part compulsory the value we have to specify only in only in decimal form but the real part you can specify either in decimal or octal or hexadecimal acceptable observe this important conclusion have a look once sir have a look my requirement is now observe this x is equal to x is equal to here i'm taking here just observe 10.5 plus 20.6 j so real values i mean both real both real and imaginary part can be either float values or can be either int values no problem at all acceptable sir now if i print 10.5 plus 20.6 j acceptable x is equal to 0 b 1 1 1 1 plus 20 j i am taking x is equal to 0 b 1 1 1 1 plus 20 j i am taking sir sir now real part if you want you can represent either binary octal hexadecimal but imaginary part should be only in the decimal form correct right have a look once sir here yeah. observe it is it is acceptable what is the x value sir 0 b 1 1 1 1 means 15 plus 20 j acceptable now i'm taking x is equal to 15 plus 0 b 1 1 1 1 j i'm taking immediately error we are going to get because imaginary part we should not use uh, sir any other form except a decimal remember that compulsory we have to use only decimal form so immediately we are getting what uh, syntax error invalid syntax any doubt about this one i hope everyone in the position to understand clearly right what is the meaning of sir like uh, how you can represent okay like sir next uh, one more point sir assume that i have two imaginary numbers are there something like x is equal to 10 plus 20 j y is equal to sir 20 plus 30 j is there sir two imaginary numbers are there no i mean two complex numbers are there now my requirement is can i perform arithmetic operations between these complex numbers or not yes we can perform no problem at all so if you want you can ask x plus y if you want uh, you can ask x into y if you want you can ask x by y no problem x minus y all those things are perfectly acceptable even we can perform arithmetic operations between between two complex numbers also okay have a look once sir suppose i am taking x is equal to 10 plus 20 j next y is equal to 20 plus 30 j is there sir 30 j is there 
now x plus y what is the value of x plus y 30 plus 50 j okay like this we are getting x into y x into y minus 400 plus 700 j x by y okay x by y some value some value we are going to get 0 0.6 and plus 0 0.07 something like we are going to get so what about the internal values how these operations are going to work we are not required to worry sir just we can perform mathematical operations sir for complex numbers also just aware this one okay this is about basic introduction about the complex data type but anyway it is not that much frequently used data type in our python okay very specific scientific applications mathematics applications next electrical engineering applications there this complex data type is going to play the role that's why it is highly re to represent the logical values then we require to go for what bold data type remember this next uh, do you know the only allowed values for boolean data type are true and false are you getting true true and false only allowed values right best example here also there is a small twist is there can you please tell is it a allowed value for boolean data type or not please confirm true and false these are these are allowed values for a boolean data type or not respond man why you are silent huh is it allowed or not allowed true or false is it allowed values for the boolean data type or not yes the people who are telling yes yes i will give left and right these are allowed values for boolean data type in java in java in other languages but not in python remember this one in python compulsory sir it should be true sir t should be capital remember this one next uh, f should be capital okay these are only allowed values for the boolean data type in python sir t should be uppercase f should be uppercase by mistake small true small false sir. immediately error we are going to get what is this true name error i'm not finding this name like it's going to raise the error sir just observe carefully right sir now sir here b is equal to true i'm taking yes acceptable acceptable because capital acceptable now what is the type of b now what is the type we are going to get sir boolean okay like just have a look once sir sir now i'm taking b is equal to small true i'm taking <laughs> b is equal to small true i'm taking can you please tell is it valid or invalid invalid small t is not allowed compulsory in python true means capital t false means capital f okay have a look once what is that error i'm getting name error name true is not defined my python virtual machine unable to identify this name true name true is not defined like that we are going to get the error sir okay well sir now b is equal to capital true i'm taking yes perfectly valid what is the type of b sir what the type type of b it's always what types are bull type so terminology is the very clear for you people right okay well sir now i have a is equal to 10 is there b is equal to 20 is there now sir c is equal to a greater than p so can you please check is a greater than b or not is a greater than b or not 10 greater than 20 or not no that's why what is the output we are going to get what is the value stored inside c false let me print let me print c value let me print a c value okay what is the answer we are going to get sir false let me print a type of c type of c it is the boolean type so the value is the false it is what types are boolean type any doubt are you in the position to understand right sir so just observe carefully right now a is equal to 10 i'm taking b is equal to 20 i'm taking c is equal to a greater than b a greater than b now sir let me print the value of c sir what is the value of c false f should be capital of course now what is the what is the type type of c sir what is the type of c if i can take a class bool the type itself is nothing but what types are bool type now it's a it's a very very clear for you people right okay now i have one small doubt sir 
about this boolean data type one small doubt is there listen carefully right if i can ask can you please print print okay true true plus a true <laughs> what the answer true plus a true what the answer next print a true minus a false <laughs> what the answer ayyo respond arithmetic operations are performed between two boolean values true plus a true true minus false what answer we are going to get now hmm why you are silent what the answer we are going to get now true plus a true true minus false so very simple sir internally this true and false are represented yes true true means one false means zero sir internally true and false are represented yes one zero that's why if you are performing arithmetic operations with the boolean values now the corresponding int values will come in the picture remember this one now true plus a true so one plus a one its value is the two sir one plus one the value is the true next uh, one minus uh, false means zero one minus zero means uh, the value is one are you getting one minus zero the value itself is what one remember this one i hope not required to keep any explanation remember very important point true internally represented as one false internally represented as zero so in our mathematics in our in the, in the python in mathematical operations if you are using boolean values now these integral values will come in the picture are you getting right have a look next up print a true true into into false true into false one into zero its value is always what zero only let me check this one sir here i am taking here i am taking print of print of true plus a true print of true plus a true what is the answer two itself is the answer print of true true minus false what is about its value one because one minus zero its value is the one sir print of true true into into false i'm taking print of true into false what is the answer sir zero like this right sir in our next session also several times we are going to use this point remember internally true represented as one sir false represented as zero clear for all of you right these are various important things you should aware about boolean type sir what are allowed values next to represent logical values we are going for boolean data type the allowed values are true and false compulsory t should be capital and f should be false i mean f should be capital next internally true and false represented as 1 and 0 in the mathematical operations so their integral values 1 and 0 will come in the picture beyond that nothing sir slowly while discussing operators i will add extra masala about these things just aware sir up to this we covered four data types sir one is int float complex bool now the next data type the most commonly used data type in python sir not only in python in any programming language string data type are you getting what is that sir str str itself is the string data type so first one small point you should aware almost the uh, this string data type we are going to discuss around 3 to 4 hours uh, as a separate topic in the next uh, next uh, videos right but here the basic introduction about the string i want to discuss of course as a separate topic we are going to discuss this don't worry sir just uh, let me go for plain just a touch taste of string concept i want to introduce like sir now what is string can you please spell out what is the what is the string sir string itself is any sequence of characters any sequence of characters itself is treated as a string okay is you durga is there sir it is a sequence of characters a sequence a sequence of characters itself is a string in python how you can represent a string so can i use single quotes or double quotes anyone can you please tell 
the people who are coming from java background sir we should use double quotes only sir we should we should use double quotes only because multiple characters are there okay can i use a single quotes or double quotes <laughs> respond can i use single quotes or double quotes okay take very special care we can use either single quotes or double quotes no problem at all even triple quotes also that part we are going to discuss next so any sequence of characters within single quotes or within double quotes is considered as a string sir remember that now here i am taking s is equal to durga like this i am taking sir yes now print type of s print type of s obviously what is the answer sir s t r type okay sir next s is equal to okay i am taking durga s is equal to within here just the my target is within double quotes durga i am taking within double quotes durga i am taking print of type of s print a type of s okay obviously str type we are going to get so any sequence of characters within single quotes or double quotes is considered as string remember that have a look once observe very carefully about this one sir here i'm taking s is equal to s s is equal to durga durga like this i'm taking sir print a what is the type of s what the what the type type of yes like this i'm taking sir this is i saved this one yeah test.py you are getting this file at the test.py print of type of yes now py test.py like this right sir what is the what is the output sir it is the str type only whether we are using single quotes or double quotes it is always treated yes it's always it's always treated yes okay str type only no problem at all it shall be the str sir now i have one small doubt what's my doubt is which one is the recommended single quotes are recommended or double quotes are recommended sir based on your comfort anything you can use but uh, double quotes uh, a bit readability is not that my single quotes very plain very simple that's why recommended to use a single quotes if you are very comfortable with the double quotes happily you can use it, sir okay well now i have one more small doubt is there take very very special care about this one sir here i'm taking s is equal to s is equal to single character within single quote single character within single quote can you please tell what is the type of yes ha ah, single character within single quote is considered as char data type have you remembered he is considered as char data type character data type but make sure this rule is applicable for java but not for python in python there is no char data type are you getting the point right so in python there is no char data type even single character within single quote also sir it is treated as str only so no character data type character values also we can represent in by using string type only in python now if you want print of type of yes <coughs> print a uh, type of yes what is the answer sir again str you are going to get okay have a look once now i'm taking sir it is the single character single character within single quote are you getting single character within single quote sir can you please print uh, what is the value of yes what is the value of yes and what is the type of yes what is the value of yes what is the type of yes value of yes is a only and what is the type of yes is str are getting value of yes is a and what is the type of yes itself is what str okay remember that there is no char data type in python we have only str type even char values also we can represent by using str only okay well so single quote double quote any quote you can use no problem right sir what's about triple quotes remember this one sir in python there is a big speciality is there we can use a triple quote symbols also okay what is the story about this triple quotes let me explain sir one minute have a look once sir here triple quotes triple triple quotes sir triple quotes means 
ट्रिपल सिंगल कोट्स और ट्रिपल डबल कोट्स ओके लाइक यू कैन टेक ट्रिपल सिंगल कोट्स सर ओके ओपन एंड एंड आर वी कैन टेक ट्रिपल डबल कोट्स ट्रिपल डबल कोट्स लाइक सर यू कैन यू कैन कंसीडर लाइक दिस ओके इट इज आल्सो वैल्यू इन पाइथन ट्रिपल कोट्स आल्सो एक्सेप्टेबल सर सिंगल कोट डबल कोट ट्रिपल कोट सर आई वांट टू टेक फोर कोट्स इनवॉल्व फाइव कोट्स इनवॉल्व पीवीएम इज गोइंग टू गिव लेफ्ट एंड राइट रिमेंबर दैट सो अप टू ट्रिपल कोट्स आर अलाउ बट द वेयर वी कैन यूज द ट्रिपल कोट्स व्हाट आर वेरियस एडवांटेजेस आर देयर बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस ट्रिपल कोट्स देयर आर Three application areas are there for the triple quote symbols, right? Sir, what is the first one? Legend, sir. Do you have you ever heard? Have you ever do you ever? What is the what? How you can specify multi-line string literal? Are string literal means string constant, but it's not in one line. Multiple lines are there. Something like uh, sir, Durga, Durga. Software, Durga software solutions, solutions. This total is a single string literal. Yes, is equal to. Yes, is equal to. Now I am trying to take print of yes. Can you please confirm? Is it valid or not? This type of literal is called multi-line string literal. String value distributed across multiple lines. This type of thing is called multi-line string literal. Remember, right? Sir, can you please tell string multi-line string literal? Multi-line string literal. Is it valid or not? I use which symbols? Single quote symbol. Single quote symbol. If I use a single quote symbol or double quote symbol, double quotes are single quote. Python virtual machine will give left and right because single quotes are double quotes applicable for one line string literals, but not multi line string literals. Remember that, sir. Have a look once. Observe very very carefully about this, sir. I'm trying to take yes is equal to Durga Durga software under then. Solutions are like I'm taking sir. And then print of yes. Okay, I'm trying to take print of yes. If I can take like uh, if I can print of yes. If I can take like this immediately, error we are going to get. Sir, syntax error. While sir while scanning string literal. Are single quote you open and uh, Durga completed. But where is where you close? Like uh, it's always expecting the same line. Sir, instead of single quote, let me use a double quote symbol. Let me use double quote. Double quote symbols, right? Even if I can take double quote symbol, also, also immediately we are going to get the error. So it's a very clear indication that single quotes and double quote symbol are not applicable, not applicable for multi-line string literal. So then how you can handle? Very simple, sir. Better to use. Respond. Better to use triple quotes. Triple single quotes or triple double quotes. Observe carefully, right? Now I don't want to use such single quote. Triple single quotes I'm taking. Triple single quotes I'm taking. That's all. Print of yes, sir. What answer, sir? Have a look once. Durga software solutions. Perfectly, it's going to work. No problem at all. Next, uh, triple double quotes. I want to take, sir. Triple double quotes. Double quotes. Double quotes. Three times double quotes. Three times double quotes. Perfect. It's it's going to work. No issue at all. Durga software solutions like this. Any doubt? Any doubt about this one? So the first important conclusion what you should aware where you can use a triple quote symbol to define to define multi-line multi-line string literals to define multi-line string literals. For that purpose, we can use triple quote symbols, right? Okay, well. Next, uh, what is the next uh, thing I have to I have to discuss? What is the next uh, use of triple quotes, right? Very very simple, sir. Listen a bit carefully about this one. Suppose I have one string is there, sir. Classes, class class by Durga, class by Durga is uh, very good. Very good, like this. I'm taking sir. Class by Durga is very good. This is the string letter I have. So happily you can take yes is equal to like this. You can you can take no problem at all. Print of yes yes valid sir. But my requirement is this Durga 
should come in the outport within within single quotes are you getting this durga should come within single quote so if string contain single quote symbol yeah the normal character yeah the normal character then what we have to do is so we should not enclose this string within single quote by mistake if you are taking single quote what will happen this single quote this single quote completed completed this single quote this single quote completed now why durga is coming in the middle it's a, it's always a problem syntactical mistakes are so if you want to use a single quote as a normal character in your string then that string should not enclose with a single quotes okay well so how you can handle very simple sir better to take double quotes are you getting better to take double quotes acceptable perfect man don't worry acceptable so means that if you want to use a single quote yeah the symbol yeah the symbol in your string then we have to enclose that string with double quotes observe carefully have a look once now my requirement is observe carefully sir here py s is equal to s is equal to single quote i'm taking so class class by durga class by durga is a very very good something like i'm taking sir have you observed here this total thing i'm enclosing within single quotes only total thing i'm enclosing within single quotes only right now observe syntax error invalid syntax syntax error invalid syntax like this we are getting sir now instead of single quote if i use double quotes instead of single quote if i use if i use double quotes double quotes what will happen perfect let me print the value of yes yes it is going to tell that okay durga it's going to tell that it is the it is the durga no problem durga is coming within single quotes right even here also just let me take double quotes double quotes okay class by durga is a very good something like i'm taking sir double quote now durga i'm taking within single quotes durga i'm taking within single quote acceptable now let me execute this code py test dot py py test dot py are getting what is the output you are getting sir durga is coming within single quotes acceptable same way i want to use double quote symbol double quote symbol as a normal character in the string something like s is equal to class by durga durga is a very good class by durga is very good now this durga i want to take within double quotes double quotes so if you want to use double quote as a symbol as a normal character in your string you have to enclose that string with a single quote now it is acceptable right okay if you want to use a double quote so enclose by using single quote if you want to use single quote enclose by using double quotes are you getting now we have a look sir i want to take here this durga i want to take double quotes okay durga should be within double quotes so if i can enclose this one by using double quotes only error we are going to get okay error we are getting syntax syntax error right now what i want to take is now enclose by using single quote if i enclose by using single quote happily you can use double quote at the simple only perfection class by durga is very good no issue at all sir so now the conclusion here is if you want to use double quote as a symbol as a normal character then we should enclose that string within single quotes if you want to use single quote as a single quote as a normal character then we should enclose that string within double quotes clear right now listen carefully the next scenario in my string i want to use both the single quote and double quote are the normal character okay sir so something like uh, my string is is so uh, classes here just observe uh, <coughs> classes by durga classes by durga durga for python for python are very good very good assume that sir this is my string this is my string but uh, durga should come within single quote durga should come within single quote 
पैतान शुड कम विथ इन डबल कोर्ट्स पैतान शुड कम विथ इन डबल कोर्ट्स अरे यू आर यूजिंग सिंगल कोर्ट सिंबल डबल कोर्ट सिंबल बोथ एज ए नॉर्मल कैरेक्टर इन यूर देन हाउ यू कैन हैंडल दिस टाइप ऑफ रिक्वायरमेंट for a the triple quote symbols came in the picture are you getting right now this a total string you have to enclose in triple quotes either triple single quotes you can use triple double quotes we can use no problem at all now have a look once sir sir i am taking classes by here classes by durga classes by durga durga for python for python are very good like this i am taking sir okay well sir now in this durga should be within single quote python should be within double quotes python should be within double quotes like next here single quote uh, by mistake if you are using single quote single quote uh, if you enclose this total by using single quote immediately error we are going to get have you observed right syntax are you enclose this total by using double quotes double quotes yes now you are going to get again error okay but enclose this one by using triple quote symbol by using triple quote symbol either triple single quotes or triple double quotes 100% pakka this one is valid sir have you observed classes by durga durga is coming within single quote python is coming within double quotes like so the important conclusion what you people should aware where you can use this triple quote symbols is in your string if you want to use single quotes and double quotes as normal characters then we have to use we should enclose that string within triple quotes okay so what is the first use of triple quote to define multi line string literals what is the second use sir to use single quote and double quote as normal characters as normal characters in our string any doubt any doubt about this one okay that's all this is the second use of triple quote symbols right next one more use is also there but as of now so just aware the word there is one concept is there named with documentation string okay documentation doc string we can use to define to define doc string what is that sir can you can you spell out to define doc string we can use a triple quotes but as of now just aware the word somewhere in the next classes we are going to discuss in detail sir so triple quotes uh, speciality in python sir which is not allowed in c c++ java uh, like uh, but in python triple quote symbols are allowed where you can use a triple quote symbols right to define multi line string literals next uh, to use a single quote and double quote as yes, normal characters in our string next to define doc string for that purpose we can use uh, sub this a uh, triple quote symbols is the story is the very clear right except a doc string doc string we are going to discuss in the next uh, sessions in detail you are not required to worry friends are you getting the basic idea clear for all of you right okay that's all sir in the last video we covered what is a string how you can represent a string by using single quotes double quotes there is a special story we covered about triple quote symbols right clear up to that next uh, index okay index sir there is one speciality is there in python index very important point sir listen carefully which is not uh, applicable for c or c++ or java here there is one speciality is there sir i am taking s is equal to durga this is my string how you can access characters of the string i want to access first character second character third character like how you can okay very very simple sir okay assume that d u r g a d u r g a is there durga now do you know we can access characters of the string by using index do you know right index index sir what is the 
సార్ ఫస్ట్ డూనో వాట్ ఇస్ ద ఫస్ట్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఇండెక్స్ జీరో జీరో సార్ ఎరేస్ అండ్ ద స్ట్రింగ్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈజ్ ఆల్వేస్ జీరో బైస్ ఇండెక్స్ జీరో జీరో వన్ టూ త్రీ ఫోర్ లైక్ జీరో వన్ టూ త్రీ ఫోర్ లైక్ దిస్ రైట్ నౌ ఐఎమ్ ట్రైంగ్ టు టేక్ ప్రింట్ ఆఫ్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ జీరో వాట్ ద ఆన్సర్ రెస్పాండ్ మ్యాన్ వాట్ ద ఆన్సర్ ఉజ్ ఆర్ గోండి క్యాట్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ జీరో విచ్ క్యారెక్టర్ లొకేటింగ్ అట్ జీరో ఇండెక్స్ ఓకే డి డి ఇట్స్ ఎల్ఫ్ ఇస్ ద క్యారెక్టర్ లొకేటింగ్ అట్ జీరో ఇండెక్స్ సిమిలర్లీ ప్రింట్ ఆ ఎస్ ఆ త్రీ ఐఎమ్ టేకింగ్ సార్ ప్రింట్ ఆఫ్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ త్రీ కెన్ యూస్ పెల్ ఆన్ విచ్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఈజ్ లొకేటింగ్ సార్ జి ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈజ్ లొకేటింగ్ రిగార్డింగ్ జి ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఎట్ ద థర్డ్ ఇండెక్స్ విచ్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఈజ్ దేర్ జి ఈజ్ దేర్ సార్ ఓకే నౌ ప్రింట్ ఆఫ్ ప్రింట్ ఆఫ్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఎమ్ టెకి రిగార్డింగ్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఎమ్ టెకి ఫర్ దిస్ ఎస్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద వ్యాలిడ్ ఇండెక్స్ జీరో టు ఫోర్ జీరో టు ఫోర్ ఓన్లీ బట్ హండ్రెడ్ ఇండెక్స్ ఈజ్ నాట్ దేర్ ఇమ్మడి గెట్లే పైతాన్ వర్చువల్ మిషన్ విల్ గెల్ లెఫ్ట్ అండ్ రైట్ ఇండెక్స్ ఎరర్ స్ట్రింగ్ ఇండెక్స్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ రేంజ్ లైక్ వీఆర్ గోన్ టు గ్యాన్ ఇండెక్స్ ఎరర్ రిగార్డింగ్ వాట్ ఇస్ ద ఎర్ర వీఆర్ గోన్ టు గెట్ సార్ ఇండెక్స్ ఎర్ర లైక్ వీఆర్ గోన్ టు గెట్ ఓకే లెట్ మీ క్రాస్ చెక్ సార్ హ్యావ్ ఎ లెక్ వన్స్ సార్ ఐమ్ టేకింగ్ వెరీ వెరీ సింపుల్ టర్మినాలజీ ఎస్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు ఎస్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు దుర్గా దుర్గా లైక్ దిస్ రైట్ నౌ ప్రింట్ ఆ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ జీరో ఎస్ ఆఫ్ జీరో నెక్స్ట్ ప్రింట్ ఆ ఎస్ ఆ త్రీ ఐమ్ టేకింగ్ సార్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ త్రీ లైక్ దిస్ ఐమ్ టేకింగ్ now let me execute this code are you in the position s of 0 means d s of 3 means g sir okay let me cross check d followed by g we are getting sir now i want to ask s of 100 s of 100 100 sir 100 index is not available immediately we are going to get error what is that error sir have a look once sir index error string index out of range index error string index out of range we are going to get okay perfect sir now take very very special care now observe carefully up to this we know the people who are coming from java c c++ like everyone can aware up to this now the next discussion is the most valuable sir have a look once sir print of print of yes of minus 1 i'm taking <laughs> yes of minus 1 i'm taking please confirm what answer we are going to get yes of minus 1 minus 1 i'm taking what is the answer hmm respond sir where is the question of minus 1 index immediately we are going to get what index error string index out of range like we are going to get minus i mean index error right no no that is the speciality of python python provide a support for both the positive index and negative index remember this one sir positive index and negative index both are supported by python sir positive index means okay forward direction zero starts with zero negative index means uh, backward direction starts with minus one minus one minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 this is the backward direction are you getting right to left so python provides support for both the positive index and negative index no problem at all itself is acceptable okay like sir now s of minus 1 means what is the answer at minus 1 index which character is there a character is there that's why you are going to get simply yes sir is it clear for all of you right now i have one important question python provide support for both positive index and negative index yes or no yes okay but other languages can provide support only for positive index sir next positive index starts with zero from left to right go on negative index starts with minus one minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five from right to left clear for all of you right let me cross check sir now yes off here let me go for yes off minus one i'm taking yes of minus one 
సో లాస్ట్ క్యారెక్టర్ విచ్ ఈ ద లాస్ట్ క్యారెక్టర్ సార్ ఓకే ఏ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈ ద లాస్ట్ క్యారెక్టర్ రైట్ ఎస్ పర్ఫెక్ట్ ఏ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈ ద లాస్ట్ లాస్ట్ క్యారెక్టర్ నౌ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ మైనస్ ఫైవ్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ మైనస్ ఫైవ్ మీన్స్ మైనస్ వన్ మైనస్ టూ మైనస్ త్రీ మైనస్ ఫోర్ మైనస్ ఫైవ్ మీన్స్ డి సార్ డి ఓకే లైక్ ఏ డి సార్ ఎస్ ఆఫ్ మైనస్ సిక్స్ సారీ మైనస్ వన్ టు మైనస్ ఫైవ్ ఓన్లీ వ్యాలిడ్ ఇండెక్స్ మైనస్ సిక్స్ ఈజ్ నాట్ అవైలబుల్ ఇమ్మీడియట్లీ వీఆర్ గోన్ టు గెట్ వాట్ ఇండెక్స్ ఎర్ ఆర్ స్ట్రింగ్ ఇండెక్స్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ రేంజ్ ఓకే సో దిస్ ఈస్ అబౌట్ ఇండెక్స్ స్టోరీ Python provides support for both the positive index and negative index. Positive index means from left to right. Negative index means right to left. Positive index starts from 0. Negative index starts from what? Minus 1. Okay? If you are trying to access string character, character of the string by using out of range index, then immediately we are going to get index error. Any doubt about this index? Clear for all of you, right? sir now i want to discuss very important special operator python specific special operator slice operator just aware what is this one sir can you please spell out slice operator okay like sir while discussing string concept next so i told already string we are going to discuss as a separate topic separate unit there we will discuss much about slice operator almost one hour we require to spend only on the slice operator right but now you people should be aware just a basic touch array i know basic idea about slice operator that feeling you have to get for that let me explain sir first question what is slice 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 what is the meaning of slice have you ever heard about slice suppose apple is there if we cut the apple into multiple pieces each piece is called one slice okay regarding one one slice slice means what a piece a piece okay a part a part of the apple are getting a part of the mosambi is by default considered as slice one minute have a look one sir in the google <laughs> just aware in the in the google apple okay apple slice image like this i'm trying to type have you are you saying right apple okay apple slice image like this i'm i'm trying to i'm trying to type sir okay now have you have a look once what 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 response we are going to get apple slice image okay like if you consider this one if you if you observe this yes have a look once this is one slice are you getting this itself is another slice this is one slice one slice so in the apple apple so we can cut the apple into multiple slices multiple slice so each slice itself is nothing but what one piece one piece is called a slice clear right forget so this is general layman terminology what is the slice sir why apple you are cutting into multiple slices but what is python slice operator in the string what is the meaning of slice i have one string is there remember this i have one string is there i want to i want to get part of that string part of that string that part of the string is nothing but slice how you can get that slice by using slice operator remember suppose i have one string is there sir assume that s is equal to a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z oh thank god i remembered all alphabet symbols okay <laughs> like uh, so that's all this is my string now my requirement is sir i want uh, which character locating at fourth index which character locating at fifth index simple s of that index automatically you will get that but now i don't want single character i want a slice i want one piece okay like sir now my requirement is i want from third index to 01 01 2 3 third index to assume that third 4 5 6 7 uh, seven index like 3 to 7 i want sir i want uh, this piece i want uh, this piece 
this piece is nothing but this slice so how you can get uh, this uh, substring this part of the this uh, slice of the given string by using which operator sir slice operator now terminology is very clear what is the purpose of slice operator right sir now how you can use what is the syntax for slicing observe carefully right sir this is a very very important yes of yes of begin begin index uh, colon colon end index are you getting begin index uh, colon end index so you have to specify from this begin to end can you please give the string can you please give the slice can you please give the part of the string like this so returns uh, returns uh, substring returns uh, substring or otherwise a slice slice return substring from from begin index to from begin index to uh, can you please spell out sir from begin index to are you respond man from begin index to are you begin colon end colon colon is there begin colon end end uh, from begin index to <laughs> begin index to remember end minus 1 index are you getting begin index to end minus 1 index okay not the end index even you specified end here but it's always going to return begin index to end minus 1 okay like suppose i'm asking yes r 3 2 9 i'm asking yes r 3 2 9 so it returns a string it returns the string from third index to third index to n minus 1 n minus 1 means 9 minus 1 9 minus 1 means 8 3 to 8 okay all characters locating from third index to eighth index that slice we are going to get that part we are going to get are you getting third third 3 4 5 6 7 okay 3 4 5 3 4 5 6 7 under then 8 means uh, up to i you are going to get sir let me crotch it let me crotch it third index to eighth index observe carefully here yeah, i'm taking sir have a look once let me close let me open let me consider a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z like this i took sir print of s of 3 to 9 are you getting 3 to 9 observe the syntax of slice operator sir okay begin begin colon end it returns a substring from begin index to end minus 1 index this is the very very important sir this word is the very very important end minus 1 index so 3 to uh, 9 minus 1 means 3 to 8 okay returns 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 a string from from 3 to 8 index end minus 1 means 8 index right so 3 means d sir d e f g h i up to that it has to return let me cross check sir let me cross check what is the answer we are going to get sir d e f g h i this is the syntax what you have to be aware what is the meaning of slice operator right are you in the position to understand so how many arguments are there for the slice operator please respond how many arguments are there for slice operator two argument begin and then end next uh, sir from begin index to n minus 1 index just a basic idea only okay aware that next uh, if you are not uh, specifying begin index begin begin index if you are not specifying begin index uh, begin index uh, the default value for begin index is from the beginning remember this one sir the default value is zero the default value for begin index is zero zero from beginning of the string if you are not specifying end end index value then it will consider until end of the string remember this one if you are not specifying end index then it will consider until end of the string clear right now observe yes of yes of sir 
colon 9 I'm taking yes of colon 9 are you didn't specify begin index value if you are not specifying begin index value then automatically starts from 0 starts from 0 begin index and what 0 to 8 you are going to get okay 0 to n minus 1 8 suppose s of s of 3 colon I'm taking sir. 3 colon are I didn't specify n index if you are not specifying n index until end until end of the string from 3 to end of string 3 to end of string it is going to consider are you getting 3 to end of string it is going to consider sir let me cross check have a look once sir suppose I'm taking yes of one minute one minute sir from the editor it is very easy to check okay now let me go for yes is equal to like same thing yes of three colon nine okay what the answer d e f g h i yes of colon nine i'm taking sir so you are not specifying begin index huh? default value for begin index is zero zero it is going to consider from from beginning from beginning to i so beginning to i it is going to consider sir so begin to n minus one then a b c d e f g h i similarly yes of yes of okay three colon like this i'm taking three colon like from third index to third index means d to end of the string d to end of the string remember this one what the answer we are going to get sir d e f f g h i like d to end of the string it is going to consider remember sir now immediately you may have the doubt okay sir what is the default value for begin index respond if you are not specifying begin index what it is going to take starts from zero if you are not specifying n index what is going to return it is going to return last okay well now my question is i'm not specifying i'm not specifying begin index and the end index <laughs> i'm not specifying begin index end index what will happen hmm? i'm not specifying begin index and end index what will happen very very simple sir okay default value zero means starts default value is the end of the string from begin to end total characters is going to consider means uh, original string string is going to be considered sir let cross check have a look once about this uh, terminology sir i'm taking yes of colon that's all so i didn't uh, specify begin index begin index and uh, end index also i didn't specify anything sir then total string by default is going to consider let me cross check friends here have a look once a b c d up to z total thing by default got considered this thing itself is nothing but slice operator behavior any doubt how many arguments are there two arguments begin and end begin index to n minus one index just that this is only taste that's all there are n number of doubts are there in your mind sir there is a third argument is also there named with the step step these are things in detail we will discuss where sir in the string concept just a basic idea oh there is a there is a something is there named with the slice operator try to get idea right okay well here just one more small finishing touch i want to give for this slice operator just a basic introduction this is not complete discussion of slice operator right in string concept i will explain in detail don't worry suppose here i'm taking yes of listen very carefully <laughs> listen very carefully three colon three colon thousand i'm taking sir can you please tell what the answer we are going to get three colon thousand sir actually third index to 25 index only valid index and the alphabet symbols total 26 are there 25th is the last index sir now i'm talking about three to thousand what will happen please respond what will happen obviously thousand index is not there immediately you are going to get index error string index out of range Are <laughs> index error string index out of range ah, remember that so slice operator never going to rise index error
okay slice operator never going to rise index error okay within that range whatever characters are there it is going to consider okay so from 3 to up to 25 only characters are there that's why 3 to 25 up to that whatever characters are there it is going to consider sir so d to z we are going to get everything we never going to get index error remember that have a look once if i can take s of 3 to 3 to 1000 like this i'm taking sir 3 to 1000 like what is the answer d to z d to z we are going to get even 1000 we are considering but we never going to get any index error even 1000 index is not there slice operator never going to rise the index error clear right okay well next suppose if i can consider s of s of 5 colon 3 sir 5 colon 1 assume that 5 colon 1 <laughs> what will happen now ah, 5 colon 1 make sure sir here we are always going to move forward direction we are always going to move forward forward direction in forward direction after 5 index after 5 3 4 5 after 5 index if you move to the forward you never going to get one you never going to get one that's why from 5 if you move forward you never going to get one means that nothing there is no slice okay empty string by default you are going to get but what is the what the results are empty nothing nothing is there so this slice is not possible empty empty only we are going to get so now have a look once sir yes of yes of 5 colon 5 colon 1 i'm taking 5 colon 1 what is the answer sir empty are you getting what is the answer we are going to get just a empty empty string we are going to get okay that's all so in that slice if the content is not there a simple empty even out of range also we never going to get index error sir just uh, up to whatever characters are there it is going to consider sir this is basic idea about the slice operator okay it doesn't mean it is a complete discussion of slice operator minimum one hour i will spend on this slice operator while discussing string concept there your doubts by default will be clarified after completing that slice operator you never going to ask any doubt at all i'm sure but here you may have some doubts please keep these doubts with you until covering this string concept clear any doubt about this terminology okay now i hope by this time what is the meaning of slice operator basic idea everyone got now let me go for a small application area where we can use slice operator right just observe i'm taking yes is equal to durga this is my string sir my requirement is i want i want output yes i want to convert this string yes d u r g a like this i want to take are you getting i want to consider this one as d u r g a like what it means is can you please uh, convert the uh, first letter into uppercase and uh, then remaining as it is you can take are you getting remaining as it is you can take like this right how you can do that very very simple sir output is equal to output is equal to sir i want to get the first character how you can access first character of the string respond how you can access first character of the string s of zero s of zero is the first character i want to convert this first character to uppercase i want to convert this first character to uppercase oh small d will become capital d and then what is the remaining i have to take so the remaining from one index to from one index until end you have to take as it is you require to take as it is so plus plus okay plus operator we can use between two strings so this is the first string d capital d plus remaining how to represent remaining part 
<laughs> how you can represent remaining part so it is the piece it is the slice so s of starts from one index one index to end that's why s of one colon end end like this right okay now print of output sir print a uh, output i'm taking so what is the output we are going to get sir do you know our expected d capital and then durga so if you are perfect with the slice operator you can play the games like anything with the string sir pass i want the uh, from one index to end of the thing i want to consider as it is first character converting into upper case let me consider let me execute this code have a look once sir my requirement is sir observe carefully here s is equal to s is equal to durga durga like this i have sir output is equal to first character s of 0 convert into upper sir we require to use upper upper method some people may ask sir what this method is doing what this method is doing in the string concept i will discuss in detail yes where converting this uh, string into upper case that's all sir next uh, plus plus okay yes of one from one index onwards remaining sir from one index onwards remaining sir have you observed yes of zero means d sir upper means capital d we are getting okay plus yes of one one to end of the string one index means u onwards until end u r g a you are going to get that's all so if i print output what is the answer we are going to get sir print output what the answer we are going to get is have a look once sir p y test dot p y have you observed durga either first letter is the upper case or not yes first letter is the upper case okay now need not be durga sir i'm taking durga soft i'm taking durga soft yes anything sir anything the output is always first letter will be upper case remaining r as it is it is going to consider okay like sir same way sometimes my requirement is observe very carefully sometimes my requirement is i want uh, i want uh, this style d u r g capital a i want what is the meaning of that last character i want to make as upper case last character i want to consider as upper case right now what we have to take is output is equal to output is equal to so from beginning to last but one character last but one character sir last but one character take very special care d u r g a is there 0 1 2 3 4 what is the range 0 1 2 3 4 okay next what is the length of this string what is the what is the length sir length length of s is equal to 5 5 sir length of s is equal to 5 sir i want i want this one up to this up to this except last character i want to consider how you can use slice operator sir s of 0 to 0 to 4 we have to take do you know 0 to 4 what is the reason for that begin to n minus 1 n minus 1 means 4 minus 1 4 minus 1 means 3 0 to 3 like we have to consider are you getting so it is going to consider return d u r g okay sub 0 4 but i don't want to hard code this 3 or 4 okay this 4 how you are getting is 0 to length of s minus 1 length of s is what 5 5 minus 1 means 4 0 to 4 0 to 4 because i want to use this approach for any string need not be durga that's why okay so first get total string except the last character means this is so output is equal to s of 0 to length of s minus 1 okay sir can i remove this zero yes because default value for begin index is zero only if you want you can remove no problem at all sir plus plus okay except the last character we are getting everything everything how to access last character <laughs> are you getting how to access last character was python provide support for positive index and negative index more flexibility to the programmer last character if you want to access 
yes of minus 1 have you remember right in the last video i covered yes of minus 1 dot sir upper dot upper like so please consider total string except last character under then under then what you require to take sir can take last character convert into upper case now this type of style we are going to get so i want a string at yeah, the output where last character should be converted into upper case okay like let me consider have a look once sir uh, please guide last character should be upper case last character should be upper case right durga what i'm trying to tell so yes of 0 2 0 2 length of s yes, length of s yes, minus 1 length of s yes, minus 1 okay so every character we are going to get except last character except last character plus s of minus 1 last character s of minus 1 last character convert into upper convert into upper print of output what output you are going to get sir can you please observe d u r g followed by a we are going to get d u r g followed by a a we are getting sir okay well now i have one small doubt need not be durga sir yes you can take durga software solutions like no issue at all acceptable same output we are going to get or not can you please observe total is as usual but last character should be converted into upper case yeah how beautiful this is are you able to understand right small small application with the slice operator with the native index we can able to do that now my next question listen carefully sir my next requirement is observe that d sir the given string is durga now first character can you please convert into upper case <laughs> u r g g okay last character can you please convert into upper case va wow. are getting first character we require to convert into upper case last character we have to convert into upper case what is the way sir very simple output is equal to output is equal to read the first character convert into upper case s of 0 dot upper okay read first character convert into upper case okay next uh, from 1 so d u r g a now from 1 to 2 last but one from 1 to 1 to index to last but one can you please read as it is okay plus plus what i have to take here is s of 1 to index to last but one length of s minus 1 so only first character first character second character one index character to last but one okay well second one last now i have to consider last character how you can read last character just how i told have you remember right s of minus 1 dot upper like <laughs> observe this this is the first character this is the last character okay now the remaining characters we can read by using this slice operator okay well now print of output yes first character should be in the upper case last character should be in the upper case remaining characters are as it is we are going to get have a look ones observe carefully sir here i want to write again sir here just a durga only i am taking sir first character s of 0 dot upper converting into upper next uh, sir second character onwards means one index onwards last but one last but one means length of min s minus 1 okay plus last character sir s of minus 1 dot upper that's it wow beautiful sir abjan sir this is if you if you can able to understand this uh, syntax nothing will be there sir okay read first character and converting into upper read the last character converting into upper in the middle the remaining characters can you please take as it is okay like now observe let me consider so first character is in upper case last character is in upper case okay well suppose need not be durga sir it may be durga soft it may be durga durga soft now have a look once 
so first character first character upper case last character last character upper case right sir need not be durga software software durga software now abjan first one upper case last one upper case e upper case next d upper case right not this solutions also i'm taking so d upper case s upper case d upper case s upper case d itself is upper case s itself is upper case right okay that's all this is what uh, you people should aware how you can use slice operator how you can use index uh, maybe you may have such a type of things uh, but in string concept almost around 20 applications we are going to discuss there we will have clear clarity about uh, this api methods right don't worry at all clear for all of you right up to this sir up to this it's very clear how you can use slice operator small small applications how you can develop by using slice operator negative index positive index right sir now related to string there are two important points i want to discuss with respect to mathematical operations right observe that of course we use already plus operator for the string observe very carefully sir plus operator for the string Suppose if I am taking Durga, Durga plus a soft, Durga plus a soft. If I print yes, what the answer we are going to get? Huh? What the answer we are going to get? Can you please confirm? Very simple. Durga soft is the answer we are going to get. Durga soft like. Now the point here is observe very carefully. Plus operator applicable sir for the strings. then simply it acts as concatenation concatenation right okay well now especially the people who are coming from java background you can answer very easily about this one s is equal to durga durga plus 10 i am taking if i can take print of s ha ah. what the answer respond man the people who are coming from java background you can easily answer this one what the answer we are going to get ah durga durga 10 are getting what the answer we are going to get durga 10 because sir if you want to apply plus operator for the string at least one argument is the string type the other can be anything anything it's a it simply acts as concatenation right but this rule is applicable only for java but not for python remember that in python if you want to apply plus operator for the string compulsory both the arguments should be string type sir regarding compulsory both arguments should be string type remember this that's why do you know so here one is string but the other one is not string not string immediately we are going to get type error are you getting what is the error we are going to get sir type error if you want to apply plus operator between two string values compulsory both arguments should be string type one is string the other one is non string immediately we will get error clear right let me show this one here observe a bit very very carefully about this one sir sir i am taking i am taking just here forget about all this nonsense yes is equal to durga plus soft durga plus a soft sir print of yes print of yes sir. perfect okay durga soft we are getting sir now yes is equal to durga plus a 10 plus a 10 immediately we will get the error immediately we will get error type error must be str but not int type error must be str but not int remember this so it's very clear first conclusion sir so plus operator applicable for the string or not what is the answer respond plus operator applicable for the string or not yes applicable for the string next uh, sir if you want to apply plus operator for the string what is the rule the rule is both the arguments must be string type remember one is a string the other one is a non string immediately error we are going to next uh, about the star operator also there is one very important sir 
So this is speciality. He is not there for the remaining languages, right? Star, star operator. Star operator, operator, multiplication operator, right? Now I am taking S is equal to Durga, Durga into 3. <laughs> Durga into 3. Can you please tell what the answer we are going to get? Hmm? Respond. Is it applicable for the string or not? Yes, friends, it is applicable for the string. Okay, it is considered as string repetition operator. Let me cross check, sir. Have a look once. I am taking S is equal to Durga into 3. I am taking print of S. S is equal to Durga into 3. Print of S. What is the answer we are going to get, sir? Okay. Durga, Durga, Durga. Like a three times, right? Okay. This is a string repetition operator. Okay, like. Now we have one small doubt. Think a bit very carefully and then tell answer. I am taking S is equal to S is equal to 3 into Durga. S is equal to 3 into Durga. Is it valid or not? Ayo, respond. 3 into Durga. Is it valid or not? Okay. Take very special care about this one. So, sir, Durga into 3 is valid. But what about 3 into Durga? Okay. No issue at all. Multiplication operator we can apply for the string. If you are applying for the string, compulsory one argument should be string type, the other one should be inter type only. Inter type only. This order, first you are taking string under than int, or first int under than string, no problem at all. In any order you can take, but make sure whenever we are using star, one argument should be string type, the other argument should be int type. Okay? Acceptable, right? So print of yes. Print of yes. Now, same Durga. Durga, Durga, like uh, three times you are going to get no problem, right? Okay, let me cross check, sir. Here, I'm taking, so, here, instead of, let me take, sir, three into Durga. Like this, I'm taking, sir. Three into Durga, three into Durga. For a fact, acceptable. Durga, 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 like. You people may feel, sorry, showing old output only second time, like. Uh, hey, let me change something. Okay, five times I'm taking, sir. Five, five, Durga, like this, right? For a fact, acceptable. Durga, 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 Durga. Five times it's going to come, sir. Clear for all of you, right? Next. Sir, can I take, like this? Can you please tell, is it acceptable or not? Okay, I want to take, like, S yes, is equal to Durga, Durga into soft. Durga into soft. Immediately, error we are going to get. Because the reason is, type error. Because the reason is, whenever we are applying star operator for the string, compulsory, one argument should be string, the other argument should be int type. But you are taking again string. Again string. That's why we are going to get. Can't multiply string with the uh, non-string like you are going to get, sir. Have a look once. Here, Durga. Here I am taking. So, S is equal to Durga. Durga into into soft term taking durga into soft term taking sir now observe sir type error type error can't multiply sequence by non inter type of str can't multiply sequence by non inter type of str like this we are going to get okay everyone in the position to understand clearly right okay well so is it applicable star operator applicable for the string or not yes if you are applying star operator for the string one argument should be string type the other argument should be int type in any order you can take string int int string acceptable no issue at all right okay well sir now sometimes i may write like this where exactly these type of requirements are there for beautiful printing sake i can use print print Okay, ash symbol, print ash symbol, okay, 30 times or, or 10 times. Observe, print ash symbol 10 times, okay. Next, print of, print of Durga soft, print of Durga soft, Durga soft. Next, print again ash symbol, ash symbol 10 times, print ash symbol 10 times. 
Are you getting right? Now, ash, ash, ash like a ten times. And then Durga soft in the next line. And then ash, ash, ash like a ten times. Now, observe the output what you are going to get. If I print more meaningful print statements, right? Okay. Here, print of ash symbol. Okay. Ten times. Ash symbol. Ten times. Like in the middle, I am taking print of print print of durga soft okay like i'm taking sir observe the output observe observe the output how beautiful it is are you getting so this is are you get, i hope you people can can see where you can use a star i mean star operator for the string concept clear for all of you these are various important things what you should aware but it is the basic idea about the string concept there is a separate topic we are going to discuss a string almost around three to four hours there we are going to discuss in detail don't worry sir this is about string data type sir up to this we covered five data types inter type float type complex type bool type str type five data types we covered these five data types are considered as yes, fundamental data types of python remember this one sir these are fundamental data types of python next uh, long data type available only in python 2 but not in python 3 okay long is applicable in the old version but not in the python 3 version right next a char data type sir in other languages like c c plus plus java char data type separate data type is there but in python there is no char data type even char values also we can represent by using string type only remember these important conclusions right have a look once just i documented these conclusions also observe that so important conclusions the following data types are considered as yes, fundamental data types of python in float complex bool str Next, uh, long data type available only in Python 2, but not in Python 3, sir. Sir, by the so long values also you can represent by using int type only in Python 3. Remember, right? Next, uh, there is no char data type in Python. Char, char data, data type is not available in Python. Char values also we can represent by using what? str type only. That's all. This is the discussion about fundamental data types present inside Python. Clear for all of you, right? Hi friends, in the last videos we covered the fundamental data types of python, inter type, next float type, complex, bool and str type we covered right. So now I will explain how to convert one type value to another type. Regarding suppose I have int value is there, I want to convert it to float type our float value is there i want to convert to complex type so the process of converting one type to another type we have to discuss this process is nothing but what type casting are you getting just observe that what is our next topic name type casting sir casting means conversion conversion converting the type type casting okay the process of converting one type of value to another type is called type casting or type coercion observe very carefully sir what is the other words are type coercion like this right so how you can perform type casting what the functions are there okay python provide five inbuilt functions are there sir by using these five inbuilt functions happily we can convert from one type to another type sir which those what are those inbuilt functions right sir first one int function are you getting what is the first one int int function second one sir float function third one complex function third complex function next uh, bool function are you getting bool bool function next uh, sir str function 
are you getting these are the five type casting functions what we can use okay to convert one type value to another type now we have to perform postmortem about all these functions right okay multiple examples we require to discuss internal loopholes we have to aware so that you people can get much clarity right okay so can i start the cinema is it clear for all of you so total how many type casting functions are there we can perform type casting in python by using which function functions int function float function complex function bool function and then str function right sir now the first thing what we have int function sir have you observed the first one int int function can you spell out what is the purpose of int int function sir to convert from other types to int type okay to convert to convert from from other types to convert from other types to int types are we require to use int function suppose i have float value is there how i can convert float value to int type i have boolean value is there how i can convert boolean to float type like to convert from other types to int type then we require to go for what int function clear right sir so now how you can use this one okay the first thing what i have to discuss right float to int conversion i have float value is there i have float value is there i want to convert float value to int what is the option sir very very simple sir int of you can pass any float value no problem sir sir now i have 10.989 is there this is the float value sir i want to convert this float value to int type what will happen is so how this int function is going to be here yes what is the output we are going to get sir very simple 10 we are going to get whenever we are trying to convert float value to int type by using int type casting function the digits after the decimal point will be gone are you getting the digits after the decimal point will be gone then obviously what is the output we are going to get just a simply 10 now can you please tell float to int conversion is it possible or not yes possible how you can convert sir whenever we are trying to convert float to int the digits after the decimal point by default will be gone remember that sir so it may be positive or negative the rule is always the same have a look once what i want to take here is observe carefully sir int of here int of int of 10.990 or 9908 something like i am taking sir just uh, i am passing i am passing float value have you observed that this is the float value to the int function now what is the equivalent int value we are going to get just the only 10 sir 10 that's all so float to, to int type float to two int type conversion is possible what is the rule the digits after the decimal point by default will be gone okay well sir next uh, next uh, possibility sir complex i have complex is there sir complex value is there is it possible to convert complex to int type sir i want to convert complex number to int type so please make sure what what we are going to get int of 10 plus 20 j okay well sir can you please tell what i am passing <laughs> respond what i am passing 10 plus 20 j int of 10 plus 20 j i am passing can you please tell what what we are going to get ayo uh, respond what what the what the result we are going to get what the output we are going to get in this case okay very simple the output is ah <laughs> can i get 10 or can i get 20 or can i get 10 and 20 okay very very simple you are always expecting what int value int value right what the output we are going to get sir a big a big type error we are going to get <laughs> remember this one a big type error we are going to get so complex number cannot be converted to int type remember this one sir complex number cannot be converted to int type by mistake if you are trying to convert complex number to int type immediately error we are going to get okay have a look once sir i am taking int of int of 10 plus 20 j 
are getting int a uh, 10 plus 20 j but the answer we are getting sir type error sir this one is the very important type error can't convert complex to int type error can't convert complex to int like this uh, sir type error we are going to get sir okay well this is what you people should aware okay well sir now okay float to int how to convert we are saying complex to int sorry sir not possible next uh, bool to yes observe that boolean value bool to bool to boolean value to int type sir yes happily you can do that have you remembered somewhere we cover true true means uh, internally treated as one false means uh, internally treated as zero sir now have you observed bool of bool of true bool of true true sir so here just to take a bit very special care i don't want to convert to bool so int of true sir int of true i'm taking what is the answer hmm. can you please convert boolean value true to int time very simple sir one we are going to get convert sir boolean value false to int type sir zero we are going to get so bool to int type conversion is possible or not yes perfectly itself is acceptable no problem at all okay let me show this up approach right have a look once int of int of true i'm taking sir int of true i'm taking then its value is treated as one one similarly int a uh, false i'm taking sir its value is internally treated as zero sir i hope everyone can able to understand right so how to convert boolean value to int type is that clear sir now the last conversion sir okay i know string value is there i want to convert string to int type are you getting i want to convert string value to int type what is the option sir yes is it possible to convert yes friend happily we can do that but there is a rule is there let me talk about that rule clearly right compulsory string value internally contains integral value remember this compulsory string internally contains integral value and should be specified only in base 10 sir binary form octal form hexadecimal forms are not allowed so string internally contains string internally string internally contains string internally contains only integral value only integral value that uh, should be specified uh, in base 10 only decimal form only like this right okay well sir int of int a uh, sir 15 i am taking 100 percent pakka valid even it is a string uh, internal it contain what uh, internal it contain what uh, sir integral value sir which is in base 10 only now what is the value sir 15 is the answer suppose if i can take int of int of 0 b 0 b 1 1 1 1 like this i'm taking immediately we are going to get errors are value error like we are going to get some error hey, if you if you are trying to convert string to int type compulsory string should contain integral value and should be specified only in the base 10 but you are not uh, specifying in base 10 you are using binary form that's why immediately error we are going to get sir value error like uh. sir now int of int of 10.5 i'm taking in string form are you getting int 10.5 i'm taking in string form can you please tell 10.5 it is not integral value it is a float value sir sorry this conversion fails sir. it is also we are going to get error sir okay so is it possible to convert string to int type or not yes possible but string should contain only integral value and it should be in the base 10 okay let me show this conversion also have a look once if i'm taking sir int of okay within here 15 i'm taking sir yes valid valid no problem at all now 15 is the answer 
int a int a 0 b 1 1 1 1 like this i'm taking sir so you can pass a string should be integral value should be integral value and you have to specify in base 10 but here it is the integral value but you are specifying in the binary form that's why immediately error value error invalid literal for int with the base 10 invalid literal for int with the base 10 like this we are going to get the error sir i hope everyone in the position to understand clearly right okay well sir now i'm taking int of int int of sir just a 10.5 int of 10.5 so you are trying to convert string to int string to int but the string is not containing integral value it contains floating point value now observe that what will happen value error error invalid literal for int with base 10 10.5 that's all this is uh, what you people should aware about the uh, int int functions right clear for all of you right so how to convert other types to int type what are various possibilities are there sir int is the int is the typecasting function we have to use float to int possible conversion is possible or not yes but whenever we are trying to convert flow to int the digits after the decimal point will be gone next the complex number to int type conversion is not possible next the, whenever you are trying to convert boolean to int type if if the boolean value is the true now int value is one if it is the false now int value is the zero next the string to int type is it possible to convert or not yes possible but compulsory string should contain only integral value and we should use base 10 only that's all sir these are various important rules related to int function to convert other types to int type any doubt about this clear right Sir, up to this we covered how to convert other types to int type, int type casting function. Sir, now I have to explain, I want to convert other types to float type. Regarding, I want to convert other types to float type. How you can use a type casting function, okay? Sir, float, this is the type casting function we require to use. So, from int type, from int type for complex type int type value complex type value bool type value str type value how you can convert into float type for this we require to go for this float function sir okay to convert other types to float we have to go for what float float function sir what is the behavior right now observe very carefully i want to convert into two floats sir i want to convert into two float okay no restrictions you can provide any int value in any base no problem happily the corresponding float value we are going to get now observe this one sir float of float of sir 15 i'm taking now what will happen is whenever you are trying to convert 15 into value to the float this output will become 15.0 remember sir if i can take float of 0 b 0 b 1 1 1 1 okay now also 15.0 you are going to get because binary 1 1 1 1 means 15 only now what is the output you are going to get 15.0 no restrictions happily you can convert into to float type right okay just observe this one sir sir i'm trying to take int sir here float of float of 15 what is the answer please confirm what is the answer float of 15 15.0 sir now float of sir 0 b 1 1 1 1 like this i am taking yes 15.0 sir float of 0 x phase it is the integral value sir so 64206.0 64206.0 like this we are going to get okay sir that's all this is the way how to convert int value to float type clear Sir, similarly, I want to convert, I want to convert complex to float type. Are you getting? I have to convert complex to float, float type, sir. Sir, very simple. In the last we covered, 
int value sir i want to convert complex to int sorry sir not possible same way if you want to convert complex to float sorry not possible sir if you have complex value convert in that complex value to the int type convert in that complex value to the float type sorry not possible immediately we are going to get type error okay remember now float of 10 plus 20 j i'm taking <coughs> what i'm trying to pass 10 plus 20 j i'm taking sir what is this value it is a complex number complex number we are trying to convert into the float immediately we are going to get type error what is that error sir can you spell out type error so we can't convert complex number to flow type of course to the int type also okay just have a look once i'm trying to take just the float of here just observe that sir float float of float of 10 plus 20 j 10 plus 20 j we are trying to convert complex number to float type sir if you are trying to convert complex number to float type what is that error we are getting type error can't convert complex to float everyone everyone in the position to understand that right? we can't we can't convert complex number to float type sir okay well now sir third one boolean to bool to float type is it possible or not yes why not why not happily you can do that okay true internally treated as one false internally treated as zero now one and zero will come sir now float of float of true sir if you are trying to convert true to the float type its value will become 1.0 because we are trying to convert into the float 1.0 sir float of if i can take false if i can take false what answer we are going to get sir uh, 0, 0.0 like this so is it possible to convert float boolean to float or not boolean to float or not yes possible man 1.0 0, 0.0 this is the way sir let me cross check here have a look once sir i'm taking here float of true i'm trying to take what is the answer sir float of true true i'm trying to take what answer 1.0 sir similarly float a float a false i'm trying to take sir what output you are going to get 0.0 so float of true float of false not required to give any explanation this sir next uh, fourth one sir what is the what is the fourth one so str type to str type to float type string to float type sir very simple possible possible sir string to float possible but only one rule is there what is that rule is internally string should contain either integral value or float value but should be specified only in base 10 okay remember this so internally string should contain internally string should contain either int value either int value or float value or float value either int value or float value but should be specified only in base 10 that's what you should aware sir okay well very simple now let me cross check float of okay 10 i'm taking float of 10 i'm taking so it is a string but internally contains what string only internally contains int value only now what is the output we are going to get 10.0 perfect sir acceptable float of float of here 20.6 like this i'm taking yes internal it contain float value no problem this conversion is possible sir 20.6 okay now float of okay 0x face i'm taking immediately value error you are going to get 0x face hey, internally it should be int value and we should specify only in base 10 sir it is int value only but uh, you use an exact is well that's why sorry it is not possible next up float of float of durga i'm taking float of durga i'm taking again sir error we are going to get maybe value error okay like again error we are going to get so that's what by seeing this one you people can aware 
whenever we are trying to convert okay string to float type string can contain int value or float value but we have to specify only in what base 10 remember let me cross check sir here very very simple i am taking sir float of float of 10 10.0 sir float of 20 0.6 I am taking sir 20.6 20.6 next up float of 10 20.6 next uh, sir here 0 0 x face hexadecimal int value I am providing immediately error we are going to get have you observed right value error could not convert string to float sorry sir string to float conversion is not possible for the, in this case similarly float of Durga I am taking meaningless here value error could not convert could not convert a string to float if the string is durga you can't convert into the float value that's all sir this is what you people should aware clearly right any doubt about this one so what is the purpose of float function to convert other types to float we require to go for float function next uh, into to float whenever you are trying to convert no restrictions you can provide int value even in decimal form binary form octal form hexadecimal form just a point zero will be added in the float that's all sir next the uh, complex to float sorry not possible you can't convert complex number to either int complex number to float such type of conversions are not allowed next uh, bool to float possible sir if you are trying to convert a true to float 1.0 false means 0, 0.0 sir string to float sir should contain the string should contain either int value or float value and the should be specified only in the base 10 that's all this is the way how to convert from other types to float type how to use a float type casting function clear right sir up to this it is very clear how to convert from other types to inter type how to convert from other types to flow type now my requirement is i want to convert uh, from other types to complex type are you getting suppose i have int value is there okay i have float value is there or bool value is there str value is there sir all these values how to convert into complex type are you getting this a type casting function we have to discuss for that we require to go for what complex so what is the purpose of complex type casting function to convert from other types to complex type for that purpose we can use complex right but anyway complex number what is the syntax for complex number can you please spell out sir a plus b j a plus b j this a is called what a real part under this b is called what imaginary part are you getting this a is called real part b is called imaginary part okay well sir now how you can convert from other types to complex there are two forms of complex function is there sometimes you may pass only real value and sometimes you may pass real value and uh, sir imaginary value also what it means sir? now observe that first form form one sir first form complex of of x only one argument i'm passing complex of x only one argument i'm passing if you pass only one argument this argument will become this argument will become a real value sir which is the real value yes this one is the real value right sir similarly there is another complex function is there i mean two argument complex function form two complex of x comma y so if you are passing sir complex of x comma y two arguments right now the first argument will become real value and the second argument will become imaginary value remember this one sir so how to convert how to convert from other types to complex time sir first argument one argument function let me explain here see this one complex of 10 i am taking complex of 10 int value i am passing sir now do you know what will happen 10 plus 0 j okay whatever argument you are passing this argument will become this argument will become okay this is called real part and the imaginary part is always zero 
similarly complex of okay 0 b 1 1 1 1 it is the int value int values are what about this int value can you please spell out 0 b 1 1 1 1 15 plus 0 j okay like so int value to complex number conversion is always possible this int value will become real part okay let me execute this code sir have a look once here i'm taking complex <coughs> complex of 10 sir what is the answer 10 plus 0 j remember sir similarly complex of complex of okay 0 b 1 1 1 1 like this i'm taking sir what about its value 15 plus 0 j 15 plus 0 j like this we are going to get any doubt about this one sir so clear so into two complex number one argument how you are going to convert similarly sir let me go for complex of complex of okay 10.5 i'm taking sir which value i'm passing float value float to complex yes no problem 10.5 plus 0 j 10.5 plus 0 j similarly complex of complex of true true i'm passing sir complex of true if you pass true true means what one one have you remembered one plus 0 j sir complex of complex of false if i can take complex of false false if i can take what about its value sir do you know 0 plus 0 j it is always going to print 0 j like this right of course imaginary part is the 0 then it's not required to display just 0 j that's all only second half is going to be printed let me show these things right here observe carefully right sir i want to convert float value to complex float value float value to complex right 10.5 complex of 10.5 sir have you observed 10.5 plus 0 j next uh, complex of true i'm taking sir complex of true what about its value sir 1 plus 1 plus 0 j because true means 1 similarly complex of complex of false i'm taking sir 0 plus 0 j its value will be printed as 0 sir okay well next uh, sir i want to convert string to complex okay i want to convert string string to complex right sir complex of okay string sir please make sure this string should contain either int value or float value and should be used only in the base 10 whatever rule we covered for the float float function same rule sir if you are going to pass a string value compulsory that string value should contain either int value or float value and we have to use only base 10 remember now i'm taking sir 10 in the form of string okay 10 10 in the form of string sir now 10 plus 0 j okay complex r complex r okay 10.5 in the string form 10.5 plus 0 j we are going to get so just uh, observe let me cross check these two things also have a look once uh, sir sir i'm taking complex of complex of then i'm taking what the answer 10 plus 0 j perfect sir complex of complex of 10.5 i'm taking sir what the answer 10.5 plus 0 j sir complex of here have we observed 0 b 1 1 1 1 like this i'm taking sir have you remembered if you are specifying the string compulsory it should contain either int value or float value under that value should be specified only in the base 10 but you are using binary but you are using binary what will happen sir value error value error complex arg is a mal formed string mal formed means what so not properly formatted string is not properly formatted mal formed string like this we are going to get okay so this is what uh, what you people should be aware if you pass only one argument that argument will become only real part and the imaginary part will become zero so from other types to complex type how to convert only with real value this is sir now what about the sir form 2 i want to pass real value and the imaginary value both them yes possible yes first argument second argument right now complex of complex of 10 comma 20 are you getting complex of 10 comma 20 
10 will become real value, 20 will become imaginary value. Now observe the 10 plus 20j. This is the answer we are going to get. Similarly, complex of 10.5 comma 20.6 I am taking. 10.5 comma 20.6. Now 10.5 plus 20.6 j we are going to get. Everyone can able to understand right? If you are passing two arguments, if you are passing two arguments means sir, what will happen for complex number? Now have a look once sir. Here I am trying to take complex of 10 comma 20. Can you please have a look once? What is the answer we are going to get? 10 plus 20 j. Okay like Sir similarly complex of 10.5 comma 20.6 I am taking sir. 10.5 comma 20.6 I am trying to take what will happen 10.5 plus 20.6 j this is the value we are going to get sir perfectly valid any doubt friends are you in the position to understand clearly right okay well sir now I have one small doubt observe carefully observe carefully of course complex numbers we are not going to use that much frequently even you don't know about these rules, don't worry, sir, optional. But having idea is always good programming practice. Remember, complex of, complex of, here I'm taking, here I'm taking 10, 10, okay, comma, 10, comma, 20 I'm taking. 10, comma, 20 I'm taking. Can you please tell, is it valid or not? Are string, string, both the strings I am passing, sir. Is it valid or not? Okay. Take very, very special care. What that point is? So, whenever the first argument is the string, whenever the first argument is the string, second argument, string, you are not allowed to pass. Of course, internal restrictions are there. Sir, 10, 20, immediately, error we are going to get, sir. Okay. Similarly, so what is the rule is? If you want to pass, if you want to pass, do you know, string value in the real part, real part string value, then second argument, second argument, sir, you can't, you can't pass. Second argument, okay, you can't pass, it should, it should not be string like, let me show what error we are going to get, sir. Sir, what is that uh, error, what error we are going to get is, if I can take, if I can take a 10 comma, so compulsory, yes, observe a bit very, very carefully about this one, sir. Have a look once, complex of 10 comma 20, I am taking, sir. Complex of 10 comma 20. Observe what it is telling. Type error. Complex can't take second argument if the first is a string. Are you getting? Can't take second argument if the first is a string, sir. So, if the first argument is the string, then you can't pass a second argument. What error we are getting, sir? Type error we are getting. Okay. Now, okay. I'm taking like this. <laughs> I'm taking like this. Sir, 10 comma, 10 comma, 20 I am taking, sir. 10 comma, 20. Sir, rule 1, if the first argument is the string, if the first argument is the string, then the second argument you can't pass. Okay, that's why, okay. Now the first argument is not string. First argument is not string. Can you please tell, is it acceptable or not? No, no. Second argument should not be string for the complex function. Second argument should not be string for the complex function. Remember that, sir. Have a look once. I am trying to take, I am trying to take complex of 10 comma 20 I am taking, sir. Sir, first argument, first argument, number okay, number okay. But second argument I am taking string, sir. What will happen? Type error, complex second argument can't be a string. Complex second argument can't be a string. That's what, what you should aware. Okay? But anyway, all these internal things, don't worry about that, sir. General idea you should aware. If you pass one argument, that argument will become real number, real part. And the imaginary part is always zero, remember. If you are passing two arguments, first argument will become what? The first argument will become real part. Second argument will become imaginary part. Okay? This is the way how to convert from other types to complex type. Clear for all of you, right? With multiple examples. Now I hope you are getting some idea. Okay? Well.
sir up to this it is very clear how to use int function next float function and a complex function now how to use bool function just aware sir i have one int value is there sir or i have float value is there or we have okay string value is there or complex number is there sir all these things i want to convert into boolean type are getting i want to convert into boolean type for that purpose we have to use bool function okay to convert sir the given number to boolean type for that we should go for bool bool function right sir now how you can use this bool function what are the rules are there if the argument is the int type float type complex type next the string type what rules are there sir take very special care about this one sir bool int argument int int argument sir if i pass int argument bool of sir 10 i'm taking can you please tell what the answer very simple very simple sir if the argument is a zero remember if the argument value is a zero zero then false non zero means a true sir okay please make sure whether it is the int type float type complex type everywhere this rule is always same sir if the argument is a zero then it's always treated as a false otherwise it is treated as the sir true sir now bool of 10 10 is not zero that's why what value we are going to get sir true next the bool of bool of sir here just i'm taking zero sir oh zero man zero zero argument zero argument means what false we are going to get remember this one false so non zero means true zero means a false let me cross check have a look once sir here i'm taking bool here i'm taking bool of 10 10 the answer is the true sir bool of 0 0 false sir bool of minus 10 yes whether it is the positive number or negative number man is it 0 or not not 0 that's why true is the answer we are going to get clear right if you pass int argument how the bool function is going to behave okay well sir same way if i pass float 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 arguments rule is always the same not required to keep any explanation if the float value is zero treated as the false non zero treated as the true sir okay i'm taking bool of 0, 0.0 float value 0, 0.0 0, 0.0 is always what time float zero zero only its value is the zero that's why what is the answer false is the answer sir bool of 0.1 sir <laughs> 0 0.1 0 0.1 is it 0 or non zero non zero even it is a very small value also but non zero that's why we are going to get true as the answer clear right any explanation is required let me check this possibility also sir bool of here one minute one minute here observe this bool of bool of 0, 0.0 total value is evaluates to 0 that's why it is the false false is the answer bool of 0. 0.0001 sir <laughs> very small value but it's not 0 but it's not 0 that's why true itself is the answer bool of minus 0. 0.0000001 i am taking sir still it is the true only because it's not 0 so it is not zero that's why it is the true so clear right if the total value evaluates to zero then it's always false non-zero it is always a true sir okay like sir next uh, complex argument complex number argument right complex argument if you pass uh, sir simple both the real part and the imaginary part both are zero real part and the imaginary part both are zero then it is considered as false otherwise it is treated as the sir true sir very simple bool of zero plus zero j zero plus zero j zero plus zero j what is the answer we are going to get sir false false because real part is the zero imaginary part is the zero sir except this if for non-zero 
sir bool of 1 plus 0 j then automatically true is the answer we are going to get 1 plus 0 j true is the answer sir if both the real part and imaginary part both are zero then only false sir. otherwise it is the true let me cross check sir here have a look once about this one bool of 0 plus 0 j false is the answer false false itself is the answer sir bool of 1 plus 0 j 1 plus 0 j true itself is the answer so both real part and the imaginary part both are zero then only bool function is going to return false otherwise bool function is always going to return so true sir okay well sir next fourth fourth argument sir very important fourth argument observe carefully here if it is the string argument sir a bit dangerous man take special care a bit dangerous take special care yes here argument right what is the str str argument sir very simple how the bool function is going to be here if the string sir let me let, let me check here right can you please tell bool of true i am taking sir bool of false i am taking bool of yes i am taking bool of no i am taking no i am taking bool of empty empty string i am taking have you observed in the first case what is the answer true true second case <coughs> was string internally contain false only string internally contain false only what is the answer we are going to get okay uh, most dangerous point several times we are going to use in the next classes also take a bit very special care what the point is what what that point is if the argument is empty string if the argument is empty string then only consider the false if the argument is empty string then it is considered the false if it is not empty if it is not empty it may contain true or false or durga or yes or no in all cases we are going to get true as the answer remember this one even bool of false also it will become true only if the argument if the string argument is empty string then it is treated as the false sir if it is not empty if it is not empty then it is considered as the true right any doubt about this one let me cross check here okay sir very simple bool of bool bool of true i'm taking what is the answer sir true true sir okay bool of false i'm taking still the answer is the true only still the answer is the true bool of yes i'm taking yes still it is the true bool of false no no i'm taking still it is the true only okay bool of just a empty string See, quotes open quotes close empty empty string sir empty string what is the answer false is the answer if the string is empty then it is the false in all other cases it is treated as the true only i hope is the clear for all of you right so how the bool function is going to behave very simple sir if it is the int argument float argument complex argument complex number argument if the total value is zero treated as the false if it is not zero treated as the true sir okay well next uh, in the case of string argument if the string argument is empty string then it is a false uh, otherwise it is treated as the true sir clear right how to use bool function sir up to this we covered very clearly how to use int function float function complex function and a bool function now the next one sir str function what is the purpose of str function if you have int value or float value or complex value or bool value if you want to convert this one to string type then we require to go for str function so from other types to string type if you want to convert then we require to go for str function right but uh, take a bit very special care about this str function nothing no big rules are there any conversion is always acceptable man okay no restrictions no internal loopholes are there okay here observe str of 10 now i will get a 10 sir convert this 10 
like a 10 s t r of 0 p 1 1 1 1 0 b 1 1 1 1 into, into argument I'm passing but this into argument you are providing in which form binary form but output is always going to come in decimal form only remember that it's always going to provide in decimal form only have a look once observe carefully right here just uh, I'm taking s t r of 10 sir s t r of 10 10 is the answer s t r of 0 sorry 0 b 0 b 1 1 1 1 like this i'm taking still it is treated as the 15 right okay same way the remaining cases also s t r of 10.5 now it will become 10.5 s t r of okay 10 plus 20 j now it will become 10 plus 20 j in string form okay str of true sir it will become true in string style str of false now it will become false in string style like so no no rules internal loopholes any type to string type happily we can convert no restrictions right okay have a look once the remaining also str of str of 10 str of 10.5 10.5 yes converting into string str of 10 plus 20 j okay have you observed right 10 plus 20 j str of true i'm taking sir true itself str of false i'm taking sir then obviously false we are going to get okay clear right so how to convert uh, other types to string type this is about string uh, this is the how to use a str function right that's all it's the very clear how you can perform type casting by using these python's inbuilt type casting functions clear right Sir, in the last videos, we covered very clearly how to perform typecasting with examples. All the five typecasting functions I explained. Let me explain again with respect to the summary so that you people will get much clarity. Observe that, sir. The first typecasting function, what I explained is int. Okay, total how many functions are available? Five functions are there. Like the first one I explained, int, sir. So, int function for the int argument no problem sir into to int uh, really type casting is not required anyway table sake i took it is possible int uh, to float sir if you are passing float argument to the int function so something like int of 10.5 what will happen it's very clear the digits after the decimal point by default will be gone 10 is the answer we are going to get acceptable Next, uh, for the int function, if you pass complex argument, complex number as the argument, immediately type error we are going to get. The reason for that is, so you can't convert complex number to int type. Remember that. Next, uh, bool argument, if you are passing, so for the int, int of true, true means uh, one we are going to get, int of false means uh, zero we will get you know that internally true and false are treated as zero and one that's why right okay well next uh, string argument sir very important if you are passing string argument to the int function compulsory string argument should contain int value only and should be specified only in the base 10 so internally contains contains only int value only int value and base 10 this is a very important sir by mistake string argument internally contain binary form hexadecimal form octal form immediately we are going to get value error okay sir please make make sure sir if you want if you are passing string argument if you are trying to convert string to int value string should compulsory contain internally integral number and should be in base 10 okay conversion is possible but this rule you have to aware sir what is the second one float function sir so 
can I convert into to float? Yes, why not? Happily you can do that. Float of 10, if you are taking 10.0 is the answer. Yes, float int argument, int argument, you can pass to the float. Now the corresponding float value you will get. Next, uh, float argument, float. Of course, possible, not required to use type casting function, it is already float. Next, uh, complex number, I want to convert to the float type by using float function. I want to convert complex number to float type. Sorry man, complex to float conversion, not possible. If you are trying to do that, type error we are going to get. Next, uh, bool to float, boolean argument to float. Yes, why not man? Okay, float of true if you are taking g 1.0 we are going to get because true means 1 but I want float value 1.0. Similarly, float of false if I can take 0.0 .0 we will get no problem at all. So, boolean to boolean to float conversion is always possible. Next, uh, what about str? str argument sir. sir str2 float conversion is always possible but internally internally str should contain either int value or float value and the compulsory we should use a base at 10 have you remembered right either int value or float value compulsory we should use base 10 by mistake if you are trying to use any other base immediately error we are going to get sir value error we will get okay that's all this is the behavior of float function right sir what about complex i want to convert int argument to complex okay there are two complex functions are available one argument two argument if you are passing one argument it will become it will become which types are if you are passing one argument it will become which which one real part if you are passing two arguments it will become both real and imaginary Sir, I am taking complex of 10, 10 sir, then 10 plus 0 j will come, 10 plus 0 j will come sir, if I am taking complex of 10 comma 20 I am taking sir, 10 will become, 10 will become real number, 20 will become imaginary number, 10 plus 20 j we are going to get okay remember so int argument if you want to convert int value to complex possible man don't get confused int number to complex type possible but complex number to int type not possible complex number to flow type not possible remember don't get confused clearly sir so complex number if you want to convert to int type flow type not possible but int number if you want to convert to complex possible don't get confused okay well what about float sir same rule if you are passing one argument it will become real part if you are passing two argument it will become if you are passing two argument it will become what the complex are getting both the real part and imaginary part same rule next the complex to complex anyway always possible always always right so bool argument if you pass bool argument to true true sir it will become only one argument it will become what the real part of course its internal value one will be considered if it is a true if it is a false zero will be considered yes possible even i explain with example string argument sir yes please make sure so you if you want to pass a string argument to the complex function two rules i covered okay two rules i covered if the first argument is the string, if the first argument is the string, second argument you should not pass. So if you are passing string value, it will become real value. Then imaginary number is always a zero. Next up for the second argument, string value you can't pass. Okay? With those restrictions, you can pass a string value, no problem at all. Next up, bool function, sir. So if you are passing int, int value, sir, very simple. If the int value is 0, it will consider as false, non-zero, it is considered as a true, yes, int to bool, possible. Next, float is also, if the value is 0, 0, it will become false, non-zero, it will become true, sir. Next, complex number, so real part and imaginary part both are 0, 0 plus 0, j, it is the false, in all other cases, it is the true, sir. Next, bool argument, bool, bool to bool, no problem at all. Next, the string argument, sir. 
if the string is empty if the string is empty then empty string then it is false non empty it is always a true sir remember this one very very important point if the string argument is empty string then it is always considered as false non empty string it is always considered as true sir next uh, str you can convert any type to str no problem at all are you getting this is the small summary what you people should be aware about type casting functions maybe so this having idea is always recommended but complex numbers uh, we are not required to worry that much because we are not going to use that much frequently in our coding but having awareness is always recommended right sir clear for all of you right if any person is asking about python type casting functions can you please explain with an example then you should be in a position to give left and right clear right hi friends in the last videos we covered very clearly what are various fundamental data types how to convert the one type to another type what are various type casting functions all these things right now the next very important concept subject wise concept wise you people should aware very clearly these topics are what is the topic is fundamental data types versus immutability are getting what is this word what is this word can you please spell out immutability fundamental data types versus immutability this topic we have to discuss right so first i have one small question which are fundamental data types can you can you spell out which are fundamental fundamental data types fundamental data types are int float int float complex complex bool bool and then str these are fundamental data types we covered in detail in the last videos right sir so next what is the meaning of immutable are you getting what is the meaning of immutable immutability sir anyone can you please tell Norm, normal dictionary meaning forget about uh, python programming so what is the meaning of immutable mutable mutable immutable like sir very simple mutable means uh, changeable you can change you can change immutable means uh, non changeable are you getting what is the what is the meaning of mutable can you please spell out very important word mutable means uh, changeable are you getting happily you can change you can change changeable is mutable sir immutable means uh, immutable means uh, means uh, non changeable immutable means uh, non non changeable you can't perform any changes such a type of thing is called immutable okay like now i want to conclude the most valuable very important points are all fundamental data types are all fundamental data types are immutable immutable non changeable sir what it means what what is the meaning of immutability sir once uh, we create an object once uh, we creates once we creates an object an object we can't perform we can't we can't perform any changes in that object very important sir why i am writing especially this one is you should this point should inject in your mind once uh, we creates an object we can't perform any changes we can't perform any changes in that object in that object if we are trying to perform any changes with those changes a new object will be created if if we are trying to perform if we are trying to perform any changes if we are trying to perform any any changes any changes with those changes a new object will be created sir with those changes a new object a new object will be created are getting with those changes a new object will be created right okay this non changeable nature 
these are nothing but immutability concept are you getting that so what is the meaning of immutable sir once uh, we create an object we can't perform any changes in that object if you are trying to perform any changes with those changes a new object will be created this uh, non changeable behavior is nothing but what immutability any doubt about this one sir okay theory okay sir immutable means non changeable can you explain with an example how fundamental data types are immutable okay just uh, observe a bit very very carefully about this one sir here i'm taking sir x is equal to 10 i'm taking sir do you know x is equal to 10 can you please represent this one with the diagrammatic representation yes friends sir everything in python is an object everything in python is an object we covered already in the last session so do you know sir now now x is the reference variable 10 is the object okay well sir now what i'm trying to take is do you know for every object address is there address address is there how to print address of an object id id function we require to use now let me print print id of x sir okay some value you are going to get okay well now i'm trying to take x is equal to x plus one observe carefully sir x is equal to x plus one i'm trying to change the content of x adding one can you please tell because of this change what will happen yes friends because of this change what will happen x is equal to x plus one what will happen so don't feel this 10 will be replaced with 11 no no this is not the thing which is going to be happen sir once we create sir, an object an object we can't perform any changes in that object if you are trying to perform any changes with those changes a new object by default will be created remember this one so because of x is equal to x plus one what will happen is with the 11 with the 11 a new object will be created sir with the 11 a new object will be created now onwards x is point into this reference variable now onwards x is point into this reference variable now this object not having any reference variable that's why eligible for garbage collection eligible for garbage collection sir inside python virtual mission there is one component is there if any object not having any reference huh, such a type of useless objects will be destroyed by garbage collector now this object eligible for garbage collection right sir now earlier x is pointing to this object but now x is pointing to this object where is the proof for that are you getting print of id of x okay if really any object got created then how many objects will be there can you please spell out how many objects will be there sir two objects will be there so address of first object address of second object both are different if for really two objects are going to come yes clear man you can't perform any changes in this object with those changes any object got created we can we can we proved practically right let me execute this code have a look once sir i'm taking x is equal to 10 sir i'm taking x x is equal to 10 10 i'm taking sir x is equal to 10 now print of id of x sir print of id of x okay just observe up to this line sir py okay py test dot py have you observed this is the this is the address because for every object address will be there sir okay well now x is equal to x plus 1 i'm taking sir x is equal to x plus 1 print of id of x i'm taking sir print of id of x sir if really new object is going to be created because of this x is equal to x plus 1 if really a new object is going to be created compulsory the address of this object the address of this object both are different have a look once now now here it's a very clear for you people now both addresses are same or different can you please observe here 544 but here we have 560 there is a clear difference there between between these two things so two objects got created right yes practical proof okay so once we create an object 
we can't perform any changes in that object if you are trying to perform any changes with those changes a new object will be created this non changeable behavior is nothing but immutability concept have you have you observed right so once we create an object we can't perform any changes in that object if you are trying to perform any changes with those changes any object will be created this non changeable behavior is nothing but immutability object that immutability concept sir now it's a very clear for you people yes i created an object x is the 10 so whenever i'm trying to perform some change in the existing object changes won't be there compulsory any object got created practical proof clear for all of right now in the object is it immutable or mutable respond friends in the object is it immutable or mutable immutable correct right sir let me go for one more small example so that you will get much clarity right have a have a look once one more one more example so with the uh, a bit a bit uh, sir more more explanation will be there observe i'm taking x is equal to 10 sir x is equal to 10 so now do you know here x is point into 10 perfect now i'm taking y is equal to y is equal to sir x i'm taking if i can take y is equal to x what it means is y is also point into same object y is also point into same object if you want uh, sir for practical proof if you want you can print address of x and address of y now i'm trying to print address of x address of x print of address of y perfect in both cases compulsory same answer we have to get because how many objects are there only one object okay well now i'm taking observe very carefully sir very dangerous point now i'm trying to take y is equal to y is equal to x plus 1 or y plus 1 no problem any variable you can take y is equal to y plus 1 y is equal to y plus 1 can you please tell i'm trying to increment the value of tensor so if you are trying to perform any change any change with those changes compulsory new object will be created in the existing object okay no changes right a new object got created this new object pointed referred by y that's why now onwards y is point into this object right can you please confirm total how many objects are there respond why you are silent total how many objects are there two objects first object and second object right so x is point into this one y is point into this new object sir if you want to print the value of x 10 print the value of y 11 and print address of x and address of y both are different remember so if i print print x value 10 is the answer if i print y value 11 is the answer if i print address of x id of x id of x print id of y compulsory both are different compulsory both are different because if you are trying to perform any changes a new object got created right now i have one question so total how many objects are there two objects how many objects eligible for garbage collection are you respond how many objects eligible for garbage collection no because this object happily you can use by using x this object happily we can use by using y that's why no object zero number of objects eligible for garbage collection clear right let me execute this one also so that you will get much clarity observe carefully sir here i'm taking id here x is equal to 10 sir y is equal to x okay print of print of id of x print of id of x print of id of y i am taking sir if i consider like this if i consider like what is the answer we are getting have you objects are there only one object man only one object 10 is the reference variable both the x and y pointing to same object only this is the thing which is going to be happen that's why same address we are going to get now my question is y is equal to y plus 1 y is equal to y plus 1 now with this change a new object will be created sir now print x value 
print the y value sir what is the value of x 10 but what is the value of y 11 11 like this right sir now abjan so value of x is a 10 value of y is 11 sir let me print the idea of x print of idea of x print of idea of y print of idea of y sir i'm sure in both cases in both cases different objects are there that's why different addresses we have to get last two addresses observe that sir yes last two addresses okay these are the two addresses right at the beginning both are pointing to the same address but now both are not pointing to the same object sir this is the old object only x but y point into new object that's what what you people should be very clearly right so from the these two examples you are getting much clarity what is the meaning of immutability once uh, we create an object we can't perform any changes in that object have you observed right once we create an object we can't perform any changes in that object if we are trying to perform any changes with those changes a new object will be created this non-changeable behavior non-changeable behavior is nothing but what immutability any doubt? Up to this is the clear? Sir, in the last video, we covered very clearly what is the meaning of immutability with examples, right? Sir, now the next thing my requirement is. Sir, why immutability concept is required? Okay, in Python, why this immutability concept is required? Just observe a bit very carefully, sir. I am taking A is equal to 10. A is equal to 10. B is equal to 10. C is equal to 10. Do you know who is responsible to create object in Python? Python virtual machine. Python interpreter is the responsible to create object virtual machine, right? Sir, now in this case, total, how many objects will be created? <laughs> Can you please confirm? Total, how many, how many objects will be created in this case? Yes? Total, how many objects? Three objects. Are you getting? Because it is the different line, it is the different line, it is the different line. That's why total, how many objects got created? Three objects got created. No, no, our Python virtual mission is a bit intelligent person. Are you getting what it's going to do? Yes, A is equal to 10. Listen very carefully about this one, sir. Sir, A is, yes, refers to this object. A is equal to 10. Okay. Now my point is, sir, B is equal to 10. In Python, if an object is required to create, a, an object, Python virtual mission is required to create an object, blindly it won't create an object first python virtual mission what it will do pvm what it will do yes for the required content at 10 is an object already available or not are you getting for the object already available or not so python virtual mission will check if an object already available it is always going to use existing object only remember that it's always going to use what existing object only instead of creating new object sir object reusability so if a python virtual machine required to create an object it won't create that object immediately first it will check is any object already there with the required content or not if an object already there with the required content, then what it will do is it will reuse existing object only. It is not going to create new object. So B is equal to 10. 10 is already there. Now B is also pointing to that object. Remember that. It's a, it's a point into that. Similarly, C is equal to 10. Okay. C is also pointing to that object. A, B, C. So total, how many objects are there? Uh, respond how many objects are there only one object but how many reference variables are there three reference variable pointing to same object three reference variables pointing to same object object reusability man okay where is the proof for that very simple print a print of id of a print of id of b b print of id 
of C, sir. Are you going to print up idea of A, idea of B, idea of C? What is the answer we are going to get, sir? Just observe carefully. Have a look once. Here I am taking, here I am taking A is equal to 10, B is equal to 10, C is equal to 10. Okay, print of ID of A, ID of B, print of ID of A, ID of B, ID of C, sir. If I can take like this, what output by default we are going to get, sir? Sir, can you please expect, is it the same answer or not? Yes, means that how many objects got created, sir? Only one object got created, so three reference variables point into the same object. Are you able to understand? So what is the advantage? What is the biggest advantage here? Instead of creating three objects, we are creating only one object and we are reusing the same object. The biggest advantage here, what we are going to get is memory utilization will be improved. Memory utilization will be improved. Memory, memory saved, sir. Memory usage of memory, memory saved. Second advantage is do you know creating an object is a costly operation in any programming language creating an object is a very costly operation we are not required to create three objects one object is enough means uh, automatically performance also will be improved automatically performance also will be improved sir this is the advantage okay clear right don't feel only for the int for the remaining cases also happily it is applicable observe this a is equal to sir 100.234 what is this one please confirm what is this one it is the float float value now b is equal to sir 1000.234 i'm taking can you please imagine how many float objects will be created how many float objects will be created only one object and uh, reuse uh, same object are you getting only one object and reuse same object for both requirements right okay well now print of print of how how you proved in the last example ah, what is the approach we followed sir address of id id of a id of b if addresses are same both are pointed to the same so not required to compare addresses there is one small shortcut is there if you want to check whether a and b both are pointing into the same object or not how to check is is operator is there what is that operator is a is a b okay in 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 the operators i will explain in detail don't worry a is a b when it returns a true if both are point into the same object if both the references point into the same object then only it returns a true remember that sir now a is a b or not a is b or not yes perfect yes both are pointed to the same object only true itself is answer we have to get sir remember this sir where is the proof for that have a look once sir observe carefully here i am taking a is equal to 1000.234 b is equal to 1000.234 like this i am taking print of a is b like this i am taking are you getting print of a is b b like this i am taking sir can you please observe that what is the answer we are going to get true true means uh, both are point into the same object only so reusing object this story not only for int for the float also it is applicable let me cross check for boolean case a is equal to true i am taking sir what the value true true b is equal to true i am taking a is equal to true b is equal to true print of a is a b a is a b like this right sir what will happen in this case is a is the true sir true itself is an object only in python a is pointed to that b is a true b is also pointed to the b both are pointed to the same object or not what the answer we are going to get true itself is the answer okay let me cross check here see see this one sir a of course is equal to is equal to true i'm taking b is equal to true i'm trying to take okay print of 
a b okay what is the answer sir true only we are going to get a is b a and b both are pointed to the same object that's why what answer we are going to get sir true itself is the answer so even for boolean case also this rule is applicable let me consider what about string what about string case let me consider sir a is equal to durga soft a is equal to durga soft b is equal to durga soft getting a is equal to durga soft b is equal to durga soft print a print a a is b are getting print of a is b like this i'm telling first it will check is there any object already available with the required content or not if an object already available with the required content then existing object will be reused clear right if if existing object is not there sir no existing object then only a new object will be created this behavior is nothing but i mean this is what the advantage of this object this approach memory utilization performance will be improved sir everyone can able to understand what the advantage like sir here you may ask something sir reusing existing object performance will be improved you are telling sir but uh, whenever we are creating an object every time my python virtual machine will search whether this object is already available or not so search operation so performance effect may be may be there search operation it has to do performance performance effect may be there so after searching if it is identified no object is available then it has to create what new object create operation do you know so search operation create operation time complexity is search operation is a very easy job but create operation is a very difficult that's why even it is going to perform search no performance issues because create operation is more costly than search operation right one student asked the doubt sir you are telling so before creating an object python virtual machine is always going to search is this object is already available or not is it performance issue or not yes definitely performance issue but search operation so how much time it is going to take create operation how much time it is going to take search operation will take very less time when compared with create operation that's why so search if operation so if you are going to use instead of create obviously performance is going to be improved because it is the most costly operation clear for all of you right okay well next uh, sir now that's all this is what we have right now may be a chance so what advantage we are going to get because of this object reusability can you please tell object reusability what advantage memory utilization performance both will be improved because of this approach but what the problem but what problem is there in this approach because if you want something you should miss something for every advantage okay compulsory there should be some problem is there so what problem in this approach that part i will show in the big picture so that you people can get much clarity up to this is the clear right so now i want to show the same concept in the big picture observe that i want to develop one water registration application what is this one sir can you please spell out water registration application i want to i want to i want to develop sir water registration application in the water registration application do you know which fields are there end the user water is required to fill which fields observe carefully sir name name compulsory required father name okay required next mother name these days in india okay everywhere mother name also should be specified compulsory right next address address because voter id acts as address proof also okay like uh, sir house number house number next uh, street street uh, next uh, city or village next uh, district district and uh, then state uh, okay like uh, pin number pin number at last uh, submit button like we are going to take of course multiple fields will be there next here we require to upload our photo also assume that sir okay this is a small water registration application i'm trying to do that now take a bit very special care for every user 
name must be required father name must be required mother name must be required address all these things must be required sir now within hyderabad assume that sir india telangana hyderabad within hyderabad assume one crore water sir available how many how many water sir right one crore one crore water sir available right assume now do you know for all these one crore water sir sir what is the city name hyderabad only correct or not for all one crore water sir what is the city name hyderabad only right now first water came now observe carefully sir first water came was my city is hyderabad sir immediately hyderabad hyderabad object got created so which is referred by v1.city okay hyderabad like now second water came sir my city is also hyderabad if a second water city is also hyderabad can you please tell is it required to create new object no no directly for second water also same object will be reused okay v3 person is coming for that also same object will be reused now one crore water sir who are belongs to hyderabad for all these people sir what is the city name hyderabad only right now the point observe carefully sir sir we have we can create one crore hyderabad objects and we can use or we can create only one object and we can reuse that object with the one crore references which approach is always recommended obviously this approach have you observed right one crore objects we require to create how much memory is required how much performance performance issue like are you are not required to create one crore objects only one object is enough reuse the same object with the one crore references the biggest advantage okay is memory utilization performance improvements right how beautiful this concept how the python internal memory management model yep beautiful concept man but python virtual machine is a very much intelligent uh, sir with respect to the memory utilization with respect to the performance clear for all of you right in the big picture we are not creating one crore hyderabad objects we are creating only one hyderabad object and we are reusing one crore with one crore references okay well so memory utilization performance improvements are there okay well just now i told for every advantage you are getting some problem also you are going to there is some disadvantage is also there there are some limitations are there what is the problem in this approach is yes? now take very special care sir so now after some time v3 person is coming boss my city name got changed now i got transferred from hyderabad to vijayawada like someone is telling sir then he is trying to change the content assume that if he is trying to change the content here instead of hyderabad sir vijayawada assume that sir he change to vijayawada then the problem here is so is this change will be reflected for all one crore people or not yes sir after some time v2 person is coming ah my city not vijayawada my city is a mumbai like sir forget about the memory advantage performance advantage now the program is going to be here abnormally in the morning time in the system i check kada my city is hyderabad only after after half an hour i check kada my city suddenly change to vijayawada i never changed but evening whenever i check kada my city became mumbai so instead of memory advantage performance advantage abnormal behavior is there program is going to behave abnormally so because if one person is trying to change the content all the one crore people are going to be affected correct or not so to prevent this problem immutability is required so in python this is not the thing which is going to be happen hyderabad is always fixed hyderabad only okay because multiple references using the same so if any person trying to change the content observe carefully sir once we create string object we can't perform any changes in that object the content is always fixed the content is always final if any person trying to change the content sir v3 person i want to change from hyderabad to vijayawada sir now a new object will be created vja vijayawada only this particular v3 is going to be referred to this new object are getting only v3 referred to new object so that there is no effect on the remaining references
Are you getting right? So, if this approach is not there, new object approach is not there, for every small change, all 1 crore people are affected. To prevent this uh, sir, effect, uh, for every change, a new object will be created, which is nothing but immutable, so that there is no effect uh, on the existing references. Are you able to understand, right? Once we create an object, we can't perform any changes. If you are trying to perform any changes, with that a new object will be created. Immutability concept. Why this immutability concept is required? Because of object reusability. A single object reuser with multiple references. By using one reference, if any person is going to change existing content, then all the remaining people are going to be affected. To prevent this one, compulsory immutability concept is required. Is it clear, right? So why Python fundamental data types are immutable? Because of this object reusability. Because to get the memory advantage, performance advantage, we have to compromise. We have to do this type of extra arrangement, which is nothing but what? Immutability. Everyone can able to understand, right? So why immutability concept is required in Python? Yes, happily you can explain with this example. So what the advantage of object reusability what the problem with object reusability the problem with object reusability is we required immutability concept any doubt at all clear for all of you right now take a bit very special care up to this sir now take very special care all fundamental data types are immutable okay so like uh, int float complex int float complex next uh, bool and uh, then str all these uh, things are immutable don't worry sir everything is immutable okay like but uh, object reusability concept applicable only for int type int type flow type, bool type, str type. So for complex type, object reusability concept is not applicable. Maybe internally, the way of representation is the different maybe at memory level. So here, object reusability is not there, but it is immutable. Remember that. Sir, now where is the proof for that? Yes, if you consider a is equal to 10, b is equal to 10, print a, a is b. True is the answer. True is the answer. Because for int, always it is going to use existing object only. Next, A is equal to 10.5. B is equal to 10.5. Okay. Print A. A is B. Okay. In the case of float also, we are always going to get uh, existing object. We are always going to use or reuse existing object only. True, sir. Sir, now A is equal to a is equal to true b is equal to true print r a is a b yes a is b what the answer sir true yes we covered we executed already all these things right next a is equal to durga a is equal to durga b is equal to durga durga print r a is b what answer sir true is the answer okay well so object reusing this capability available for int available for float bool and then string type but not applicable for complex type where is the proof for that now observe a is equal to 10 plus 20 j a is equal to 10 plus 20 j b is equal to 10 plus 20 j are you getting so in this case even content is the same compulsory a new object will be created in the case of complex numbers now observe print of a is b in this case false is the answer we have to get are you getting right so only object reusability concept not applicable for complex numbers except complex for the remaining data types it's always applicable man in the fundamental types but complex is immutable immutability is the common property sir all are immutable but reusing the object is not there for complex numbers maybe internal memory representation the way of representation may be different because of some internal reason but anyway we are not going to use complex numbers that much frequently don't worry about that let me show up to this right observe carefully here 
a is equal to 10 b is equal to 10 print of a is a is a b i'm taking sir what answer we are going to get true itself is the answer now 10.5 b is a 10.5 a is a b i'm taking what the answer true true itself is the answer sir next a is a false i'm taking okay need not be true sir false i'm taking sir b is also false sir, sir both the false object false object means only one object will be there internally sir true itself is the answer next a is equal to durga b is equal to durga like this right a is b what the answer true itself is the answer but what about complex number but what about complex numbers 10 plus 20 j 10 plus 20 j even the content is the same but the answer we are going to get what false is the answer sir okay well so object reusability concept applicable for all fundamental types except the complex but all fundamental types including com complex are immutable right next here one small clarity i have to provide so we can execute python program python script i wrote some script and i'm trying to execute it is the standard way sir do you know we can execute from python ideal id ideally sir python ideal ideal console also you can execute sir or simply python console also you can execute sir remember python console okay python console ideal these things are repl tools are getting what is this one sir repl repl tools repl means uh, read evolve print read evolve print under loop again repeat the same process repl tools these things are not standard not standard ides are not standard editors to develop the programs so these are just to test the small small coding snippets we are going to use this but this may show different behavior don't worry sir if you are going to use your ides atom ide pycharm ide or spider or otherwise standard whatever approach i'm using all these cases our discussion in the valley but in the case of idle python console these are just a small repl tools uh, to execute small small coding snippets here you may get a different uh, results don't worry about that sir observe that how you can conclude have a look once sir i'm taking a is equal to thousand <laughs> have you observe very carefully sir a is equal to thousand b is equal to thousand a is b so standard approach i'm taking can you please tell what the answer we have to get true true itself is the answer sir true is the answer we are getting but the same thing i can ask uh, in the ideally okay so python python ideally let me launch it sir okay the same question i'm asking this is the python python ideally a is equal to thousand b is equal to thousand a is a b or not what the answer we are getting are you are you seeing the answer right so the answer in the python id lg is a false we are going to get so don't worry about that it is not standard okay it is not a standard same way a is equal to 10 b is equal to 10 a is a b i'm taking sir now you are getting true now you are getting true sir so it means uh, this id la is going to reuse the existing object up to certain range only i hope that the range is i hope i hope that the range the range is uh, 0 to 256 the range in the case of int uh, 0 to 256 only in this uh, maybe id id la id la tool or console sir python console like uh, it is uh, within this range only but in the case of float observe the behavior two worst a is equal to 10.5 b is equal to 10.5 i'm taking sir a is the 10.5 b is the 10.5 a is b we have to get a true sir because in the case of float also we will have reusing but here false we are going to get means this is not standard don't worry about that next similarly python console also just now i showed right python console py i'm taking sir a is equal to 10.5 b is equal to 10.5 like i'm taking a is b or not false we are going to get sir a is equal to thousand i'm taking b is equal to thousand i'm taking a is b yes false we are going to get so don't worry about console python console and the python ideal it may show different results but these are not standard sir whatever approach we are following is a standard if you want you can execute in the pycharm same results we are going to get 
clear for all of friend now up to this any doubt what is the meaning of immutability okay like sir by this time you people got very clearly what is about immutability why this immutability concept is required up to that clear now some students may ask sir immutability okay can you please show at least one example about mutability also so that we will get complete picture like you may ask sir very simple example what i have to discuss observe carefully sir here you know after completing our fundamental data types the next level advanced data types we have to discuss list concept tuple concept like there you will get much clarity but a bit advanced let me show one small example to get basic idea do you know a a is equal to 10 sir how many values here represent only one value 10 10 but uh, if i can consider list sir list list uh, how many values a list can represent multiple values are you getting how many values a list can represent multiple multiple values a group of values represented by list how you can access uh, these elements uh, by using index index python is always zero index based remember l of zero its value is the 10 l of one its value is the 20 okay like this basic idea sir list means a group of objects uh, we can access each element by using index that's all but anyway in the next video we will discuss list data structure in detail don't worry sir sir now my question is all fundamental data types are immutable immutable once we create an object we can't perform any changes if you are trying to perform any change compulsory a new object will be created you know right okay sir here i'm taking x is equal to 10 x is equal to x plus 1 like can you please tell what will happen x is a 10 10 x is equal to x plus 1 means uh, a new object will be created now onwards x is point into this one we discussed already it is immutable but list is mutable list is mutable object in the existing object only you can perform any changes no problem at all sir what it means uh, observe carefully right sir here l is equal to 10 20 30 is there sir observe very carefully l is equal to 10 20 30 is there okay 10 20 30 this is the this is the list what we have l is the reference variable for that okay well now i'm trying to print l sir what is the what is the address of l okay id of l id of l some address you are going to get now l of 0 is equal to double seven double seven like i'm taking sir now i'm trying to change the content of this list if the list is mutable obviously in the existing object only we require to perform changes correct right so l of 0 is equal to double seven double seven means uh, now this one replaced with the double seven double seven in the existing object only remember this one so once we create list object you can perform any changes in the existing object this is changeable behavior is nothing but mutability concept okay well list is mutable where is the proof now print address print address are print of id of l after modification address before modification address both the things are same because modification happen in the same object only if you want you can print l value modified value by default we are going to get sir uh, 20 30 like uh, modified value we are going to get so means the clear practical proof so all changes are happened in the existing object only but not in the new object where is the proof let me execute this code observe carefully sir here i'm taking here one minute here i'm taking l l is equal to l is equal to 10 comma l is equal to 10 comma 20 comma 30 sir print of id of l print of id of l and the print l sir i'm trying to print content of l and its address also okay let me execute up to this yes content is 10 20 30 address is this is the address right okay well now my question is 
L of 0 is equal to double seven double seven. I am taking L of 0 is equal to double seven double seven. Print of ID of print of L L sir after modification what is the result next id of l id of l okay like so before modification what is the l and the address after modification what is the l and the, what is the list content and the address of l now observe now observe sir am i getting modified content but address is not changed but address is not changed meaning that meaning that so all changes will be performed in existing object only this behavior this is changeable behavior is nothing but mutability concept is it clear for all of you right so can you please explain with an example what is the meaning of mutability best example let me go for one more small chota example right have observed carefully right one more example to prove again here i'm taking l1 is equal to 10 20 30 40 like i'm taking sir l1 is equal to 10 20 30 40 now sir this is the list we created 10 20 30 40 l1 is the reference variable okay well l2 is equal to l1 what is the meaning of this one l2 is equal to l1 means l2 is also pointing to l1 only l2 is also pointing to l1 now now what i want to do how many list objects are there one but how many references are there two reference variable both reference variable point into the same object sir if any person trying to change the content all those changes will be performed in the existing object only so by using l1 if i perform some change those changes will be reflected to l2 also because both are pointed to the same object in the existing object only modifications are performing okay now sir print of l1 print of l2 sir in both cases we are going to get 10 20 30 40 only okay well now l1 of 0 is equal to double seven double seven L1 of 0 is equal to double seven double seven. I am taking. Where will be performed, sir? L1 of 0 means uh, double seven double seven like. Then will be replaced, uh, In the same object, now the change will be reflected to L2 also. Now let me print again. Print of L1. Print of L2. What is the output we are going to get in both cases, sir? Do you know? First element replaced with double seven, double seven, twenty, thirty, forty. So by using L1, if you perform any change, that the change will be reflected to L2 because both are pointing to the same object. In the existing object only, content will be modified. Sir, with those changes, a new object created? No, no. In the existing object only, modification performed. This is changeable behavior is the mutable. Observe carefully. Sir, now L2 of 1. This time, I'm trying to change by using L2. L2 of 1 means 20, sir. Is a replacer with double eight double eight. L2 L2 of is replaced with double eight double two. What double eight double eight? What it means is this one replacer with the double eight double eight line. So this change will be reflected for L1 or not? Yes, because both are pointed the same in the existing object only. All changes are going to be happen now. Print of L1. Print of L2. What is the answer we are going to get in both cases? Double seven, double seven, okay? Double eight, double eight, thirty, forty is the answer we are going to get. Friends, everyone in the position to understand clearly. So, in the case of list, the modifications are happening in the same object or not? Yes. That's why list is mutable. So, can you please explain basic example to understand mutability concept? Best example to understand? Let me execute this code. Have a look once. I'm taking L is equal to L1 is equal to L1 is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, sir. Okay, well. 
L2 is equal to L1. So both are pointing to the same object. Print of L1. Next the print of L2. Like this I am taking cell. Okay well. Print of L1 and L2. Let me execute after this. Let me execute after this. Yes the content is the same. Now by using L1 I am trying to change the content. L1 of 0 is equal to 7777. Okay print of l1 print of l2 like sir observe that print of l1 print of l2 what answer we are getting double seven double seven double seven double seven so if you perform any change to l1 automatically that change will be reflected to l2 because both are pointing to the same remember this one sir okay next uh, by using l2 i want to perform some change l2 of 1 is equal to double eight double eight print of l1 and the print of l2 automatically that change will be reflected to l1 or not can you please observe that yes yes that change will be reflected to l1 l2 sir both it's going to reflect so clear indication all changes performed in the existing object only this changeable behavior is nothing but what mutability concept <coughs> Are you able to understand right? Sir, up to this any doubt? So what is the meaning of immutability? But anyway from this, just you should aware, all fundamental data types are immutable. Okay? Once we create an object, we can't perform any changes in that object. If any person trying to change, automatically a new object will be created. So why immutability is required? Because of object reusability concept internally. So can you please give an example for mutability? List is the best example which is the mutable but anyway in the next classes we are going to use mutable immutable repeatedly you should have clear clarity at this stage only up to this is the clear hi friends in the last videos we covered very clearly about fundamental data types sir now observe that sir if i consider a is equal to 10 can you please tell what is the type of this one inter type b is equal to 10.5 flow type flow type sir if i can take c is equal to true true like boolean type next uh, sir d is equal to 10 plus 20 j is uh, what type sir this is uh, uh, what is this one complex number next uh, e is equal to durga okay like i'm taking it is the stringer type these are uh, five fundamental data types we covered sir here every variable every variable can hold how many values only one value a can be used to represent value 10 b can be used to represent value 10.5 c can be used to represent value true sir so in fundamental data types every variable can hold how many values right only one value clear right okay like sir sometimes my programming requirement i want to hold a group of values a group of values together are you getting i want to hold a group of values together something like uh, sir names of all students or roll numbers of all students or all mobile numbers all mail ids i want to represent a group of things uh, then we should not go for look at these fundamental data types for uh, that we have to go for collection related data types are you getting if you want to represent a group of values as a single entity sir something like uh, here this is the first value second value third value fourth value fifth value sixth value seven like uh, a group of values as a single entity then we require to go for what collection related data types right sir what are various collection related data types are there in the python sir best example list concept is available okay list list concept is available next uh, tuple concept is available list uh, tuple next uh, set set next uh, frozen set set frozen set next uh, dict dict next uh, followed by range range next uh, bytes and uh, byte array okay all these uh, data types can be used uh, 
टू रिप्रेजेंट ए ग्रुप ऑफ वैल्यूज रिमेंबर दिस वन टू रिप्रेजेंट ए ग्रुप ऑफ वैल्यूज एज ए सिंगल एंटिटी देन वी रिक्वायर टू गो फॉर दीस डेटा टाइप्स राइट सर एनीवे ऑलमोस्ट सर दीस थिंग्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एज ए सेपरेट टॉपिक्स लिस्ट इज ऑलमोस्ट अराउंड 3 टू 4 सेशंस ओके टॉपिक लिस्ट टू पुल सेट डिक्ट लाइक दिस बट आई हैव टू शो द बेसिक आईडिया अबाउट दीस थिंग्स इन डिटेल टेक अ बिट वेरी स्पेशल केयर सर कैन यू प्लीज टेल व्हाट इज द मेन डिफरेंस बिटवीन फंडामेंटल डेटा टाइप्स कलेक्शन रिलेटेड डेटा टाइप्स फंडामेंटल डेटा टाइप्स कैन होल्ड ओनली वन वैल्यू एट अ टाइम बट दीस कलेक्शन रिलेटेड डेटा टाइप्स कैन होल्ड द मल्टीपल वैल्यूज बट देयर आर सम स्मॉल स्मॉल डिफरेंसेस आर देयर सर something like uh, sir order is important duplicates are allowed then we have to go for list sir duplicates i don't want then we have to go for set key values key value pair then we have to go for list so based on our requirement we have to choose the corresponding collection related data types okay anyway as of now ever multiple collection related data types are available these are things we have to discuss one by one one by one up to this is the clear right sir now the first type what i have to discuss list list concept sir sir list 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 of values list of values sequence of values where order is there or not in this list this is the first element this is the last element like order is there duplicates are allowed or not remember that a bit very carefully sir if you want to represent a group of values a group of objects as a single entity where duplicates are allowed order is important where order is important and duplicates are allowed then we have to go for list concept remember this one sir so whenever i am using the word list immediately in your mind two points should be should be should be injected the first point sir okay order order is important insertion order preserved duplicates are allowed yes duplicate objects no problem happily it is allowed then we require to go for what list concept very very important sir sir how you can represent a list sir take a bit very special care sir what is this notation ha ah, please respond what is this notation okay this one square brackets so list concept can be represented by using square bracket style remember that sir in the first value comma second value comma third value like this one is a list concept of course i will explain related to the properties don't worry sir if you go for tuple so you have this basic idea at the beginning only if you want to go for tuple then we have to go for parenthesis are getting we require to go for what parenthesis 10 20 30 this one is by default considered as tuple sir tuple tuple is 10 20 30 okay tuple some people may pronounce as a tuple okay like whatever your pronunciation no problem right 10 20 30 next uh, if i can take curly brace 10 20 30 okay just you wear within curly braces i'm taking this type of thing is called set set concept sir are getting set set concept next uh, if you consider 100 100 colon durga 100 colon durga comma comma 200 colon ravi 200 colon ravi okay this is 100 colon durga 200 colon ravi this a type of key value key value this type of thing is called dict concept dictionary concept listen this sir just for basic idea purpose i am telling at the beginning styles sir square bracket representation what is this concept sir list concept next a parenthesis concept what is this one tuple tuple concept right curly braces first value comma second value comma third value set concept right again curly braces again curly braces key value first value colon key value key value comma key value like then we require to go for one dict concept okay well sir now can you please tell how to represent list sir l is equal to sir i am taking here 10 10 okay durga 10 durga next uh, 20 20 10 30 like this i am taking sir take very special care 
can i give the word is it a list or not yes how many values are there in this list please confirm first value second value third value fourth value fifth value so this list contain five values are available now observe very carefully about this one sir 10 durga 10 durga 20 10 30 this is the list right now l is the reference variable for this so if you want to represent a group of objects as a single entity where duplicates are allowed duplicates are allowed 10 how many times i'm taking sir two times two times 10 i'm taking two times so duplicates are allowed order is important sir what is the meaning of order i will discuss don't worry sir duplicates are allowed order is important then we have to go for what list concept sir sir i'm sure it is the list where is the proof how you can conclude it the list like you may ask very simple sir print of type of l are you getting print of type of L? Sir, what answer we are going to get? Yes, the answer we are going to get, sir, list. Is it clear for all of you, right? Let me cross check, is it, is it really list or not? Okay, have a look once, sir. Sir, now, observe, observe a bit very, very carefully about this one. Here I am taking a small, a small example, sir. Here, see this one, sir. Here I am trying to take, here just the, L is equal to L is equal to square bracket. Sir, this representation is a very important square bracket. 10 comma Durga comma 20 comma 10 comma 30. Like five elements I am taking, sir. 20 comma 10 comma 30. Sir, now print of type of L. Print of type of L. Sir, what is this type? What is this type? Print of type of L. Like this I am taking, sir. So, what answer we are going to get, sir? Yes, it is the list type. Are you getting that? This is the list, list type, sir. Print of type of L. This value itself is nothing but what? List, list type, sir. You people should be aware clearly, right? Sir, now, can you, from this diagram, you people can aware? Yes, man. Duplicates are allowed. I will show, sir. If I print uh, L, if I print, uh, can you please print uh, the, the values present inside the list, print of L, that's all. If I print uh, this one, what is the answer we are going to get, sir? 10, Durga, 10, Durga, 20, 30, 20, 10, 30. Like, uh, in which order you specify the element? In the same order only, the output is going to come. In which order you provided elements, in the same order only, the data will be stored inside memory. That's why order is important. Remember this one, sir. This is the output we are going to get if I print this one. Have a look once. If I print just L, if I print, print of L I'm taking, sir. If I print of L, what is the output we are going to get, sir? Are you in the position to understand, right? 10, Durga, 20, 10, 30, like this we are going to get. 10, Durga, 20, 10, 30 itself is the answer we are, we are going to get, sir. So, in the same order only, the output is going to come. So, friends, the terminology is very clear for you people. So, when we should go for list concept, if you want to represent a group of values as a single entity, a group of values as a single entity where order is important duplicate objects are allowed then we have to go forward list the concept right okay well sir from this discussion can you please provide some important conclusions what you observed about the list please confirm some important conclusions what you observed from the list one thing is okay order preserved order preserved but anyway i will give much explanation sir soon don't worry about that order preserved duplicates are allowed or not allowed can you please spell out 10 how many how many times i took sir two times that's why duplicate objects are allowed duplicate objects are allowed allowed like this right next uh, the values should be represented within square bracket representation okay well next uh, sir do you know heterogeneous objects are allowed or not yes heterogeneous means what different type of objects if you observe one is uh, intertype 
the second one is string type one is integer type second one is string type heterogeneous heterogeneous objects are allowed okay heterogeneous heterogeneous objects are heterogeneous objects are allowed allowed like this right up to this not required to keep any explanation about this one sir okay well sir take a bit very special care sir sir now just i told order is important order order is important what is the first element present in this one can you please spell out what is the first element present in this one 10 this 10 is located at zero index one index two index three and four how you can find the element present at zero index yeah if you observe print of l of 0 are you getting l of 0 what is the answer we are going to get 10 sir print l of 0 10 sir print of l of minus 1 i am taking <laughs> minus 1 minus 1 means what last what is the last element sir 30 itself is the valid so indexing concept applicable or not yes applicable because here order is important wherever order is there wherever order preserved compulsory indexing concept applicable next uh, slicing also if you observe print of l of 1 4 like this i'm taking sir l of 1 colon 4 sir 1 colon 4 what is this concept what is this operator slice operator slice operator so it returns a list of elements a list of elements a elements a from list of elements from one index to one index to begin to n minus one four minus one four minus one means a three index are you getting four minus one means a three index right so one index to three index means uh, which values are okay durga 20 10 this is the value we are going to get okay remember this let me cross check whether it is going to be happen really or not observe carefully sir sir i'm trying to take i'm trying to take here print of l of zero l of zero zero like this i'm taking what is the answer we are going to get 10 regarding what the what the answer we are going to get sir 10 10 itself is the answer l of minus one i'm taking l of minus one minus one i'm taking last element sir yes perfect l of minus one is the 30 oh clear indication clear indication indexing concept is applicable sir now i want to take slice operator also l of 1 2 4 sir l of 1 2 4 so from 1 index to begin index to n minus 1 index means sir 1 2 3 okay this part we have to get sir durga 20 10 this is the part we are going to get observe carefully sir what is the answer durga 20 10 is the answer we are going to get perfectly itself is acceptable so for the list indexing concept slicing concept applicable no problem at all are you in the position to understand right sir next important point of course indexing indexing and the slicing concept applicable under slicing slicing concepts are applicable right next one more point legend very carefully sir sir if I can take L is equal to something like this style have a look once L is equal to just uh, square bracket open and close what i'm doing respond what i'm doing l is equal to just a square bracket open and close what i'm doing we are creating list uh, which is empty because i'm not specifying any elements right yes creation of empty list what is the way okay like this sir being python developer lacks crores of times you require to do this type of syntax okay how to create empty list just i created right now I want to add an element to this list. Are you getting? I want to add an element to this list. If to the list, if you want to add an element, we require to call one method. What is that method, sir? Append. Are you getting? What is the method we have to call? Append. Append method we have to call to add element to the list. Now observe L dot append of L dot append of tensor. 
now i added 10 to this list okay now l dot append of 20 i'm taking l dot append of 20 l dot append of 30 30 i'm taking sir 30 l dot append of 40 40 like this i'm taking okay well sir now how many elements i added to this list four elements sir by using which method you can add elements to the list okay append method like sir now print of l now print of l if i can take what is the answer we are going to get sir okay i told insertion order preserved in the case of list sir first which element you inserted that element will be stored in the memory so at the beginning sir 10 10 i added under then what 20 i added 30 I added, 40 I added. Are you getting? 10, 20, 30, 40, like this I'm adding, sir. Sir, this is the output we are going to get. Next, if you want, you can remove an element also. That thing is also possible, sir. L dot, L dot, remove of 30 I'm taking. L dot, remove of 30 I'm taking, sir. Now, can you please observe that print of L, print of L. So, now 30 will be removed. Now, the content will become 10, 20, 40 is the answer we are going to get, sir. So, based on our requirement, you can add new elements, you can remove existing elements. Such a type of option is there in the case of list. That's why list is growable in nature. List is growable, growable in nature. Here. Remember, based on our requirement, you can increase, you can add the new elements, you can remove existing element, such a type of thing is possible. It is a growable, based on our requirement, you can add, remove, that option is there. Let me cross check whether it's going to work or not. Have a look once, sir. Sir, I'm trying to take, I want to take empty list. Can you please confirm how to create empty list? Square bracket open, close. That's all. Square bracket open and close, empty list. L dot, yard, not yard. What is the method? I forgot. I forgot. Can you please confirm what is the method I have to take? Append. Are you getting? Append of 10. Okay. Next, uh, L dot append of year 20. L dot append of, uh, sir, here just only two elements I added. Assume that, sir. Let me print uh, L. Let me print uh, L. What answer we are going to get, sir? Yes, friends, 1020. What, what answer we are getting? 1020. Suppose, assume, I'm trying to add uh, two more elements. Two more elements, 30 and then 40. 30 and then 40. Sir, now have a look once. Sir. sir, how many elements are added? Four. First which element? 10. Next which element? 20. 30, 40. Order. Order is important. Order will be preserved. Now have a look once. Sir. Observe. A bit very carefully about this one. 10, 20, 30, 40. Like we are going to get the answer, sir. Okay, well. Sir, based on my requirement, remove. L dot remove of 30 I am taking sir. L dot remove of 30. Print of L. Print of L. What output we are going to get sir? 10, 20, 40 like this. Friends, is it clear for all of friend? Based on our requirement, you can increase, you can decrease, you can add new elements, you can remove this new element. So this type of thing is called growable in nature. Okay, well. Sir, one more, one more last point related to list, sir. Observe carefully this one. If I consider, if I consider L is equal to, okay, 10, 20, 30, 40. L is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40. Sir, I know elements already at the beginning only. That's why here 10, 20, 30, 40, like this I am taking. L is the reference variable, right? Now my question is, take very, very special care about this one. Now my question is, L, here take, take, observe, observe a bit carefully, sir. 10, 20, 30, 40. I thought that I want to replace this 0th element. 0th element is nothing but 0 index element is the 10. L of 0 is equal to double seven double seven. L of 0 is equal to double seven double seven. Sir, now in this existing element, this 10 will be replaced with the double seven double seven. Okay? Now print of L sir. Now print of L. What is the answer we are going to get? Double seven double seven. 20, 30, 40 is the answer we are going to get. Clear indication. Once we create list object, 
is it possible to perform some changes in this object or not yes this changeable behavior is nothing but what mutability so can you please tell list is mutable or immutable list is mutable remember this one list is mutable mutable we can modify we can change the content of the list acceptable that's why it is the mutable okay have a look once here observe carefully about this terminology i am taking 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 i am trying to take sir now print of l print of l l sir sir we are going to get simply 10 20 30 40 okay print of l 10 20 30 40 we are getting sir sir now my requirement is let me modify l of 0 is equal to double seven double seven double seven double seven print of l double seven double seven print of l okay now 10 is replaced with double seven double seven okay now the remaining elements are as it is so based on our requirement we can perform any type of modifications in the existing list object that's why list itself is what mutable everyone can aware sir these are basic information you people should aware related to list data structure are you in the position to understand sir what is the list when we should go for list next what are various properties are available okay like you should have clear clarity sir order is important or not yes man order is important that's why indexing slicing are applicable duplicates are allowed okay within square bracket we have to represent heterogeneous objects are allowed indexing and slicing are applicable growable in nature next and after that mutable these are various important things you should aware by using which method you can add new element to the list append append is the method by using which method you can remove element from the list remove is the method but while covering list data structure detail i will discuss multiple methods multiple applications we are going to discuss as of now just get basic idea about the list concept clear right Sir, in the last video, we covered very clearly about list data structure, right? So, in the list, duplicates are allowed or not? Allowed, insertion order preserved, mutable, right? Sir, now the next thing what I have to discuss, tuple concept, right? Sir, now tuple exactly same as list. Sir, all properties are exactly, exactly same as list exactly same as a list but where is the difference only one word is the difference so exactly same as a list except except it is except that it is immutable remember this one sir except that it is immutable okay once we create a tuple object we can't perform any changes in that object this nature is nothing but what immutable are you getting by mistake if you are trying to replace if you are trying to add something remove something sorry man such a type of options are not available in the case of tuple sir except that all the remaining properties are same insertion order order will be preserved indexing is applicable slicing is applicable duplicates are allowed all the remaining properties are same only difference is list is mutable but the tuple is immutable is it clear for all of right sir next that is can i can i use the word read only version are you getting read only read only version read only version of list read only version of list is a tuple so i have one list is there Sir, I want to perform only read operation. You can't add something, you can't remove something, you can't replace something. Such a type of read-only version of list, I can use the word, it is the tuple. Remember that, sir. <laughs> sir, now, how you can represent tuple? Very, very simple, sir. So, we can represent tuple. In the last video, I told, right, have you remembered? Square bracket notation meant for, please guide, square bracket notation meant for what? List, list concept. Sir, parenthesis notation meant for what? Tuple. Tuple concept, sir. So, how you can represent a tuple? You can represent, sir, tuple by using square bracket, by using tuple parenthesis notation, right? Sir, 10, 20, 30, 10, 20. 
Are you getting? So 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 10 comma 20 like this, right? Or even let me take a heterogeneous element also. No issue at all. Heterogeneous element. Possible man. Okay. Sir, now duplicates are allowed. Duplicates are allowed. Order is important. Order will be preserved. Heterogeneous elements are allowed. All the properties are same. But, but you can't perform any modification for this that is the only difference sir how you can conclude it is the tuple where is the proof how you can tell sir it is the tuple very simple let me take a print of type of t print of type of t sir what answer we are going to get sir tuple itself is the answer okay have a look once sir now t is equal to here i'm taking t is equal to 10 comma 20 comma 30 30 comma 10 comma durga like this i'm taking can you please tell which symbol we are using parenthesis parenthesis symbol we are trying to use now print of type of t sir print a type of t have a look once uh, what output we are going to get sir class uh, tuple are you getting what is the output we are getting sir class uh, tuple 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 is the output we are going to get sir it is the tuple now i have one small point sir order is important or not yes order is important so what is the first element yes 10 what is the last element durga like this right so if it, the order is important slicing indexing applicable right now sir print a print a t of 0 hey, what is the first element which element is locating at 0 at the index 10 10 sir okay 10 sir print a t of t of minus 1 minus 1 means last element minus 1 means last element sir durga last element durga like we are going to get so print of t of 1 colon 4 sir what is the meaning of 1 colon 4 respond 1 colon 4 slice operator slice operator right sir which value we are going to get from begin index to n minus 1 1 2 3 one two three means uh, this is the answer we have to get sir so i'm going to get 20 30 10 sir this is it is the read only operation it is the read operation only i'm not performing any modification just read operation so slicing and the indexing both operations are applicable for the tuple also okay have a look once sir i want to take what is the first element t of t of 0 sir sir can you please tell what the first element 10 is the answer first element itself is the 10 what is the last element what is the last last element the last element is durga the last element itself is durga durga like this right so first element is the 10 last element is the durga like this we have next uh, print of t of 1 colon 1 colon 4 1 colon 4 what answer we are going to get 20 30 10 like this right so what is a tuple what is tuple how you can represent a tuple next how you can access elements of the tuple like uh, index uh, slicing all these things are applicable next uh, sir you told uh, tuple means immutable immutable very that can you please show that very simple sir t of 0 which element is there 10 is there sir t of 0 means 10 i want to replace this this 10 with a double seven double seven sir now observe if it is the list accepted if it is the tuple what it's going to tell sir double seven double seven like this i'm taking so t of 0 is equal to double seven double seven like if i'm trying to ask are you python virtual machine can you please run this one immediately python virtual machine pvm what it said are durga pagal ho gaya mental so tuple is already immutable how you can change the content how you can change the content like pvm is going to give left and right okay we are going to get type error remember we are going to get type error because we can't uh, perform any changes in that object type error we are going to get okay well observe carefully sir have a look once i'm trying to replace t of 0 is equal to double seven double seven what will happen t of 0 is equal to double seven double seven what will happen sir sir a type error tuple object does not support item assignment is it clear for all of you right 
friends tuple object does not support item assignment okay so that's all this is what you people should be aware clearly about this immutable data right? sir same if you want to add a new element in in the list uh, i covered which one append method if you want to remove an element from the tuple i covered which one okay remove remove with the method append and remove so can i use the same methods for the tuple or not t dot append of t dot append of 50 i am trying to add t dot remove of 10 i am trying to remove do you know sir both the cases we are going to get error again because the reason is append remove such type of capabilities are not available for the tuple that's why attribute error what is this error we are going to get attribute error we are going to get saying sir append attribute remove attribute these uh, attributes are not available these methods are not applicable for the tuple because tuple is always fixed the content is always fixed that's why you can't perform any changes you can't add something you can't remove something that's why this thing is not possible have a look once if i'm trying to take here t dot t dot append of 50 i'm trying to take t dot append of 50 what will happen sir attribute error attribute error tuple object has no attribute append tuple object has no attribute append append like this right sir similarly sir remove like this i'm taking sir remove of 10 remove of 10 now observe now observe attribute error tuple object has no attribute remove like we are going to get the error friends everyone in the position to understand what is the meaning of immutability you can't add something you can't remove something you can't perform replacement that's why tuple is always immutable so except this immutability immutability okay all the remaining properties are same uh, same as the list only so read only version of list concept is what the tuple concept clear right sir now i will explain very very important dangerous point i'm going to tell please take a bit very special care even experienced python developer also will do this mistake not one time multiple times that's why please take a bit special care sir sir if i can take t is equal to just the parenthesis open and close what is the type respond what is the type i told already wherever parenthesis is there it is considered as what tuple type only sir it is empty tuple are you getting what is this one sir it is empty tuple correct correct let me show this one sir because here there is a big story is there observe that carefully right t is equal to parenthesis open and close print a type of t sir print of type of t what is this t type sir here do you know sir tuple t is what type sir tuple type yeah empty tuple no elements are there empty tuple right now the same thing what i want to take is t is equal to sir 10 i'm taking are you getting can you please tell now the tuple contain how many elements are you respond man now the tuple contain how many elements how many elements one one element one element uh, 10 earlier zero number of elements but now how many elements right one element one element like so if i can take yes friends print uh, type of t if i can take like this what the answer we are going to get sir it is a tuple this tuple contain one element obviously the type is always uh, tuple only the type is always tuple only like uh, if you are going to tell like this i will give left and right <laughs> remember this what is the reason for that yes what the reason for that is it is not tuple sir it is int type what is the reason is do you know in our normal mathematics forget about programming and so normal sir suppose sometimes i can take 10 plus 20 10 plus 20 valid expression 30 sometimes i can take 10 plus 20 like this also have you remember right a normal number we can take within parenthesis then there is no change in the value operator precedence parenthesis you can use anywhere okay like or you can take 10 
plus 20, okay, like this. Yes, now also the valid answer is the valid. Is nothing but 30 is the answer. So for numbers, in operator, whenever we are performing operators for numbers, it is a very common trend. Okay, we are enclosing within parentheses. Regarding we are enclosing within parentheses, parentheses, right? That's why here, do you know, I'm taking 10 within parentheses. It is not considering two pulsar. It is considering int value. Now, what is the type we are going to get, sir? Int. Remember this one. What the type? It is not tuple. It is not tuple. It is the int. Like, now, have a look once. Sir, I'm taking just the only one value, 10 I'm taking. 10 I'm taking, sir. Single value. Single value I'm taking. Now, now, if I can ask the question, what is the type, sir? Now I'm trying to get, yeah, now I'm getting int, int type. So clear indication that it is not, uh, clear indication that it is not, uh, sir, tuple type, it is the int type. Okay? So this type of problem is going to come only for the tuple. Because, because normal numbers, uh, we never go to enclose within square bracket. Normal numbers we never going to enclose within curly braces. That's why, sir, but parentheses is the very common. That's why only in the case of tuple, this type of problem is going to come. But in the case of list and set, we never going to have this type of problem, right? Now, how I can convey? How I can convey? Hey, Python virtual machine, don't consider this one as the intertype. Please consider it is the tuple only. This is the first value. This is the first value. How you can specify, sir, what you have to take? Ten followed by comma. We have to take. What is this one, sir? Ten followed by comma. Whenever I'm taking comma internally, my Python virtual machine is going to consider that. Oh, he is going to add some more values. He is going to add some more values. Like uh, he's, it is going to feel that. So it is a group of values. It is not single int value. It is the two like it is going to consider are you able to understand right single valued tuple you require to take a bit special care compulsory should ends with the comma by mistake comma is not there it is not treated as a tuple single valued tuple should ends with the comma it is the mandatory right now have a look once sir i'm not taking comma i'm not taking comma comma is not there sir what the type what is the type? Intertype. Intertype, sir. Sir, if I can take a comma. If I can take comma, comma. Now, what is the type? Now, what is the type? Itself is the tuple type. Everyone, everyone in the position to understand, right? What is the type? Itself is a tuple, tuple type, sir. So, these are various, this is one very important dangerous point. Single valued tuple should compulsory and severe. Ah, should compulsory answer with comma. Please make sure inject in your mind at this point especially. Okay, well. Sir, next, uh, very, very important question for the entire room. Crores of times asked question in the entire room, sir. What is the difference between list uh, and tuple? Okay, sir, we are talking very briefly these data structures until that brief level only two or three differences i will explain but while covering tuple concept in detail there a big table i'm going to discuss right so what are various differences between tuple and the list can you please spell out up to this whatever knowledge we have we have up to that sir okay what is the difference between list and the tuple the main important difference the main important difference List is mutable. Are you getting list is mutable? We can perform any changes in the list object, no problem at all. Sir, but the tuple is immutable. Tuple is immutable. So means uh, once we create tuple object, we can't perform any changes in that object. Okay, like next uh, list elements uh, we can represent by using square bracket notation. Next uh, tuple elements uh, we can represent by using parentheses. Are you getting tuple elements we can represent by using parentheses, right? Next uh, third one, very very important. Take a bit very special care. I didn't cover some. Do you know tuple elements are always fixed? They never going to change at runtime. It's not no chance at all to change. That's why 
ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಮೆಮರಿ ರಿಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಪೈಥಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋನ್ ಟು ಫಾಲೋ ಕನ್ಸೈಸ್ ಮೆಮರಿ ರಿಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಟು ಟು ಸ್ಟೋರ್ ಟು ಪುಲ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಬೈ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಬೀಟ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಬೀಟ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಈವನ್ ದ ಬಿಗ್ಗರ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಗೋನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫೈಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಗೋನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸ್ಟೋರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಬೀಟ್ ಸೊ ಟು ಸ್ಟೋರ್ ಟು ಪುಲ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಪೈಥಾನ್ ವರ್ಚುವಲ್ ಮಿಷನ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಲೆಸ್ ಮೆಮೊರಿ very very less memory next uh, to store list elements pvm required more memory next uh, to access uh, tuple elements right tuple elements very easily we can access tuple elements uh, because the content is always fixed it won't change at run time that's why uh, so it is the faster access are getting we can access uh, tuple elements very fast uh, so internally we can use the word performance uh, is uh, more are getting performance is more but uh, here performance uh, is uh, less performance is uh, less less like this right okay next so that's why if you know the content won't change the data is always fixed better to go for which concepts are to pull only to get the memory perform memory memory benefit and to get performance benefit compulsory our hand should go for to pull but not for the list remember right sir where we can use a list concept sir youtube comment is there or facebook comment is there or your udemy reviews are there today you are giving some review tomorrow you want to edit that review is it possible or not yes man it's possible you can add something you can remove something like a uh, possible if the content uh, changing content uh, changing then we have to go for list concepts sir sir adding new object removing existing object such type of capabilities are required then better to go for list concept but when we should go for tuple tuple is always fixed sir tuple is always is always uh, content is always fixed best example account type okay in the bank account type account type only two values are there okay one is a savings account are you getting one is savings account second one is a current account current account are you getting one is a savings account second one is current account that's all so at run time the account types uh, never going to change throughout bank project then how you can represent these two values better to go for tuple concept okay like vendor missions are there you may aware if you are going to insert coin then you will get uh, what we call some a small chocolate or otherwise coca cola bottle something like you are going to get vendor mission so the allowed inputs uh, inside vendor mission is always fixed maybe assume that sir it should be only 5 rupees or 10 rupees coin only you are not allowed to use any other you are not allowed to use any other so allowed inputs is always fixed uh, so to represent okay this fixed values better to go for what to pull concept are getting right okay even in the metro metro stations also if you want to get the ticket you have to insert you have to insert either 10 rupees or otherwise 20 rupees not only assume these are the two allowed inputs or three allowed input how you can represent sir by using tuple concept content is always fixed at run time you can't add something you can't remove something next uh, you can't replace something such a type of possibilities are there highly recommended better to go for tuple sir so the most valuable very important question for the interview room what is the difference between list standard tuple list is mutable tuple is immutable list elements we can represent by using square bracket tuple elements we can represent by using sir parenthesis next tuple elements required less memory but list elements required more memory to store next uh, we can access tuple elements very speedily performance is good but your performance is low that's all if the content keep on changing better to go for list if the content never changed better to go for tuple concept any doubt are you getting basic idea about tuple next one more dangerous point single valued tuple should compulsory ends with the comma that's all sir sir in the last videos we covered list concept tuple concept list and tuple in both order is important duplicates are allowed but where is the difference tuple immutable 
list is mutable clear right but sometimes my requirement is i want to represent a group of values a group of values as a single entity where duplicates are not allowed observe very very carefully about this one sir duplicates are not allowed i don't want to duplicates okay i don't want duplicates i don't care about order order i don't want to worry sir order order i don't want order not required order not required this is my program requirement man sir order wise don't worry next uh, duplicates are not allowed suppose best example i want to send one sms message to all my students so i have to duplicate numbers if any there it should be removed duplicates are not allowed so in any order you can send but at last for all the students my message got sent or not my message got delivered or not it is very important so where order is not required order is not important next uh, duplicates are not allowed if you have such a type of requirement then better to go for set set a data structure right are you getting when we should go for set whenever we are using the word set in your mind immediately two points should strike point number one okay order not important order is not applicable next uh, duplicates are not allowed okay like sir in your general mathematics also if you observe that mathematics uh, s1 set sets uh, relations functions like mathematics uh, discrete mathematics somewhere in our academics we covered sir 1 2 3 1 2 3 s2 is equal to 2 3 1 i am taking s3 is equal to 1 3 2 like this i am taking sir can you please uh, spell out all these sets are equal or not normal mathematics mathematics set theory all these sets are equal or not yes friend how you can tell two sets are equal okay all the elements present in set first set present in the second set are not irrespective of their order order wise we are not required here 1 2 3 here also 2 3 1 here also 1 3 2 the same elements only that's why all these things are equal remember this one can you please tell what is the first element <laughs> what are the first element what are the last element ah if any person is asking what are the first element what are the last element in set uh, give left and right because in set uh, order such type of terminology not applicable okay it's a normal mathematics uh, same way our python set also okay so if you don't want duplicates if you don't want worry about order then we have to go for one set concept how you can represent sir very very simple okay then comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 sir so within curly braces you have to represent a group of values within curly braces you require to represent a group of values like sir now it is the set how you can prove it is the set very simple sir type of yes okay type of yes can you just print type of yes now i have to get the set remember print type of yes now i have to get what set okay have a look once here just take a bit very very special care about this one sir yes is equal to yes is equal to 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 i am taking print type of yes print type of yes what output we are going to get a class set is it clear for all of you it is the it is the set right okay class set like now here there is one small point is there there is one small twist is there observe carefully right if i can take my yes is equal to 10 10 20 10 20 10 durga 10 durga 30 40 like this i'm taking 10 20 10 durga 30 40 i'm taking if i print print yes what output we are going to get <laughs> can you please spell out sir what is the what is the output we are going to get if i print yes can you please confirm hmm what is that output we are going to get in this case yes very very simple sir 10 comma 20 sir 10 is available two times but in the set only once sir. the remaining duplicate element will be ignored the remaining duplicate element will be ignored sir 10 20 next uh, durga durga 
30, 40, only this is. Then two times won't be there. Even you are trying to add two times also. But it's always going to consider only once duplicates are not allowed. But, but, what is the output? These are the elements, but I can't give the guarantee for the order. Order I don't know, sir. Order I don't know. In the case of set order wise, we can't give the guarantee. That's why. So these elements will come, but in which order, I don't know. Okay, this is, let me cross check, sir. Have a look once. If I can take, yes is equal to, yes is equal to 10, 20, Durga, uh, 10, 20, 10, 10, comma, comma, Durga, Durga, 30, comma, 40 is there. Print, print, yes sir, print, yes sir. Sir, how many times 10 we are taking? Two times, two times. Sir. But still, what is the output we are going to get, sir? Okay, 10 we are going to get only once, sir. 10 we are getting only once, sir. But in which order the output is coming? Our order is 10, 20, 10, Durga, 30, 40. But your output is 40, 10, Durga, 20, 30, we are going to get. So, order is preserved or not preserved? Not preserved, man. In the case of set, order, such type of thing is not applicable. Clear for all of you, right? If you don't want to worry about order, if you don't want to duplicate, okay, unique elements only I want, better to go for set concept, right? Next, uh, one more important point, sir. Sir, now I have already set is there. Can you please tell? What is the first element? What is the, what is the first element? Print of S yes of 0. Print of S yes of 0. Python virtual machine will give left and right. Are, there is no order. If there is no order, where is the question of first element? Where is the question of first element, second element like? So immediately, we are going to get type error. Index concept not applicable, not applicable for the set. Because order is not there. Indexing is not applicable. Same story applicable for S yes, of 1 colon 4. What is this one, sir? Slice operator. Slice operator. Now also we are going to get, okay, type error saying set is not subscriptable. Like here type error, index is not applicable for set. Next type error, set is not subscriptable. Like we are going to get the error. Observe carefully, right? Sir, what I am trying to take? S yes, of 0. Yeah, just I am trying to take S of 0. S yes, of 0. Observe that. I have already one, one set is there, sir. S yes, of 0, like this I am taking. Okay. Observe. Observe carefully. Sir, type error. Set object does not support indexing. Set object does not support indexing. Remember this one, sir. Okay, well. Suppose I am taking S yes, of, S yes, of, here 1 colon 4 I am taking slice operator sir if I can take slice slice operator 1 colon 4 slice operator if I can take what will happen sir set object is not subscriptable set object is not subscriptable like we are going to get sir all the things are very clear for you people right you should have clear clarity about this uh, terminology any any doubt so can you please tell for the set uh, indexing indexing slicing applicable or not applicable not applicable man now here the third point duplicates are not allowed order is not required next uh, indexing concept indexing concept slicing concepts are not applicable okay next uh, heterogeneous objects are allowed no problem at all hetero heterogeneous objects heterogeneous objects are allowed heterogeneous objects are allowed everywhere sir don't worry in the list applicable tuple applicable set applicable frozen set applicable dict applicable everywhere heterogeneous objects are allowed okay well sir next uh, one more important conclusion is there take a uh, very special care about this one sir s is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40 is there. Now my requirement is, observe carefully. Here, I want to add 50. I want to add 50, 50. Now immediately you may get the doubt. Sir, append method, append method. Append method applicable for list, but for the set, we require to use add method. Add. What is the reason? I will explain, sir. Append applicable for the list, but add is the method applicable for set. Okay? Now, let me print. Yes, sir, sir. Let me print off. Yes. What answer we are going to get? Okay, 50 will be added. Now, yes, sir, dot remove of 30 I am taking. 
He has not removed of 30. Okay, print of yes. Now 30 will be removed from the set. So 50 will be added. 30 will be removed from the set. Both the things are applicable. Have a look once. Here, I am taking 10, 20, 10, 20, 30, 40. Like this, I am taking. Yes, sir. Dot, yard, ah, 50. I am taking. Print of yes. Print of yes. Print of yes. Now, what is 40, 10, 50, 20, 30 is there, sir. 30 is there. Okay, like. Similarly, I want to add, yes sir, dot, remove of 30, yes sir, remove, remove of 30, print of yes sir, yes sir, remove of 30, print of yes, yes, 30 got removed sir, 40, 10, 50, 20 is the answer we are going to get. Okay, clear, right? So, the important point is, once we create set object, happily we can perform changes to that object. Means, uh, set is uh, mutable or immutable? Mutable. Set is uh, growable. Set is growable and uh, set is mutable. Remember, these are various important points what you people should be aware about the set terminology, right? Next, one more small point is there. What is that point? Why? What, is the, what is that point is? Append, append versus, append versus add. Add, append method versus add method. Sir, in the case of list, we have append method. But in the case of set, we have add method. Why, sir? What the, what the reason? Why these are different methods? Why the names are different? Very simple, very simple. Observe carefully, sir. If I consider, this is my list. L is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40. Assume that 10, 20, 30, 40. If I add 50, if I am trying to add 50, where it will be added? At last. Compulsory, at last. In the last position, 50 will be added. Correct time? Right? If you are adding something at last, uh, that operation is called append operation. Appending means existing plus new content. This is what appending. So there is a guarantee 50 is always going to add at last. At last. That's why for the list, uh, what method is there? Append method is available. And uh, 50 will be added at last. Okay? Print of L. There is a guarantee the output is always 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, sir. Are you getting? 50 is always going to add at last. But what about set? But what about set? If I can take S is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40. Order is not important. In the memory, how these objects are going to be stored, there is no guarantee at all. Maybe 40 will come first. Maybe 40 will come first. We don't know that. Now, if I add 50, if I add 50, where this 50 will be added? Is there any guarantee? Is it always going to add at last? No guarantee at all. That's why append uh, such type of terminology. You can't use for the set. Uh, simply we are using which terminology sir? Add. Observe the difference, right? Why? Here we are using append uh, because this element is always going to add at last. But here there is no guarantee this element is going to add at last. Maybe somewhere in the middle also. That's why simply the method name is add. You should aware. Some students may ask. Sir, for the list append you use for the set, yard we use, why sir, why these two different names, sir? based on internal functionality, two different method names came in the picture, clear right? Sir, now I will explain the most dangerous point, take very, very special care, sir, what is that point is, if I can take S is equal to, okay, curly brace open and the close I am taking. Can you please tell, what is this one? Huh? What is this? Set, uh, curly brace open and close is the set. Uh, how many elements are there in this set? How many elements are there in this set? Zero number of elements. Uh. Can I give the word, it is empty set or not? Are, respond man, is it empty set or not? Huh? Empty set or not? Remember, if you are going to use the word, it is empty set, I will give left and right. The reason for that is, it is not a set, it is an empty dictionary. Remember that. Somewhere we covered. Square bracket, this is for list concept. Parenthesis, this is for tuple concept. Curly brace, open and close, for the set and the dict, for both curly brace, open and close. 
by the fall curly brace open and close is a dict dictionary but not a set remember have a look once where is the proof for that where is the proof for that sir type of yes can you please print a type of yes you are going to get a dict dict sir but not a set okay very dangerous point okay have a look once i'm trying to take yes only okay yes only okay print of type of yes print of type of yes okay c is equal to curly brace open and close print a type of yes okay what output we are going to get have you observed this is the dict type but not a set type by default it the dict type but not a set type sir then immediately you may ask okay sir why it is considered the dict type why it is not it is not set type very very simple reason for that why they gave the priority for dict sir suppose you assume that you are going to the bar have you ever visited bar ha ah, okay assume that you are going to the bar every day every day you will visit the bar you will take at least one bottle or two bottles and then you are coming sir you are every day regular customer to the bar by mistake one day you forgot the money you forgot the money then automatically what the bar people are going to do don't worry sir tomorrow anyway you are coming please pay tomorrow no issue special privilege will come for this repeated customer correct or not because he is uh, he the most frequent customer suppose i am going to the bar maybe yearly once assume that assume that yearly once on festival day one day i will go to the bar that day i forgot the money if the bar people are going to provide the alcohol for me no chance at all they want they want to provide because i am not regular customer so if you are regular person special privileges are available it is the common so among set and dict uchita most frequent user data type if you go for your python programming our hand is always going for dict only but not set set is very rarely used but dict is the most commonly used that's why python people gave the priority for the dict concept he is the regular drinker every day is going to the bar dict but the set is not that much frequently used okay well so that's why it is the dict sir okay well so sir just observe carefully curly brace open and close it is not a set it is a dictionary okay well then immediately you ask sir if it is the empty dictionary how i can create empty set how i can create empty set what is the way if you want to create empty set the option is yes is equal to set function you have to call set function you have to call now what is the type sir print a type of yes are you getting what is the type sir print a type of yes now it is treated as empty set sir okay set set how you can create empty set you require to use a set of function okay have a look once here yes is equal to set i'm taking type of yes yes is equal to set i'm taking type of yes type of yes what answer sir observe that class uh, set we are going to get is it clear for all of you right sir that's all let me print the content what the content is there nothing empty sir empty how it is going to represent empty set only empty content uh, empty set only remember that so how you can create empty set there is a special arrangement is available set function we require to call you can't use uh, just a curly brace open and close is it clear right next uh, the last very important point about the set sir what is the difference between list and the set most commonly used interview question for the for the interview room sir what is the difference between list and the set list and the set observe carefully sir list list order is important order will be preserved sir okay but uh, for the set uh, order is uh, not applicable order is not applicable second one sir duplicates duplicates are allowed allowed but in the case of set duplicates are not allowed not allowed next list we can represent list we can we can represent by using square brackets representation but 
we can represent a set uh, by using curly brace representation that's all if any person is asking the question what is the difference between list and set uh, in the list uh, duplicates are allowed but set duplicates are not allowed in the list order will be preserved but in the set order is not preserved here curly brace open and close is the representation for the set square bracket is the representation for the list right these are the things what you should aware everyone can get basic idea about list set tuple right okay very very important the difference between list and tuple the difference between list and the set okay how to create single valued tuple comma how to create empty set set function we have to call clear hi friends in the last videos we covered already list data type next tuple data type next and after that set data type we discussed sir i hope you people may remember well sir can you please tell when we should go for list matter of 2 minutes to continue further when we should go for list list duplicates are allowed remember this one list duplicates are allowed next list talks about order where the order is important what is the zeroth element what is the first element like indexing slicing all those things are applicable next for the list do you know it is the mutable mutable once uh, we can create list object happily we can perform add some elements remove some elements we can replace existing elements like happily we can do mutable right sir now the tuple we considered sir tuple exactly same as list exactly same as list uh, except that tuple is immutable are getting except that tuple is immutable once uh, we create tuple object we can't perform any changes in that tuple object it is the just a read only version of the list itself is the immutable right sir next uh, duplicates are allowed order is important indexing all those things are applicable okay now even i covered about set concept even i discussed about set set concepts sir take a bit very special care in the case of set uh, duplicates are not allowed are you getting in the case of set duplicates are not not allowed next uh, order order is not applicable remember order is not not applicable duplicates are not allowed order is not not applicable such type of requirement happily we can go for sets for the set indexing concept slice operator this type of terminology not applicable okay well sir now what is a frozen set are you getting what is the what is the frozen frozen set sir can you please tell what is the meaning of frozen sir frozen have you observed right frozen what is the meaning of frozen freeze freeze sir ice ice got freezed no one is going to change okay can't move it's always fixed something like frozen set means uh, frozen set exactly same as set exactly same as set uh, except that it is immutable remember this one sir frozen set exactly same as set uh, except that it is immutable the word frozen frozen means what immutable okay like suppose best example if i consider set uh, sir s is equal to 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 is there okay i'm taking the set set means curly brace story you know right now yes sir dot yard a 50 i'm taking sir i'm trying to yard 50 50 like sir yes sir dot remove yes sir dot remove of 30 i'm taking sir so once we create set object happily you can add some elements you can remove elements because it is always what mutable 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 means changeable now if i print yes uh, value what is the output we are going to get sir okay then 20 okay 40 50 is the answer but only one thing i can't give the guarantee order order i can't give the guarantee because it is the set sir sir clear indication set is mutable or immutable 
We respond, set is mutable or immutable? Yes, set is mutable. Happily, we are allowed to change the content. No problem at all, right? Okay. But the same thing, if I can do with the frozen set. How to create frozen set? Next, is it mutable or not? I have to show, sir. Sir, very, very simple. If, if I want to create frozen set, yes, what I am taking? Assume that I have set is there. I have some set is there, sir. Then comma 20, comma 30, comma 40 is there, sir. Okay. Now, frozen set, how to create frozen set is, we have to call inbuilt function frozen set of yes, sir. Fs is equal to frozen set of yes, sir. Now, frozen set is ready, ready, sir. Let me print a type of, type, type of f, yes, sir. What is the answer we are going to get? Just observe carefully. Here, assume that, assume that I have S is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40 is there, sir. Frozen set, Fs is equal to, I have to call frozen set, frozen, frozen set of yes, sir. Are you getting frozen set of yes, sir? Print of type of, type of Fs. What is the type of Fs, right? Like this I am taking. Now, let me execute this code, sir. If I execute this code, what is the answer we are getting, sir? It is the frozen set type. No problem at all. It is frozen, frozen set type. Now, now, sir, is it clear for all of right? How you can create frozen set object? We require to call what? Frozen set function by passing this yes, sir. Sir, now you are going to get frozen set object type. Now, I want to add, I want to add a new element to the frozen set. Add a 50 I am taking. Frozen set dot add a 50 I am taking. Sir, F, yes, dot remove of 30 I am taking, sir. Immediately, we are going to get error, sir. Error, immediately we are going to get error because there is no such type of add method, remove method because it is already what? It is immutable. You can't change the content. You can't add something. You can't remove something on the frozen set object. Immediately, we are going to get attribute error. Immediately, we will get one attribute error. There is no such type of add attribute. There is no such type of remove attribute like we are going to get. Clear for all of right? So, practical proof that frozen set is mutable or immutable? Immutable. No such type of adding capability. No such type of remove capability. Right? Have a look once. If I print, if I print F, yes. Sir, this is the previous example only. If I print F, yes. What is the answer we are going to get? Observe that. It is the frozen set of 40, 10, 20, 30. Are you, are you seeing right? Actually, I provided 10, 20, 30, 40. But here 40, 10, 20, 30. Because otherwise, no guarantee at all. Okay, like. Now, Fs dot, Fs dot, yard of 50 I am taking, sir. Fs dot, yard of 50 I am taking. Are you seeing attribute error? Frozen set object has no attribute yard. Frozen set object has no attribute yard. Yard, such type of capability is not there for the frozen set. Similarly, sir, I want to take instead of yard, Fs dot, remove of 30 I am taking, sir. Fs dot, remove, remove of 30 I am taking. Immediately attribute error we are going to get frozen set object has no attribute remove has no attribute remove like this we are going to get the error sir. so it's a very clear for you people what is frozen set what is the difference between set and frozen set set and frozen set both are same only difference is frozen set is frozen <laughs> what is the meaning of frozen sir immutable but set itself is nothing but what mutable concept clear friends any doubt about this one? Up to this, not required to keep any explanation. Next, uh, there is one small doubt for most of the people are going to ask, sir. What is that uh, doubt here is, do you know, sir, just uh, we completed tuple concept, tuple concept, tuple is immutable, tuple is immutable. Then, frozen set is also immutable, frozen set is also immutable. Then, what is the difference between tuple and the frozen set? Sir, only common point is both are immutable, but there are several differences are available. What is that difference is here, order preserved. Order 
preserved uh, regarding order is important but frozen set order not applicable remember this one order not applicable order insertion order not applicable next uh, second one tuple duplicates are allowed are uh, getting tuple duplicates are allowed allowed but what about frozen set can you please tell frozen set are set uh, duplicates are not allowed duplicates are not not allowed i hope clear next uh, third point sir if you consider duplicates are allowed duplicates are not allowed next uh, third indexing index uh, slice uh, operators are applicable slice uh, slice concepts are applicable applicable but uh, this one index uh, slicing such type of things are not applicable observe carefully sir so seems to be sir tuple and frozen set both are same both are same both are immutable but there are multiple differences are available one is list related terminology but second one is what set related here order is important next uh, duplicates are allowed but here other concept not applicable duplicates are not allowed there is a difference is there clear for all of you right so frozen set not usually commonly used data type just get the basic idea i hope it is enough sir what is the difference between set and the frozen set set is respond set is mutable what is the difference between tuple and frozen set similarity both are immutable but the differences multiple differences are available clear for all of you right sir up to this we covered about list list tuple set and then frozen set have you remembered frozen these are the four data types we discussed right but all these data types having some common point what is that common point is if you observe what is this one can you please spell out ha huh? immediately you have to tell square bracket representation it is the list sir if it is the tuple if it is the if it is the tuple 10 20 30 40 parenthesis next if it is the set uh, 10 20 30 40 okay like this right if it is the frozen set uh, internally how it is going to represent sir frozen set a uh, 10 20 30 40 like this it's going to represent if you print uh, this is the style we are going to get if you observe these uh, data types always talks about a group of individual objects a group of individual values sir this is the first value second value third value fourth value like so all these data types always talks about a group of individual objects but sometimes my requirement is to colon v2 second key value okay now k3 colon v3 like uh, you can take any number of key values which is uh, nothing but one dictionary the most commonly used data type in python man dictionary is also one of the commonly used data type only sir so just uh, let me go for a small chota example here i am taking 100 is the roll number and uh, corresponding name durga 100 durga like next uh, 200 i am taking the corresponding name sunny okay like i am taking sir 300 the corresponding name is uh, chinni like i am taking sir have you observed this is a dictionary itself is a dictionary sir 100 durga 200 sunny 300 chinni like uh, sir this is the key this is the value 200 is the key sunny is the value 300 is the key chinni itself is the value right if you want to represent a group of key value pairs then we require to go for what dict dictionary concept is it clear right sir let me execute this one let me show what type it is observe carefully sir here i am taking a simple example d is equal to 100 colon okay durga like this i'm taking sir next to 200 colon sunny like like i'm taking sir 300 colon okay some chinni like like i'm taking sir chinni chinni like this i'm taking so how many key value pairs are there three sir first key value pair observe carefully this is the first key value pair next the second key value next the third key value pair like uh, total three key value pairs are available 
print ah type of d print ah type of d if i can take what is the answer we are going to get sir itself is the dict dict itself is the dict data type right sir any doubt about this sir, terminology right so what is the dict how to how to declare what is the syntax for the dict when we should go for dict data type now the terminology is the very clear now observe i hope you are getting clear clarity what is the dict sir sir how you can create dict just now i told this is the way observe carefully sir d is equal to sir 100 100 colon durga okay like this is the first key value 200 colon okay ravi like this i can i can take this is one style sir if you know all key values at the beginning happily you can you can create like this but sometimes my requirement is array can you please create empty dictionary and then you can add the key value like this is about my requirement right how you can do that d is equal to curly brace open and close sir just uh, i created empty dictionary sir by default curly brace open and close what is this type dictionary but not set a type remember sir it is empty dictionary now i want to add the key value one key value what is the option sir very very simple d of d of sir key d of key is equal is is equal to value like uh, this is the syntax right if you want to add one key value to the dictionary d of key is equal to value automatically this key value by default will be added to the dictionary right now d of hundred Durga, D of 100, Durga. So, 100 Durga will be added to the dictionary. Similarly, D of 200, Ravi, like this I am taking, sir. 200, Ravi, Ravi, like this I am taking. Sir, now, how many key values are added to the dictionary? Two key values, right? Now, print of D, sir. What is the answer we are going to get is, remember that, here, 100 colon durga 100 colon durga 200 colon ravi like this we are going to get but one important rule what you people should be aware otherwise no guarantee in the dictionary remember this one sir in the dictionary all key value pairs will be added based on hash code of the keys okay so internally for every object hash code is there based on that the entries by default will be added as of now so don't worry about this hashing just aware only one point sir yes order is not important in the dictionary remember that have a look once this style let me create object here I'm taking D is equal to empty. What I'm trying to do, can you please spell out? Just I'm creating empty dictionary, right? Now, D of 100, D of 100 is equal to Durga I'm taking. One key value pair by default added. If you want, just observe print of D. Print of D. One key value pair I added. Print of D is a 100 colon Durga. Like this we are going to get. Sir, now, now I'm taking d of 200 d of 200 colon ravi sir now second key value also i added sir now observe sir how many key values i added to the dictionary two key values first key value second key value right so if you want to represent a group of objects as key value pairs then our hand should go for what dictionary list uh, stuple set uh, frozen set these uh, things are meant uh, for individual objects but here we require to go for what uh, this concept itself is a dictionary concept but here make sure there are some small small loopholes are given in the dictionary in the dictionary can you please tell what these are things 100 and 200 please confirm 100 and 200 these things are what keys keys and durga ravi these are things are what values values right key value okay right now my question here is duplicate keys allowed or not allowed are you getting duplicate keys allowed or not allowed very important points are duplicate keys are not allowed but the values can be duplicated no problem at all duplicate keys are not allowed but values can be duplicated then immediately if i'm trying to insert one key value pair which where duplicate key 
what will happen sir observe that are 100 and 200 keys are already available now d of 100 is equal to shiva i'm taking sir d of 100 is equal to shiva i'm trying to take if i can take d of 100 is equal to shiva what will happen respond friends what will happen if the duplicate keys are allowed or not allowed not allowed then can i get error or not ayyo respond very important so in dictionary duplicate keys are not allowed if you are trying to insert an entry with a duplicate key one key value pair with a duplicate key key is already available what will happen sir will get error will get error or any other scenario okay very simple we won't get any error okay so if you are not going to get error then this key value will be added no 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 what will happen is if this key already available then what is the value associated with this hundred durga durga is the value associated with this hundred if the key already available then old value replaced with the, this a new value remember this one old value will be replaced with the new value sir if you print uh, print of d what is the output we are going to get sir very simple 100 earlier 100 associated with which person sir durga but now 100 associated with the shiva comma 200 associated with the ravi like this right so it's a very clear duplicate keys are not allowed if you are trying to add a duplicate key old value will be replaced with the new value we won't get any error remember that entry person may ask oh, in the dictionary duplicate keys are allowed or not allowed not allowed if i'm trying to insert duplicate key am i going to get error or not no old value will be replaced with the new value okay let me show this one have a look once sir already i have two key values are there two key value pairs are available in my dictionary sir 100 ravi durga 100 200 ravi is there sir now my question is observe very carefully sir i am trying to take d of 100 is equal to shiva like this i am taking print of d i am taking sir so earlier i am trying to print now i am trying to print what will happen sir observe the difference observe the difference in both outputs right first time 100 100 associated with durga but now 100 associated with the shiva very very important point sir in dictionary duplicate keys are not allowed if you are trying to insert a duplicate key what will happen old value will be replaced with the new value friends everyone got clearly right okay well so you know this dict concept available in other languages also best example in java we can use the word map map concept in java but in python we are going to use what dict dict concept right sir next from this discussion can you please tell what are various important conclusions about this dictionary sir so the first thing meant for representing a group of key value pairs if you want to represent a group of key value pairs then we require to go for okay dictionary concept next the order will be preserved or not no guarantee at all okay order not applicable remember this one next the duplicate keys allowed or not the duplicate keys ah, can you please spell out duplicate keys allowed or not allowed not allowed but duplicate values allowed or not yes values you can take a duplicate values you can take no problem at all duplicate keys are not allowed but values can be duplicated so where is the proof how you can feel duplicate values observe this have a look once sir i'm taking here see this d is equal to 100 colon durga durga 200 colon durga okay 300 colon durga 
Durga. Sir, how many key value pairs are there? Three key value pairs. But uh, sir, keys are different. Uh, keys are different, but values are always the same. Values are same. No issue at all. Because duplicate keys are duplicate values are allowed, allowed. But I'm not taking any duplicate keys. Acceptable. Let me execute this code. Yes. 100 Durga, 200 Durga, 300 Durga. Acceptable. Remember this one, sir. So duplicate keys not allowed. Values can be duplicated, right? Next, the uh, heterogeneous objects. Hetero, heterogeneous objects. Heterogeneous objects means uh, different type of objects allowed for both keys and values. Keys should be same type. Value should be same type. No such type of terminology. Keys are different types you can take. Values you can take different types. Acceptable, right? Next, uh, very, very important terminology. Can you please tell either dicta, either mutable or immutable? Your response, is it mutable or immutable? Sir, mutable, because you can add something, you can add something, you can replace something, all the possibilities you use are already. That's why it is uh, mutable. Next, uh, yes, uh, order is uh, not important. That's why indexing, slicing, indexing, slicing, these concepts are not applicable for the dict. Remember this one, indexing concept, slicing concept, these are things are not applicable, right? Now, the terminology is the very clear for you people. Now, everyone got the basic idea, what is the dict concept? Sir, here, this is just a overview, basic idea, but the dict concept we are going to discuss, minimum three to four hours, uh, there we are going to explore API, next uh, dictionary comprehension, like uh, multiple things are available there we have to discuss in detail with examples my intention is everyone should get basic idea about all possible data types which are there in the python for that i'm talking about this any doubt clear right Sir, in the last videos, we covered very clearly about dict dict data type. Sir, now the next data type, the most commonly used data type in Python is a range, range data type, sir. What is that? Can you please spell out, sir? Range data type. Sir, now can you please spell what is a range? Okay, range. A range of numbers, sir a sequence of numbers. I want to represent numbers from 0 to 10. Assume that, sir. Or I want to represent numbers from 100 to 1000. Okay, like. So, if you want to represent a sequence of numbers, a range of numbers, then we have to go for range data type. Remember this one, sir. So, how you can create range object, range data type object, sir? Very, very simple. Just a basic idea sake. Let me, let me take, sir. Here, R is equal to range. Range is the Python inbuilt data type. Range R, then I'm taking. Assume that, sir. So, can you please represent range of first 10 numbers are you getting range of first 10 numbers how many arguments are there only one argument what is that argument i passed sir 10 10 do you know it represents a sequence of values from 0 to uh, please confirm 0 to sir total how many values 10 values 0 to 9 0 to 9. If you want to represent, sir, a sequence of numbers from 0 to 9, yes, sir, this is the way, sir. Where is the proof? How you can conclude it contains 0 to 9? Very simple. Of course, first let me show what is the type. Print type of R. Print type of R. Now you are going to get what? Range. Range type, sir. Let me, let me cross check up to this. Have a look once, sir. Here, if I, if I consider, if I consider R is equal to range of, then I'm taking, sir, print of type of R. Print of type of R, type of R, like this I'm taking. What is the output we are going to get, sir? If you observe, this is the range type. Are you getting what is the type, sir? This is the range, range type, sir, we are going to get. Okay, well, sir, now my requirement is, I want to print uh, which values are there 
in this range of data type in this in this range object which values are there i want to i want to print sir very simple sir if you print uh, print uh, of r what is the output you are going to get you never going to get 0 to 9 it is going to tell range of range of 0 to 10 like this we are going to get the output sir okay like. sir let me cross check let me let me cross check here print of print of just the r i'm taking print of r r i'm taking sir if i can take like what is the answer sir range of 0 to 10 range of 0 to 10 like this we are going to get but now my requirement is i want to get the values present inside this range object how you can get the values present inside so we have to go for loops concept okay for loop why loop like python having these are things uh, we will discuss in the next level in the flow control but anyway just give it let me use very simple sir for for each x value in r so in this range object every x value every x value can you please print every x value can you please print observe every x value present inside r can you please print out that x value first x value zero next x value one next x value two so what is the output we are going to get sir zero one two three and so on nine we are going to get this is the output sir are you getting the point? 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. 9 up to that we are going to get. Let me, let me cross check. Sir, don't worry. Even you don't know about for loop. I will discuss in detail in the flow control just everywhere. Sir, for every x value present inside this R, can you please print the x value? Like now, observe. Here I am taking. Here, here I am trying to take. R is equal to. For each x in R, in R, can you please print off R? For each X in R, can you please print off R, R like this, right? Now observe, what is the, can you please print off X value, not R, X value. Can you please print X value like, sir, observe that. What is the answer we are getting, sir? 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Up to, up to 9, 0 to 9 we are going to get. So, this is nothing but range data type. I hope everyone in the position to understand, right? What is the range, range data type? Very, very important point. If you want to represent a sequence of numbers, a range of numbers, then we have to go for what? Range data type. Sir, now, how to create range object? How you can create range object? What are various options are available? Okay, very simple, sir. The first option is, we use it just now. Whatever the option we are using, this is the first option, sir. Have a look once. Form 1. Form 1. Observe that carefully. Sir, range of, range of, n n how many arguments only one argument how many arguments we are passing only one argument passing so it uh, represent it uh, represent a sequence of numbers from from 0 to 9 remember this one it represent a sequence of numbers from 0 to n minus 1 0 to n minus 1 observe very very carefully sir it represent a sequence of numbers from 0 to n minus 1 okay like sir now observe that here r is equal to range of 10 range of 10 so it represent values from 0 to 9 okay r is equal to range of 100 100 if i can take it represent values from 0 to 99 observe like this right sir this is the first format whatever we used just i explain with an example also but sometimes my requirement is hey i don't want from 0 i want from 1 to 10 or i want from 10 to 20 so if you want uh, from 10 to 20 or 1 to 10 so begin not zero always my own number how you can do that is form 2 are you getting right what is this format sir form 2 okay now range of sir begin begin 
comma end like you have to specify so begin number what begin number you want what is the end number you want it returns it represent a sequence of numbers from begin to end minus 1 remember this one begin to end minus 1 if i can take r is equal to range of 1 to 10 can you please tell which values are going to be represented respond which values are going to be represented 1 to 10 1 to 10 means 1 comma 10 begin to uh, begin 1 to end minus 1 Ten minus one means nine only. One to nine. Where is the proof? Where is the proof? Use for loop. For each x in R, print of x value. Print of x value. Now you are going to get one to nine only. Observe. Let me execute this code. Observe carefully, sir. Here I am trying to take. Here see this one. R is equal to range of one to ten. One to ten. print of here just the for x in r for x in r print of x value for x in r print of x value like this i am taking what is the answer we are going to get sir have you observed right now observe very carefully 1 to 9 1 to 9 we are getting the answer 1 to 9 only we are getting the things okay like right? sir i don't want 1 to 9 I want one to ten. If you want one to ten, what is the way we have to take? Yes, R is equal to range R. I want one to ten value. Ten value also. Then you have to take one to eleven. Remember this one. One to eleven. Then obviously we are going to get one to eleven minus one means ten. We are going to represent. Is it clear for all of you? Right? So, if you want to represent a range of numbers from begin to end, then we have to go for form two. Okay? Any explanation is required? Clear, right? So, form one and form two. Next, observe carefully. For form one, how many arguments we pass? Sir, huh, respond. For form one, how many arguments we pass? Sir, one. But form two, how many arguments we are passing? Two arguments, right? Next obviously for form three, how many arguments we have to pass? Yeah, for form three, how many arguments we require to pass? Three arguments, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, have a look once here. Form three, I'm taking sir. What is that? Is range of range range of begin begin end begin end third one increment or decrement value increment R. Decrement value, increment R, decrement value, begin end increment R, decrement value like this, right? Sir, what it means? How much increment you want? Just with example, I will explain so that you will get much clarity. Observe very carefully, sir. R is equal to range A, one comma ten, one comma one comma, sir here one comma twenty one comma one. I am taking. So the default value increment and decrement is always one only. So means that first print one, one to twenty. Have you observed one to twenty? Every time increment by one. Every time increment by one means that one increment by one means two increment by one means three. So what is the answer? One to three and so on. Up to twenty, we are going to get. Remember this one, sir. So one, two, three, like this, right? Every time increment by one. So one increment by one means two. Two increment by one means three. Something like this, right? Okay, well. Now the next one. Okay, R is equal to range of range of one comma twenty one comma two. I'm taking one comma twenty one comma two two. I'm taking, sir. Every time increment by two, so first one will be will be considered. Next up one increment by two means uh, three, three, five, seven, nine like this, right? Are getting every time increment by two means uh, this is the possibility. Similarly, R is equal to range of one to twenty one three sir three. Every time increment by three, increment by three, one, one. So three increment by three means uh, 
4 4 increment by 3 means uh, 7 7 increment by 3 means uh, 10 okay 13 like it's going to represent is it clear for all of right what the meaning of one increment two increment three increment right let me show this one have a look once a sir sir just observe no? r is equal to range of 1 to 21 comma 1 increment by 1 so it will represent 1 to 20 every time with one increment okay where is the proof for that for x in r can you please print x value like this right now have a look once sir what is the output we are going to get one one two three and so on up to 20 one to 20 we are going to get sir okay well sir now my target is sir now i want to take increment by two sir one if i increment by two it will become three three increment by two it will become five now which values we are going to get sir one three five seven nine like we are going to get let me cross check sir let me let me cross check yes what is the answer we are going to get one three five seven eleven okay like we are going to get okay well sir now increment by three increment by three now observe so starts from one one increment by three will become four four increment by three will become seven seven increment by three will become ten ten are you getting right so this is the increment value right okay one four seven ten thirteen like we are going to get observe that one four seven ten thirteen sixteen nineteen up to that we are going to get sir sir i want to take increment by four okay one if i increment by four it will become five five increment by four nine nine increment by four thirteen 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 increment by four seventeen seventeen increment by four twenty one twenty one is not in the range one five nine thirteen seventeen only one five nine thirteen seventeen like this sir everyone in the position to understand how you can use the three arguments right sir begin end and then increment or decrement sir now this decrement value is it possible or not yes friends why not it's possible now let me take range of 21 comma 1 21 comma 1 now i'm trying to take minus 5 are you getting 20 20 to 1 minus 5 so first 20 20 and then 20 minus 5 its value is 15 15 minus 5 its value is uh, 10 okay like sir now i want to represent i want to take decrement value 5 sir decrement value minus 5 minus 5 20 minus 5 means uh, minus 15 15 minus 5 means uh, uh, 10 10 minus 5 means 5 like we are going to get so observe that what is the first value is going to represent 20 next uh, minus 5 minus 5 means uh, do you know sir 15 minus 5 10 next uh, minus 5 5 like we are going to get sir okay observe carefully here what we are going to get here is sir here my answer is 22 one i'm taking 20 to 1 increment or decrement minus 5 i'm taking sir minus 5 i'm trying to take what is the output we are going to get here is 20 15 10 sir 5 like this we are going to get so even this increment or decrement third argument can be decremented value also no problem at all is it clear for all of right so total how many forms are available for the range range data type range with one argument from begin 0 to n minus 1 range with two arguments begin to n minus 1 next range with three arguments begin value end value and then increment or decrement any doubt up to this clear right now by this time you got very clear clarity about range type next the last important point is there related to the range can you please tell what is range sir range means a sequence of values are you getting a sequence a sequence of numbers like like this one sir once we are using the word sequence compulsory order will be there first value second value third value like order order is there once order is there 
indexing concept slicing concepts applicable for the range remember indexing is applicable slicing is also applicable right best example if you consider r is equal to range of 10 to 21 so range of 10 to 21 means uh, it is going to represent 10 11 12 up to up to 20 begin to n minus 1 okay well sir what is the first value the value which is locating at zero index uh, is uh, let me print uh, print of r of zero indexing is applicable r of zero what the answer we are going to get sir 10 perfect 10 we are going to get sir print of r of minus one r of minus one what answer we are going to get sir last value 20 we will get okay r of minus one means last value 20 we are going to get similarly if you want to use you can use slice operator also first let me execute up to this observe carefully sir here i am taking r is equal to range of r is equal to range range of here i am trying to take 10 comma 21 like this right okay print of r of 0 r of 0 what answer we are going to get sir print of r of 0 what is the answer 10 10 itself is the answer are you getting 10 itself is the answer sir sir print of r of minus 1 i'm taking last value last value obviously 20 is the answer we are going to get so indexing concept applicable for the for the range data type similarly if you want you can apply sir what the slice operator also but very rare we are going to use observe that carefully so r1 is equal to r of r of slice operator i want to take so i want uh, from 1 to 5 sir from 1 index to 1 index to n minus 1 means fourth index 1 index to fourth fourth index like this i'm asking 1 index means 11 sir 11 huh? 1 2 okay here 11 12 13 14 15 16 and so on 20 sir this is the one index sir 2 3 and then 4 means 11 to 14 11 to 14 i want uh, sir for for each x value in r1 in r1 slice operator returns the range object only print of x value what output i have to get sir 11 12 13 14 am i going to get r none let me cross check man here see for each x in r1 print of x okay like sir here r1 is equal to r1 is equal to r of r of 1 to 5 are you getting r of 1 to 5 for each x in r1 print of x value print of x value like this right what is the answer sir 11 12 13 14 we are going to get same expected answer only so once order is important obviously index concept applicable slicing concept is also applicable any doubt up to this right clear next the uh, one more important point you have to aware what is that point is now legion range is always going to represent a sequence of numbers uh, something like 10 11 12 13 14 and so on 20 okay like this is the range right sir now r of 0 means 10 sir okay r of 1 means uh, r of 1 means 11 11 like sir now what i want to take r of 1 i want to replace with the thousand r of 1 r of 1 i want to replace with the thousand sir observe carefully r of 1 i want to replace with the thousand is it allowed or not allowed sir after 10 is it instead of 11 thousand under then 12 under then 13 meaningless are you getting once it's a sequence of numbers sir how you can add thousand in the middle that's why range object is immutable once we create range object you can't change its content by mistake if you are trying to change the content immediately python virtual machine will give left and right observe carefully right let me cross check sir here my r r is 
just the R is 10 to 21. Print of R of 0, R of 0, what output you are going to get? Sorry, R of 1, what is the value? 11, 11 is the answer, sir. 11, 11 I am getting. Okay, well, R of 1 means 11. Now, now R of 1 is equal to, sir, 1000 I am trying to take. Observe very, very carefully, sir. Immediately error you are going to get. Type error, type error. Range object does not support item assignment. Range object does not support item assignment. Everything is clear, right? So range, range data type, either mutable or immutable. Range data type is immutable. We can't change its content. That's all, sir. These are various things you people should be aware about range data type. But it's most commonly used type everywhere. My hand is always going for range, range, range only. You should have clear class about three forms whatever range even if you are planning for microsoft certification minimum five to six questions you are going to see with the range data type that's why take a bit very special care about this one sir next uh, here so let me summarize the conclusions what we have if you want to represent a sequence of numbers then we have to go for range data type next how many how many forms of range data type is there range with one argument range with the two arguments range with the three arguments range with the three arguments like this right so three forms are available next uh, order is important that's why index concept is applicable slice concept is applicable next uh, range compulsory do you know here it is immutable you can't change the content uh, once we created sir. That's all. These are some important points related to range. Clear for all of you, right? Sir, in the last video, we covered very clearly about the range, range data types. Sir. sir, now the next thing what I have to discuss, mm. bytes data type. Sir, it's, all, it's not that much frequently user type, but you people should aware very simple data type, sir. If you want to represent a group of byte values, I want to represent a group of byte, byte values, just like array, array's concept in other languages. I want to represent a group of byte values. Then we have to go for bytes data type. Sir, how you can create bytes type, what properties are there? Observe very carefully, sir. L is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40 is there. What is the value? L is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40 is there, sir. Now, is it, is it the bytes? <laughs> it is the list. Square bracket convention is there. It is the list, list, right? Now, B is equal to bytes of L. B is equal to bytes of L. So, if you want to create bytes object, you have to call inbuilt function. What is that function, sir? Bytes, bytes of L. Sir, now print of type of B, sir. Print of type of B, type of B like this. What is the answer we are going to get, sir? Yes, it is uh, bytes type we are going to get. Let me show this one. Have a look once, sir. sir. Here I am taking L is equal to L is equal to 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40. B is equal to bytes of L. B is equal to bytes bytes of L, sir. Sir, now print a type of B, sir. Print of type of B, B like this I am taking. What is the answer we are going to get, sir? Have you observed? This is a bytes type. Remember this one. This is what type, sir? Bytes. Bytes type we are, we are going to get. Okay? Well. Sir, now I want to print all values present inside this B. All values present inside this B, sir. What that option? For, for each X value in B, sir. For each X value in B. Print of X for each X value in B. Can you please print of X? Print of X like this. What is the answer, sir? 10, 20, 30, 
30 40 by default we are going to get just you know for loop sir we will discuss in detail about loops concept in the flow control there i will explain just here for every element present inside b can you please print that element up to that you should aware have a look once can i get the same thing or not okay for each x in b can you please print half b sir print of b b like this i'm taking can you observe what is the answer we are going to get sir here not the b i want to print x value not binary data i want to print x x value sir now here do you know what answers are 10 20 30 40 by default we are going to get 10 20 30 40 we are going to get sir so it's very clear for you people how you can create bytes object okay like sir where this type of data type is very helpful if you want to handle binary data like images video files audio files like binary data if you want to handle compulsory we should go for bytes data type and byte array types remember that but here two important conclusions are there about these bytes types are so how to create what is the type how to print it clear now just that there are two conclusions are available related to this one sir first conclusion here how many values are represented four values 10 20 30 40 that's all so bytes a data type can represent values values only from values only from 0 to 250 huh, 0 to 256 or 255 yes friends can you please spell out 0 to 255 or 256 0 to 255 only remember this one I get it not 256 byte sir values only from 0 to 255 only by mistake if you are trying to add any other value immediately we are going to get error sir observe carefully L is equal to 10 20 30 40 256 I'm taking sorry 256 is not allowed value if I'm trying to create bytes of L I want to convert this list into bytes type what will happen sir have a look once error we are going to get so here have a look look once about this one sir sir 30 10 20 30 40 256 I'm taking are getting 256 I'm taking sir what will happen is observe very carefully sir 256 i'm taking what will happen is sir value error value error bytes must be in the range range of uh, are you are you seeing right range of 0 to 256 0 to 256 range function means just now we covered 0 to 255 only so if you are using any other value we are going to get value error remember this one sir okay well sir suppose instead of 256 uh, 255 i'm taking sir yes then we are not going to get any error up to 255 it is allowed sir if you are taking 256 257 like any other value immediately we are going to get error so conclusion one so in the bytes data type the values must be within the range 0 to 255 only other than that if you are taking immediately which error we are getting Huh? please spell out which error we are getting value error okay value value error we are going to get this is the first conclusion what we have one more conclusion is there about this bytes data type sir what is that other conclusion is compulsory okay bytes data type is uh, sir is it mutable or immutable okay mutable or immutable sir one 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 point you should evade so bytes data type is it mutable or immutable yes immutable you can't change its content but anyway sequence of values order is there index is there slicing is there but you can't change its values now observe this one sir here i'm taking so print of b of zero let me write complete code so that you may get much clarity sir here l is equal to 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 friends 10 20 30 40 now print of l of zero oh, sorry let me convert into byte 
B is equal to bytes of L. B is equal to bytes of L. Now, let me print B of 0. B of 0, 10, 10 we are going to get. What is the value? 10 we are getting. Sir, now B of 0 is equal to, is equal to some 77 I am taking. It is a within the range only. 0 to 255 only. Within the range only. But still, it is not going to be accepted. What is the reason for that? Yes, bytes data type is immutable. Once we can, we create bytes object, we can't change its content. By mistake, if you are trying to change its content, immediately error we are going to get. Everyone can able to understand, right? Have a look once, sir. Here, yeah, I am taking just uh, this is uh, bytes type. Bytes time print of b of 0 i'm trying to take sir print b of 0 what the answer sir 10 10 perfectly 10 we are going to get now b of 0 is equal to double 7 i'm taking 77 in the range only 0 to 255 only now observe that what the answer we are getting type error bytes object does not support item assignment are you getting bytes object does not support item assignment like a type error we are going to get sir are you getting what is this error we will get type error we are going to get so these are the two important conclusions you should aware about bytes type the valid range 0 to 255 only allowed elements in the bytes next uh, bytes uh, indexing concept slicing concept applicable but mutability you can't change it is immutable by default any doubt clear right Yes, up to this, it's very clear for you people about bytes data type. Now the next data type, what we have is byte array, sir. Then immediately we ask, sir, what is the difference between bytes and byte array? Very simple. Bytes data type, byte array, both are same, only one difference. What is the difference? Yes, bytes is by default immutable. Immutable bytes, I want a mutable bytes, then we require to go for byte array. Byte array is mutable, bytes is immutable. Okay, like, sir, now how you can create? Very, very simple. L is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40 is there. How to create byte, byte, bytes object? By using bytes function. How to create byte array object? Okay. B is equal to byte array. B is equal to byte array of L. So, how you can create byte array? By using byte array function, right? Okay, like byte array is, the, is there. Now, let me print the values present inside this byte array okay very simple l print of b of 0 what is the answer sir 10 print of b of minus 1 what is the answer sir 40 we are going to get observe carefully right now have a look once i am trying to create Sir, L is equal to, L is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, sir. Now, B is equal to byte array, byte array, array of L, sir. Okay. Let me print the type of, print the type of B, sir. Let me print the type of B. Observe carefully. What is the, what is the type, sir? Byte array. Are you getting, what is the type we are getting? Byte array, like this, right? Now, what is the first element in that? Sir, I am trying to take B, B of 0. B of 0. The answer is 10. 10. Okay, B of 1, 1, minus 1 I am taking. Last element, sir, 40 we are getting. 40 we are, we are trying to get, sir. So, it is very clear for you people how to create, how to create byte array like this, right? Sir, now, first thing. Here the values also should be in the range 0 to 255 only. If the value is not within the range, immediately you are going to get value error. Let me cross check. Have a look once, sir. By mistake, by mistake, 256 is there. 256 is there, sir. What will happen? 256 is there. What will happen? Immediately, immediately value error we are going to get. 
byte must be in the range 0 to 256 means sir 0 to 255 range like uh, this is the one one thing right if i can take 255 acceptable acceptable no problem at all first element is the 10 last element is the 255 like it's a perfectly valid side so the first conclusion is very clear so the range compulsory should be within this range of elements only next second very important sir by its type we discussed uh, is it immutable or mutable immutable bytes but a byte array is the mutable happily you can change the content no problem at all sir where is the proof for that very simple very simple sir b of 0 is the 10 b of minus 1 is the 40 now i'm taking b of 0 is equal to 77 b of 0 is equal to 77 if it is the byte array acceptable if it is the bytes type it is not acceptable sir now where is the proof for that let me print for each x in b print b value print x value sir for every element present inside byte array can you please print x now definitely 77 you are going to get sir 77 20 30 40 like you are going to get this output sir means that byte array is modifiable can be changeable that's why byte array is what mutable or immutable respond mutable or immutable byte array is mutable clear let me show this one have a look once sir sir let me remove this total 255 i don't want that's all this is now sir here b of 0 is equal to 77 i'm taking sir for each x in b let me print x value sir for each x in b print of x like this i'm taking have you observed what is the answer sir 77 20 30 40 means that 10 replacer with the 77 okay like so can you please spell out bytes is immutable byte array is the mutable maybe a chance to ask in the interview room what is the difference between bytes and byte array bytes is immutable byte array is mutable okay like sir where you can use these data types very rare if you are going to handle binary data okay like images video files audio files then compulsory these data types must be required clear right now i have one small point can you please clarify we discussed about list concept, we discussed about tuple concept, set concept, frozen set concept, frozen, frozen set concept, dict concept we covered, dict, now range concept we covered, next the byte, bytes concept, byte array. All these data types we discussed sir. Sir, now list is mutable or immutable? Respond. List is the mutable or immutable? List is mutable. Mutable, changeable. Tuple is uh, immutable. Tuple is immutable. Next, uh, set. Can you please tell? Mutable or not? Yes, mutable. Frozen set. Immutable. The name itself indicates right. Frozen. Sir, freeze. Freeze. You can't change. Freeze. Okay, you can't change. Frozen set immutable. Dict. Dictionary. Mutable mutable range immutable range you can't change the content because it's the sequence of values always bytes immutable bytes immutable next uh, byte array is the mutable like this right okay just aware this anyway at last i will cover one summary diagram where we have to discuss about all these things don't worry sir clear for all of you right up to this bytes and byte array type hi friends in the last videos we covered very clearly what are various data types present inside python fundamental data types we covered next a list a tuple set a frozen set range a dictionary like all data types we discussed right sir let me summarize all these data types into a small table form so that you people will get much clarity on the subject okay have a look once sir sir what the fields are included sir first one data type data type almost around 13 data types just i'm adding sir int float 
complex bool str these things are fundamental data types of python next list tuple set frozen set dict bytes byte array okay like these things are extra data types what we have now description description next is it immutable or not next order insertion order preserved or not order is there or not next indexing concept slicing concept applicable or not next duplicates are allowed or not so with respect to these properties i want to compare these 13 data types so that i'm sure you people will get much clarity and even it acts as a revision also just observe carefully sir sir what is the first data type int what is the description for the int type sir just to represent to represent whole values are you getting just to represent whole numbers or integral numbers whole all numbers right the numbers without any decimal point then we require to go for int best example a is equal to 10 are you getting this number not having any decimal point like okay well sir is it immutable or not yes observe that all fundamental data types are immutable that's why it is uh, immutable okay like sir order preserved or not because fundamental data types represent single value if uh, multiple values are there then we have to talk about order duplicates indexing like uh, but this is a single value that's why so order concept indexing concept next to duplicates are allowed or not not applicable remember this one so these things are applicable for collection related data structures right not for fundamental types okay well sir now second one float sir if you want to represent floating point values to represent to represent floating point values floating floating point values we require to go for float data types sir best example floating point value means what the number with the decimal point okay like uh, a is equal to 10.234 a is equal to 10.234 this type of number is by default considered as floating point number sir all fundamental data types are immutable that's why so float is the immutable or not immutable worry about the insertion order not applicable indexing not applicable duplicates concept not applicable because this is not a collection it is a single value okay like sir now complex complex to represent to represent complex numbers to represent complex complex numbers we require to go for we require to go for complex time sir a is equal to 10 plus 20 j are you getting a is equal to 10 plus 20 j these type of numbers are called complex number all complex numbers are immutable i mean so fundamental data types are immutable that's why immutable sir it is also single value that's why duplicates concept order concept indexing concept such a type of terminology not applicable okay like sir now bool type okay to represent uh, logical values to represent logical logical values logical values we require to go for bool data types are the only allowed values for the boolean data type are true and the false remember this one sir so now a is equal to true are you getting a is equal to true compulsory capital t you should aware b is equal to false like uh, these are the only possible values for the boolean data type sir sir bool data type bool object is immutable or not yes obviously all fundamental data type objects are immutable it is also single value either true or false where is the question of order indexing and so on not applicable order is not applicable indexing not applicable duplicates are not applicable right okay well sir now str take a bit very special case sir to represent a sequence of characters to represent 
to represent a sequence a sequence of characters to represent a sequence of characters we should require to go for str type okay s is equal to durga s is equal to durga durga a sequence of characters either within single quotes or double quotes is by default considered as string even triple quotes story is also applicable for multi line string literals concept right okay well sir now is it immutable or not yes it is always immutable sir next uh, it is a single object uh, that's why order such a type of terminology not applicable but uh, indexing in the string uh, if you want to access characters first character second character like yes indexing concept applicable man happily you can apply index string python provide support for both positive and negative index slicing concept is also applicable that's why it is valid sir what about duplicate duplicate not applicable this concept because it is a single object not multiple objects that's why duplicate such a type of terminology not applicable one speciality for the string if you want to access a single character by using index we can access if you want to access a group of character something like sub string sub string then we require to go for what slice operator right okay well sir that's all these are first of five fundamental data types what we have all fundamental data types are immutable remember that carefully sir okay well now list sir when we should require to, when we should go for list to represent yarn ordered yarn ordered collection of objects i want to represent an ordered collection of objects if you want to represent a group of objects according to order 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 then we require to go for list how you can represent sir whenever we are using the list compulsory square bracket 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 something like within square brackets we can represent it is the list sir sir list is immutable or not once we create list object happily we can perform any changes in that object that's why it is not immutable means it is a mutable mutable right sir now insertion order preserved or not yes in which order we added elements to the list same order only inside memory will be stored that's why insertion order preserved remember this one insertion order preserved preserved right sir indexing concept once order is there which is the first element second element like indexing slicing such a type of concept applicable okay duplicate objects are allowed or not yes duplicate object are allowed allowed no problem at all so here insertion order preserved duplicate objects are allowed so if you want that then we require to go for what list the concept okay well sir what about tuple tuple sir so it is a exactly same as a list but only difference is read only version that's why a read only read only version of list read only version of list are you going read only version of list itself is nothing but tuple sir how you can represent a tuple okay 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 within parenthesis we are going to represent i hope you people aware within parenthesis we have to represent sir sir now is it immutable or not what is the answer you can tell is it immutable tuple is immutable list is immutable yes it is a uh, immutable it is the immutable sir next the order will be preserved or not yes which is the first element which is the second element like a uh, order concept is applicable next the uh, indexing and the slicing sir is it applicable or not yes perfectly valid sir because order is there automatically indexing and slicing applicable next the uh, is the duplicates are allowed or not allowed yes duplicates are allowed because internally it is the list okay remember that so this is about the tuple sir sir what about set what about set yarn unordered yarn unordered collection of unique objects yarn unordered collection of unique objects unique objects means sir where 
order is not important next one duplicates are not allowed unique objects unique objects then we require to go for set concepts sir so what is the example for that s is equal to within curly brace 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 like this i'm taking s is equal to 10 20 30 40 like sir so now set e is mutable or immutable set e is mutable observe very carefully sir mutable next insertion order preserved or not sir order such a type of concept for the set are not applicable that's why no no such a type of terminology sir what about indexing and slicing no sir no indexing and slicing concepts are not applicable not applicable for the set sir what about duplicates duplicates are not allowed are getting duplicates are not allowed like this right so what is the main important property of sets sir okay duplicates are not allowed order is not preserved then we require to go for set concept frozen set means uh, read only version of set okay read only read only version of set read only version of set sir so for the set uh, which is freezed uh, which you are not going to perform any modifications such a type of freezed set uh, is uh, nothing but frozen set sir how you can get a frozen set sir f s is equal to frozen set uh, of you can pass any set okay frozen set of yes if you pass now frozen set by default you are going to get sir is it immutable or mutable frozen set is always immutable concept are you getting frozen set is always immutable order will be preserved or not no such a type of terminology because it is internally set sir next uh, indexing such a type of terminology not applicable duplicates are not allowed in the frozen set because internally it is the set only remember are you getting right so set frozen set what is the difference set is mutable frozen set is immutable except that all the remaining are same what is the difference between list and two list is mutable tuple is immutable remember that next what about dict sir dict if you want to represent a group of objects as key value pairs then we require to go for dict sir to represent to represent key value key value pairs are you getting to represent key value pair pairs we require to go for dict concept right sir how you can write d is equal to 100 colon 100 colon key colon durga are you getting key colon durga like key value key value comma comma 200 colon ravi like this i'm taking sir so two key value pairs i'm taking now dict is mutable or not happily you can you can perform any changes right no problem at all itself is uh, mutable sir okay like uh, next uh, what about insertion order is it preserved or not preserved sir take a bit very very special care order is not important indexing and slicing concepts are not applicable next uh, duplicate key key duplicate not possible not possible but a value duplication is always possible so duplicate keys are not allowed but the values can be duplicated no problem at all okay well sir now what is the next one bytes and a byte array bytes uh, is uh, a group of byte values a group of byte byte values right if you want to represent a group of byte values then we have to go for bytes type but compulsory the values should be in the range 0 to 255 only remember this one 0 to 255 only next bytes is it mutable or immutable sir believe me this one is what immutable bytes uh, is immutable next order yes order will be preserved sir order will be preserved indexing and slicing is applicable applicable next duplicates are allowed no problem at all duplicates are allowed no issue at all so bytes is immutable order will be there by using index you can access elements next uh, duplicates are allowed or not yes allowed no problem at all so now byte array is uh, byte array is uh, it is also a group of byte values a group of byte values it is also a group a group of byte values right sir now do you know compulsory the value should be 0 to 255 only 
but where is the difference between bytes and byte byte array the bytes and byte array is it is uh, mutable are you getting this one is what mutable observe that bytes is immutable but byte array is mutable next uh, order will be preserved sir yes next uh, in indexing is possible next uh, duplicates are allowed no problem at all are getting duplicates are allowed allowed acceptable right okay like so now still we are missing one data type have you remembered right okay we still we are missing one type what that is range data type are you getting range range data types are when we should go for range if you want to represent a sequence of values a sequence of values sir. so if you want to represent a sequence of values we require to go for range type remember that a bit very carefully sir range when we should go for range a sequence of values if you want to represent then we have to go for range sir range is mutable or immutable immutable in the middle you can't add something you can't replace something like uh, so range itself is immutable observe very carefully sir immutable next uh, order is important or not yes man order is important for the range because 0 to 9 1 to 10 or 10 to 20 order order is there next the indexing concept applicable or not for a fact like indexing concept applicable no problem at all sir next uh, duplicates are allowed or not allowed no not allowed duplicates are not allowed in the case of sets in the case of range remember that's all these are various data types whatever we have sir so better to draft these things uh, into a small note uh, in your notes uh, so that you will get much clarity but from this n number of questions may be a chance to ask sir what that is what is the difference between list and tuple are you know what the difference between list and tuple list is mutable tuple is immutable okay like what is the difference between set and frozen set set is mutable frozen set is immutable what is the difference between list and set list and set in list duplicates are allowed in list order is important but in set duplicates are not allowed order is not preserved okay like next what when we should go for dict and list list is a group of individual values but dict is a group of key value a group of key value pairs next bytes and bytes Byte array. What is the difference, right? Bytes is okay. Is immutable, but byte array is immutable. Like, sir, where we can use bytes and byte array? Very common, right, sir? Bytes and byte array we can use in binary data representation, like video files, audio files, images. If you want to represent, then we have to go for bytes and byte array. Okay, binary representation we should go for that, sir. Okay, well, next among all. range is the most commonly used data type take a bit very special care for the range i covered three things form 1 with one argument form 2 with two argument form 3 with three arguments begin end increment or decrement value like i hope you may aware all these things right next if you observe this there is one important point i have to tell sir can you please tell long data type is it available in the python please confirm with the long data type is it available in the python no long data type is available in python 2.x but not in python 3x remember this one so even long values also we have to represent by using int only in python 3x but long separate value separate data type in python 2 but not in python 3 okay next uh, what about char data type sir c language already having the char c++ having the char java having the char what about python python char data type is not there even a single character within single code it is still it is treated as string only char objects also you can represent by using string data type only that's all sir these are various important things what you people should be aware sir first fundamental types next are remaining right any doubt are you in the position to understand clearly what are various data types we have okay
సార్ ద నెక్స్ట్ థింగ్ వాట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు డిస్కస్ నన్ నన్ డేటా టైప్స్ అన్ కెన్ యూ ప్లీజ్ స్పెల్ అవుట్ వాట్ ఈజ్ అ నన్ నన్ మీన్స్ నథింగ్ నన్ మీన్స్ వాట్ నథింగ్ నథింగ్ సార్ ఓకే లైక్ నథింగ్ సో నో వాల్యూ అసోసియేటెడ్ నో వాల్యూ అసోసియేటెడ్ అసోసియేటెడ్ లైక్ సో సమ్టైమ్స్ ఇన్ అవర్ ప్రోగ్రామింగ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు హ్యాండిల్ ద డేటా వేర్ వీ ఆర్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎనీ వాల్యూ ఆర్ గెటింగ్ దెర్ ఈస్ సమ్ సిచ్యువేషన్ వేర్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎనీ వాల్యూ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు హ్యాండిల్ సో హౌ యూ కెన్ హ్యాండిల్ ఫర్ దట్ వీ రిక్వైర్ టు గో ఫర్ నన్ డేటా టైప్ రిమెంబర్ దిస్ వన్ సార్ దెన్ ఇమ్మీడియట్లీ మాస్క్ కెన్ యూ ప్లీజ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ విత్ అన్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ డోంట్ వరీ ఐ విల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ నన్ మీన్స్ నథింగ్ నన్ మీన్స్ నో వాల్యూ అసోసియేటెడ్ ఇఫ్ దేర్ ఈస్ నో వాల్యూ టు హ్యాండిల్ సచ్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ సిచ్యువేషన్స్ వీ రిక్వైర్ టు గో ఫర్ వాట్ నన్ డేటా టైప్ సార్ సమ్ ద పీపుల్ హూ ఆర్ కమింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ జావా బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ ఇన్ జావా వీ హ్యావ్ నల్ నల్ వాల్యూ ఈజ్ దేర్ రైట్ సో ఇన్ పైతాన్ ఈక్వెలెంట్ వర్డ్ ఈజ్ నన్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ సిమిలర్ వర్డ్ ఈజ్ ద నన్ నన్ లైక్ సార్ వేర్ యూ హ్యావ్ దిస్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ రిక్వైర్మెంట్స్ రైట్ జస్ట్ అబ్జర్వ్ కేర్ఫుల్లీ ఎ స్మాల్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐఎమ్ గోన్ టు టేక్ సార్ ఇజ్యూమ్ ఏ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు టెన్ సార్ a is equal to 10 now a is pointing to object at 10 if i can take a is equal to none none now onwards a is not representing any value any value that's why this link is gone this object eligible for garbage collection remember this one sir this object eligible for garbage collection to make an object eligible for garbage collection okay we can use happily none 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 means no value no value means now a is not pointing to an object like this right okay one scenario next observe a bit very very carefully about this one if i consider i have d e f f1 so in python functions concept is there maybe functions are the separate topic we are going to discuss soon sir i have one function d e f f1 okay now i'm taking return 10 sir if i call this function what is the value i'm going to get please confirm what value we are going to get sir 10 10 we are going to get now x is equal to f1 so i'm calling f1 i'm calling f1 this f1 returns this f1 f1 returns okay 10 10 x is equal to f1 f1 returns 10 print of x print of x what answer we are going to get sir 10 10 itself we are going to get perfect you are calling a function that function returns a 10 sir like a print of x assume that sir but i'm taking d e f f1 f1 d e f f1 sir just uh, print of hello hello print of hello that's all this function is responsible to print hello that's it this function not going to return any value sir still i'm calling that function that return value i'm storing this inside x can you please tell is f1 return some value no no return statement if the function won't return anything then how you can handle that situation internally it is going to represent none none if you want uh, let me print uh, x value if i print x value what value we are going to get sir simply none we are going to get remember this one so to handle the situation so where value is not available for that requirement we require to go for none let me execute this code have a look once about this terminology sir here i'm taking a simple example a simple a simple example i'm taking d e f f1 one minute d e f f1 i'm trying to take sir one one minute okay just i'm trying to take d e f f1 okay like sir now my requirement is return 10 i'm trying to take sir d e f f1 return 10 10 x is equal to f1 print of x value sir now whenever we are calling a function f1 f1 return 10 that return value i'm storing inside x whenever we are trying to print x which value we are going to get sir 10 10 we are going to get have a look once observe carefully sir here if i execute this code the answer we are going to get sir 10 10 itself is the answer sir okay well 
So now my requirement is observe that this function just print hello. Hello, that's all. It is not going to return any value. So I'm not using any return statement, sir. Observe that I'm not using any return. So this function not return any value. Just f1 print hello, it won't return anything. If it won't return anything, how to handle such a type of scenario? We can handle such a type of scenario with the, with the, sir, which common none, 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 right? What is the output we are going to get, sir? Observe that, yes, simply we are going to get none, none is the answer we are going to get, sir. Okay, well, so none means uh, nothing no value associated in python there are some situations where value is not available to handle such type of situations happily we can go for none type clear for all of you right sir strictly speaking internally how this none is implemented none is also an object only remember that because in python everything is an object none is also internally represented as object only even we are using if for the reference variable point into none meaning that no value but strictly speaking none is also an object only right sir best example a is equal to none i'm taking sir none none now a is a pointing to none object so if it is pointing to none object mean it is indirectly means that it is not pointing to any official value no value means none okay sir now if it is a really object compulsory address will be there what is the address of this object print of id of a what the address address of the none yes you can get next if it is really an object what is the type sir what is the type print of type of a print of type of a do you know what is the type we are going to get sir none type remember this one what is the internal corresponding sir type is none type this is the internal corresponding type okay have a look once sir now i'm trying to take i'm trying to take a is equal to none. A is equal to none. Print of ID. ID of A. What is the address of this none? What is the address? Address of this none, sir? Address is. Sir, it is representing. Address, address, right. Sir, next, uh, what is the type of A? What is the, what is the type? Type of A? Like, uh, sir, what output by default we are going to get? Have a look once. Sir, this is the address we are going to get. The type itself is none type. Remember this one. The type itself is none type. Okay? So, this is what you people, what you people should be aware about the none. Next, uh, one more small point is there. So, none means internally it's an object. If a reference variable point into none means uh, no value. But strictly speaking, none is also an object in python sir okay well next uh, how many none objects will be created are there in the python remember this one sir throughout the python sir throughout python only one none object is available sir okay if you are using any number of times none 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 all the references are pointing to the same object only so how many none objects will be there inside python inside python virtual machine or pvm will create how many none objects only one object where is the proof for that observe carefully where is the proof for that have a look once a is equal to none a is equal to none b is equal to none Okay, C is equal to none. A, B, C is equal to none. Next, uh, I'm taking D, E, E, F1, F1. This F1 not having any body, empty body. How you can represent empty body? By using pass statement. Sir, what is the meaning of pass? Don't worry. We will concentrate in the next session. I will explain very clearly. Don't worry, sir. But as of now, concentrate only on none. So this F1 won't return anything. Now I'm taking, now I'm taking D is equal to F1. So can you please tell which value will be saved inside D? Or D refers which value? None. Because F1 won't return anything. So A value none, B value none, C value none, D internally contains none only. So all these things will be 
pointed to only one non object a is the non b is also non d is also like this are you getting right so how many non objects will be created by the python virtual machine only one object where is the proof sir how you can conclude like uh, very simple man print of id of a what is the address of a next uh, id of b what is the address of b next uh, id of c next uh, id of d like this right sir now a b c d like uh, four variables are available right sir do you know in python print statement any number of arguments you can pass no problem at all more flexibility man any number of argument what the address of a what the address of b what the address of c what the address of d what the address sir we are always going to get same value because how many non objects will be created internally sir only one non object remember have a look once observe carefully sir here i am taking same example a b is equal to none c is equal to none sir c is equal to none like i have d e f f1 function sir just a pass pass means empty implementation d is equal to f1 i am calling i am calling f1 function d i am calling f1 f1 is not going to return anything which value will be there sir none 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 by default will be there sir print of print of a comma b comma c comma d in all cases none is the answer what is the address of this id of a next turn after that comma id of b id of a id of b id of c i am taking next id of d i am trying to take sir id of a b c d like this what is the answer we are going to get sir observe that in all cases none 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 only sir are you seeing sir 976 uh, sir 18 last 976 976 976 is it the same value we are going to get or not yes the same value so in python how many none objects got created by the python virtual machine only one non object throughout our application if you are using multiple times none same object only will be referred clear for all of it so if there is no value to handle such a type of cases we have to go for none okay well any doubt sir in the last video we covered very clearly about none type now i have to talk about escape characters the people who are coming from other languages like c language c plus plus okay java you may aware escape characters right the character which has some special functionality such type of characters are called escape characters right sir now if you have backslash n it is one escape character what it means is new line new line i will explain with an example don't worry sir new line it is the escape character right sir backslash t is there it is horizontal tab 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 character sir tab means uh, a sequence of spaces okay like horizontal tab sir r r backslash r means uh, carriage return carriage return return like a carriage return like what the meaning of carriage return is uh, suppose i have one line is there sir currently my cursor is locating here i want to move to the beginning of the line are you getting i want to move to the beginning of same line then we require to go for carriage return okay like next uh, backslash b means uh, backspace automatically the current one character to the back the back so the char that character will be deleted sir backspace character okay next uh, f backslash f means uh, form feed form feed means uh, go to next page go to next page like that form feed right but anyway we never going to use don't worry just aware okay escape characters are there next uh, backslash sir single quote are getting single single quote single quote symbol backslash double quote double double quote symbol double quote symbol right next uh, backslash 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 this is backslash character okay 
if you want to use single code double code and backslash symbols in our in our code in our string then we require to use backslash single code or backslash double code or backslash backslash like if you want to use single code as a symbol if you want to use double code as a symbol if you want to use backslash as the symbol then we require to use this escape characters right like multiple escape characters are available in python sir can you please just let me provide basic idea how you can use Sir. observe carefully sir here if i can take sir print of durga durga software like this i'm taking durga software like sir it's going to print uh, yes it is yes it is no problem at all but uh, if i use a uh, print of durga durga backslash t are you getting what is this one sir backslash t t like this software durga software like this right backslash t software like i'm taking sir do you know durga and then backslash t itself is tab tab space is there now if you observe the output between durga and software space you can see have a look once just observe carefully right here i'm taking here i'm trying to take okay just uh, yes is equal to uh, or otherwise directly print print of durga software like this i'm taking sir durga software okay what the answer we are getting simply durga software is the answer sir now my question is durga and then backslash t i'm taking have you observed right a special escape character i used uh, backslash t what it means a uh, tab tab means what spaces spaces like uh, what the answer now are you in the position to see sir yes perfectly sir like a uh, space space is going to come no problem at all sir okay now the next one sir i want to use backslash n are you getting i require to use what backslash n n n means uh, new line character instead of instead of backslash t if i use backslash n now you are going to get durga and the software will come in the next line remember this one next line have a look once backslash n means new line new line right okay observe backslash n i'm taking sir backslash n what the answer durga is coming in the first line durga is coming in the first line software is coming in the next line backslash n n like this right okay like so what is the meaning of backslash t what the meaning of backslash n like it's clear sometimes my requirement is i want to use a single quote as a symbol okay single quote symbol i want to i require to use sir observe carefully sir print of print of this is single quote symbol this is single quote symbol okay like i'm taking sir now if i can take like uh, do you know immediately i may get error this is single quote symbol i may get error sir you open single quote here you open you close the single quote now like uh, so i want to use single quote as a symbol okay we have some alternative ways better to enclose by using double quotes or better to enclose by using triple quotes like there is a way but anyway i don't want to use that approach i want to use single quotes only here also single quote how you can use if you want to use single quote as a symbol compulsory we require to go for backslash backslash single quote now it is treated as yeah, single quote symbol only observe that carefully sir here what i'm trying to take is i don't want this is this is single quote symbol like this i'm taking sir this is single quote symbol like i'm trying to take sir now have you observed if i'm trying to execute immediately invalid syntax like we are getting sir so i want to use single quote as a symbol only okay what is the way sir backslash single quote if i'm taking backslash single quote yes for a fact this is single quote symbol we are using single quote as a symbol only similarly i want to use double quote symbol i want to use double quote symbol yes okay this is double quote symbol i want to use backslash as a symbol backslash as a symbol if i want to use backslash as a symbol 
yes happily this is the backslash symbol like we are going to get sir so if you want to use single quote as the symbol or double quote as the symbol or backslash as the symbol these escape characters we require to use because single quote double quote backslash there is a special meaning is there in the majority of programming languages if you want to use as the symbol we have to use like this any doubt about this one that's answer especially where we can use backslash sing backslash escape character do you know i want to specify locations file locations are directory is right sir d colon backslash durga classes like i'm taking i want to represent this directory whenever we are taking backslash d immediately it is telling illegal escape character something like we may get error that's why don't consider this backslash d as escape character please consider backslash as symbol only how you can specify backslash backslash you are getting if i can take backslash backslash now this backslash is treated as one one symbol symbol not internal meaning is not applicable is it clear right these are various escape characters which are available in python of course these are available in other languages also like java c c++ like everywhere these escape characters are applicable any doubt clear right sir now i will explain comments how you can declare comments in python if you go for any other language like java java sir here if i can take like this single line comment this is single line comment okay how you can write this one single line comment next uh, multi line comment if you want to write of course this is the java related terminology man just observe multi line comments if you want uh, okay first line second line third line and so on like this this is a multi line multi line comment okay multi multi line comment comment in 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 java sir same way can you please tell in python how you can represent single line comment very simple sir we have to use hash symbol are getting we are using which symbol sir hash symbol this is symbol this is single line comment this is single single line comment okay now my requirement is i want to use multi line comments are getting single line comment anyway if any line preceded starting with hash symbol this total thing will become comment python virtual machine won't execute this line sir remember just it's a comment that's all multi line comments how you can write in python anyone can you please tell yes <coughs> sir samira isa by using triple quote symbols we can write multi line comments like so r uh, what is the what is the way how you can can i use the same syntax no such a type of syntax is not there in python man okay how you can write multi line comments for your kind information multi line comments not available in python remember that then how you can write multi line comments if you have multiple lines are there sir line 1 line 2 line 3 i want to comment all the three lines i require to comment all the three lines huh? how you can <laughs> very simple use uh, hash symbol for every line are getting use hash symbol for every line that's all multi line comments are not there even multiple lines you require to comment compulsory you should go for hash symbols only sir somewhere i saw okay if i can take triple quotes next turn after that line one line two line three like a triple quote symbols like it will considered as the comment no this is a treated as dark string remember this one what is this are dark string documentation string of course in the next sessions we will discuss in detail okay remember this one sir so how you can write single line comment how you can write multi line comment multi line comments are not there but take a bit special care some book others some blogs they are going to tell okay something like triple quote symbol see the multi line comment no such type of terminology this is a documentation string sir if you are going to generate documentation for your code then this code will be there in the documentation that is the dark string this is it is not multi line comment clear for all of friend just have a look once sir i want to take i want i want to i want to take here just the hash symbol hash symbol print r uh, this is a 
comment this is comment won't be won't be executed by won't be executed by jvs <laughs> pvm like this i'm taking sir this is the comment won't be executed by pvm like 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 i'm trying to take sir now print this is a comment demo are you getting this is a comment demo like this so if i execute this code what is the answer we are going to get sir only this answer we will get you never going to get this one as the answer if you want have a look once what is the answer sir only one line only one line why the first line is not executed because it is a comment python virtual machine is going to ignore this comment suppose i want to take this one also comment sir okay i want to take this one also comment then automatically what output by default we will get nothing nothing will be there so multi line comments have you can do single line comments have you can do that's all this is the comments story in python clear right sir i hope the people who are coming from other languages you may wear constant constant means the value fixed we can't change the value best example sir in java assume that in java how you can declare constants there is a way is there sir final final int x is equal to 10 final int x is equal to 10 sir x is always 10 only if any person trying to change x value immediately you are going to get error sir remember by mistake if i am trying to change x value the 20 immediately you are going to get error in java this is just have a look once is it going to be happen or not so which are called constants okay here i am taking class test assume java code sir don't worry if you don't know about java just for basic idea say come taking sir final int x is equal to 10 10 like let me save this code yes test dot java okay like first we have to compile java code java c test dot java next we have to run perfect sir it is a it's a valid compilation fine no problem at all sir now i'm trying to change its value as a 20 20 sir immediately compiler will give left and right observe that cannot uh, here have you observed cannot assign a value to final variable x are getting immediately error by default we are going to get cannot assign a value to final variable x like this we are getting the error sir okay like sir same how you can implement in python what is the way sir sir very simple in python in python modifiers concept is not applicable are getting final static such type of terminology is not applicable that's why there is no way to define constants in python remember constants concept not applicable in python then but there is a convention if you don't want to change the value better to use the uppercase characters max length max length is equal to 10 something like now if you don't want to change the value just you can take just just you can you can take you can you can take max length is equal to value something like the variable name if you are going to take in uppercase characters in uppercase character it is the convention that oh it is the constant value but make sure it is simply convention for coding but uh, if you want you can change the value also just convention is there but uh, concept really internally not implemented right okay so can you can you please spell out constants concept applicable in python or not no no constants concept is not applicable so in convention in program if you don't want to change the value better to use the convention sir all the variable name should be in upper case okay let me show this one sir sir assume assume here i want to i want to take here observe that i'm taking sir max value my intention is this value no one is allowed to change that's why i'm taking max value like that. now let me execute this code py perfect it is a valid sir sir now i am trying to change the value <laughs> i'm trying to change the value sir i'm trying to change the value if i'm trying to change the value max value is equal to 20 what will happen is now onwards max value is point into 20 now onwards max value is point into the 20 20 like uh, so it means uh, acceptable it means acceptable we won't get any error sir let me print uh, the value of max value print uh, what is the value value of max value if i print uh, 
then happily 20 by default we are going to get sir are getting 20 so constants concept is not applicable in python because so we can use the variable so for different types different values that flexibility is already there in the python there is no declare a variable declaration of a variable concept is not there that's why so constants concept is not applicable in python clear for all of right observe in java here if you observe in java you are declaring a variable and then you are trying to change the value you are declaring a variable and then you are trying to change the value but in python a is equal to 10 no declaration directly you can use a is equal to 20 that's all so up to this a is the 10 now onwards a is the 20 so if we have declaration is there pass into a is equal to 10 now i'm using same a value like but the type declarations are not there that's why constants concept it is not possible to define in python is it clear for all of right sir even internal reason if you are not getting don't worry at all just aware constants concept not applicable in python that's all Hi friends, let me start the first topic in our Python, language fundamentals. Okay, so first language fundamentals, next the uh, input and output statements, operators, flow control, like almost around 25 topics we are going to discuss, right? But please make sure you people should have clear clarity about one point, sir. So if you aware the first the basic classes very confidently if you are getting perfection in basic concepts then the remaining concepts will become very very easy for you that's why first four or five units something like language fundamentals operators flow control these kind of things better to have clear clarity automatically remaining things will become very very easy for you people right okay so now the first topic language fundamentals right this is the topic what i have to discuss yeah, as a part of language fundamentals, okay, we have to talk about introduction. Introduction, are, what is Python? Why the name Python? Oh, why the name Python? Like, uh, sir, general syntax related things I will, I will explain. Next, uh, application areas of Python. Sir, where we can use this Python? Okay, next, uh, features of Python. Either Python is the open source or not, platform independent or not, portable or not, like uh, features of Python. Next, uh, limitations of Python. Python. Limitations, sir, where we can't use Python. Okay, like uh, next uh, flavors of Python. Okay, multiple flavors are available for the Python, sir, as it is the open source, like uh, Jaythan, Anaconda Python, Iron Python, like uh, multiple flavors are there. I will explain. Next, uh, sir, what are various versions? Python 2x, 2.x, Python 3.x, like uh, we have to discuss about these version related issues, right? Next, uh, identifiers concept, we have to discuss reserved words concept we have to talk and then data types concept we have to discuss right sir under data types concept almost around 14 data types we are going to discuss of course all these things are fundamental data types i will explain but all these things as a separate topics we are going to discuss in the next sessions also but here basic idea about the data types what we are going to use in python so we are going to discuss right next type casting how to convert from one type to another type is it possible like so this is the agenda related to our language fundamentals concepts sir. almost around the, so around the, around the 10 hours uh, we are going to discuss only about these uh, things uh, that's why I take a bit very very special care to understand each and every point sir if you are very strong in the basics then the remaining things will become so easily you can able to understand the remaining things will become very very easy that's why please please make sure you should have clear your clarity you require to spend much time on these basics right okay sir let me talk about language fundamentals introduction part sir first question i will ask can you please tell what is a python please respond what is python <laughs> python 
we are going to discuss python python almost around two months or three months time we are going to spend on this on this what is python please spell out can i use the word can i use the word it is uh, uh, what is python don't tell sir this is one type of snake <laughs> regarding don't tell it is one type of snake sir in our technical terminology it is a programming language observe that it is the programming language language right we can develop applications by using this language it's a programming language okay like small small applications web applications like we can develop applications by using this python sir best example you are using calculator application i'm sure if you know python you can develop that calculator by using our python language what we are using sir okay gmail application you are using gmail gmail.com that gmail application we can develop by using python remember so what is python sir python is a programming language okay well sir now i can use the word python is high level programming language are getting python is high level programming language then immediately you may ask what is high level high level means a programmer friendly language we are not required to worry about the low level things are getting right it is a programmer friendly language not a mission friendly language remember this one sir it's not mission friendly programmer friendly programmer by simply seeing the code he can understand he can write the code very very easily right it is a programmer friendly language but not a mission friendly language remember low level activities so being a programmer we are not required to worry sir what it means here observe that if i can take a is equal to 10 i'm taking 10 b is equal to 20 i'm taking a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 c is equal to 30 <coughs> 30 if a greater than b else 40 i'm taking 30 if a greater than b else 40 i'm taking print a c sir <laughs> are you getting print of c sir here do you know if i can take this code are you in the position to understand this code okay you are not required to have any programming knowledge remember this one you are not required to have any programming lang la knowledge just observe a is equal to 10 oh the value of a is the 10 b is equal to 20 the value of b is the 20 c is equal to 30 if a greater than b 30 if a greater than b else 40 sir so a what is the value of a 10 10 greater than 20 no no 10 is greater than 20 fails so if if it satisfied 30 otherwise it is 40 then obviously what is the value of c sir the value of c we are going to get what 40 sir if you have the kid can you please show these four lines of the code to your kid are can you tell what what thing is happening what thing is happening any person without having any programming knowledge i'm sure sir that person can able to understand okay this type of thing is called high level programming language remember that what is the high level programming language so just a programmer friendly he can able to he can understand very easily he can write very easily right okay well sir next uh, low level activities are there